Well, if he's in the waiting, if the waiting room until you start the meeting, they don't show up. Okay, well, I'm recording. Hold on a second, perfect. We might have this. No, Robert started. <clears throat> Still waiting for Jerry. The meeting is started. Robert Stark, the attendee. Robert Stark, the attendee. Ah, Jerry. Sorry. Promote the panelist. Cliff, I think we're good. He got in. Uh, he's in. Thank you, Cliff. All right, start the meeting. You can. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay. Motion, okay. Motion to start the meeting, please. So moved. All in favor? Wait, give me a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Welcome to the work session for the Village of Bamaranek Board of Trustees. We're holding the session at 169 Mount Pleasant Avenue in the Village Court with three trustees in attendance and Trustee Victor to four. Um, joining us by remote location. Um, starting the, starting the uh, meeting, we would like to motion to adopt the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let's see if we can plow through this, folks. Um, first, old business, A, April 11th, uh, it came on, expanded Florence Street stormwater investigation and study. Um, I believe... I may have brought that on. Uh, that was, uh, or was that you did? That was me. That was you. Okay, so, so what, 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 what do we right. want to do with this? Uh, I thought we had, um, at one point, um, we needed uh, to direct staff to, they already started to investigate um, the sanitary and stormwater sewers. Mm -hmm. Part of that's through the I&I &I program, and part of that was just to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I haven't, we haven't heard back from staff as to what needs to be done, but we need to put this on the agenda to undertake uh, an engineering analysis and, and to solve the problems. I'd like to suggest that we, maybe we, we put it on the to-do list for the new engineer when he arrives, like first thing, these people in the morning since 1988. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, Jerry or Dan, can you give us an update as to what we found to date? Dan, go ahead. Tell them uh, that we didn't find anything as far as Prior, I guess, um, easement yeah. or or um, dedication to the village. Yeah. So, um, as far as the original paperwork that was provided to the village, uh, there was uh, talk about uh, sanitary sewers and well, the sanitary sewers. All that information was from the, the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, I believe that has been addressed. Uh, we worked with Rochester County on that in the mid 2000s. Uh, they had uh, a study done from a firm, uh, Savage Engineers, and I believe we appointed everything from that uh, as of around uh, 20. No, I'm referring to we found a manhole we didn't know existed. Well, and, and we put cameras in and whatever. So the question is we know that there was a dip, you know, in the sewer line, and we know that there are issues with the drainage in the Stormwater line, and so fast forward. Where where are we going from here? So uh, there was a question about whether or not there was an easement for a stormwater appurtenance. I believe it was at two hundred nine Jackson Avenue, um, and uh, I looked at the records of ownership back to the late eighteen nineties, and I couldn't find any record of any easement between. Any of the properties, and I, I look, you know, went back for each individual property owner as a village of Bomarine. I honestly, I think before 1901, you're looking at a, a large file that it's nearly impossible to find anything in. Um, so I could I could locate any easements uh, in favor of the village to maintain this sort of stormwater infrastructure at 209 Jensen. All right. Um, uh, what I'm reading here, I mean, the, the two issues are catch basins and and these. Odd culverts that that run under people's property, and they seem to. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. I've been over there. I don't quite sure what that is. Do we know? Do we know everything that's out there? Do we have a an idea of what goes where, and and uh, or or does that still need to be investigated? Uh, I believe it still needs to be investigated. I think um, 
I think the parks did, did did do some cleaning of some of those uh, uh, culverts. Is that is that correct, Jared? Correct. Yep. So right. yeah, we did the best we could with not. Uh, so it's so they're in backyards. They're in people's private property. They're in backyards. Yeah, I, I, I saw that, but I mean, it, clearly it was uh, not installed. I don't know. It was not installed by a private owner. It comes in. It brings water into the property and through the property. Uh, no, it drains water. It drains water from the backyards of these properties, which are sloped significantly, mm -hmm. and drains it away. We just don't have any record of the village ever doing it, or as David said, any kind of uh, any kind of easement or, or commitment to the village uh, of the property. And um, we just don't know. Uh, what we did was we found the manhole and we know that the pipe is full of dirt and debris. But that's about it. There have been stories, there have been talk about the storm sewers pitched the wrong way. Is that not correct? Um, on Florence, there is one area uh, when we had the three inch rainstorm that collects, that's the lowest point of Florence. And that may be uh, something that we look at when the new engineer comes in. But what specifically we're talking about uh, with with Hank and B's properties and the, the neighbors along along Florence and, and also Jensen is backyards. The backyard drainage structure somehow installed in their backyard that everyone believes the village put in, but there's no way for us to determine that. All right. Um, so what do we do with that? Uh, if, we, if we don't know who owns it, uh, I mean, we, I, I feel like we've got some kind of responsibility there uh, uh, to at least investigate it. Should we put it on the, the new engineer's to-do list that we would like a, some assessment or at least give those homeowners some guidance as to how to handle those, uh, those structures? And that would be terrific, except the board has had issues with the village working on private property and property that's not owned or dedicated by the village. Um, there's been an issue with that. Just recently, we had that issue on email with Walton, which is a street that's not uh, dedicated to the village. And there's a group of individuals from the Orient the Point Association that want us to fix that street, but it's a private street, so we're not touching it. Um, I, would, I would be uh, predisposed to uh, um, approving uh, um, or looking at these things uh, with the permission of the individual uh, property owners, do you think that would be the problem? I, I don't know that we can, there are a couple things. Any lines that are, that the village owns, because I know there are lines from Frank to Florence that one of the reports showed that it was sagging. And I believe that was a sanitary line. Another, well, so that's different. That, that gets addressed in the next phase of the sewer remediation project. This is backyard drainage. Ponding and puddling of backyard drainage. This is what specifically this is the talk so, about. So what I'm hearing is we the village has done its due diligence in terms of searching the records for an easement. Yeah. So we would suggest that the village communicate to the property owners that they should also do a search of their own title for easements. Right. And if, because if it's in their title, then that may that so, may help the village try and figure out a way through this. To do you know, it's possible that they may have uh, easements with one another, but I mean that's I'm, no. I wasn't talking about with one another. I was talking about with the village. Oh. So, so the question is, in uh, in whose lap does this land? <laughs> well, we, we can't do work on private property. Can't do work on private property. Right. So, um, but. And we, unless we have an easement and we can't prove that we have the easement, is how old do we think the pipes might be? Any, is there any? I, mean, I think the area was developed in the early 1900s. Yeah, and that was really, that was, that was, that was sort of swampland and cleared for the park. So the question is when the village put the park in, did the village, I mean, it was definitely the village, not the town, not I, town of Rome. I mean, everything I, was able to find as far as the, the historic ownership. It looks like it was it was developed around the late 1800s, early 1900s, or maybe like 1910. You're so talking about the so houses the, or you're talking about the park? Uh, I'm talking about the general area. The general area. Uh, I, I think Nora's asking specifically about the park. Do we have, because that was done, we believe, by the village. No, the, well, the, the question was when do we think this may have been yeah. infrastructure may have been installed? I, I would ask that. It was probably. There's some time around it was first developed or probably shortly thereafter. And the complaints start in the 80s. 
I see that. No, the, 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 the information about the AEDs dealt with sanitary issues. Okay. That was not really flooding issues. The, and like I said, I believe that the sanitary sewer issues have been addressed. Right. We, we can certainly confirm that. I think we probably have to confirm that uh, with our uh, studies of the remaining areas. I can certainly verify with Kevin Hogan uh, what type of issues we're seeing in that area. But I, the issues that were raised in the backup material, I believe, have been addressed. They have been addressed. The, the, the sanitary sewer issues. Okay. Not not the flooding issues, the sanitary issues. Okay, well, um, all right. Uh, listen, I think the the the, the at least uh, oh, uh, um, an advisory uh, opinion from us about what 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 the issue is and what should be done. If they're wa waiting for us to do something and we can't, they should be advised that uh, that's not going to happen. We will let them know that um, it's best. It's in their best interest to try to find something that they may have in their records. To indicate that there's some village involvement in this backyard drainage structure, that do they have a neighborhood association or something like that, Jerry? No, mm -mm. single family home, single single property owners. Uh, what I meant, I meant is, do they have a, a group that meets uh, uh, that, that you know to complain about the flooding or uh, like so, a? So there's a, there's a small group of individuals, but then some of the um, some of the property owners on that street have. Um, have maybe taken to um, um, filling up their backyard uh, with, you know, uh, bags of Home Depot topsoil to uh, to eliminate or reduce the drainage uh, the drainage problem or the which pond. is going to move it elsewhere then, right? Yeah, so that's All where right. the problem is. All right, um, I, I think we should do some kind of outreach to them and and uh, and, and uh, tell them that we've done what we can. Uh, if they think we should do more, please stay in touch with us. But uh, mm -hmm. I mean, and then and then any issues uh, of sanitary sewer or Florence um, on the street, uh, that's something that we're actively working on. So we're looking at it. We're doing some video of it, and we're trying to determine, you know, where the issue is and why Florence um, ponds up and and uh, and standing water uh, during a three-inch rainstorm. Yeah. Uh, you heard you heard trustee Natchez what he would say that but that should also be communicated to them we can we can do that and take this off the uh the agenda uh, our, uh, yeah. our work session uh, i'm meeting i'm meeting with one property owner on uh florence uh, on uh, i think wednesday or thursday with james so okay so we'll communicate that on the extent they have any information in their deeds you know that might be helpful Absolutely. um sure. that might be helpful. and i don't know whether we could figure out what the village did with Florence Park, whether we have, I don't think we have those kinds of records in, upstairs. I mean, it, it's just some strange stuff out there. There is, yeah. it's very, it's curious, yeah, it's very curious. Um, all right, so um, uh, let's let's take this off the agenda for now then. And uh, and if it comes back on, it, it maybe come by, back on in a focused fashion for what, you know, what what we're, what specifically we're looking at. All right, okay. everybody, we have yeah, consent? Right. Okay, great. All right, one down, one in a row. Uh, draft policy, uh, item B, draft policy on acceptance of gifts to the village of Bamaranek. Uh, this looks all sensible to me. I mean, uh, anybody have any mm -hmm. input on it? Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, we can't, I mean, and this is probably for Augie. We can't, we, and I say like the board of trustees, volunteer boards and commissions, staff, can't really raise funds for the village. That's not saying funds. 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 Mm -hmm. So I I you know when we have the, the phrase that says no village official or employee shall this is two four no village official or employee shall engage in any fundraising activity or in any way solicit any person group or organization for the purposes of offering a gift to the village without prior knowledge of the village board and approval of the mayor. Well I don't think we're supposed to be doing that. That just seems to me like we can't do that. You want to just take that out then? Well, uh, I, I have a, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like, so I'm trying to think of the, like people will give us benches, you know, they'll want to donate a bench. Um, we've had several scout projects, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who've done Eagle Award, Silver Award, Gold Award projects where they've created something for the village and given it to them. Those are the kinds of instances where we probably should formally accept the gift. We mm -hmm. always accept benches, we should accept it. Um, I know the Arts Council has a fund that can accept donations, um, but they can't actually solicit the donations. So they've got, you know, they were able, that's how they were able to purchase 
sculpture, you know, from time to time, they're able to buy artwork and do projects in the village. So how do we phrase it? I mean, I think we, it's, it's not appropriate for the village board or the mayor to be approving these things. Well, just take it out. Privately. Why don't you just end it on the third, on the yeah, third just sentence eliminate. after the word village and just take the rest of it out. Mm -hmm. it, says, okay. it says that you right. don't, okay. you can't get it. But right. I have a more substantive question. Why are we doing this? I, I think it's nice that the, it comes to the board. If there, somebody wants to donate to the village and it really does not put any particular individual at risk for somebody saying something is not correct. I sort of like that. I mean, I, I recall this oppression being raised about acceptance of gifts, and mm -hmm. I have forwarded to the board a copy of a policy from my former municipality. Mm -hmm. And I believe someone on the board kind of rewrote it and tailored to the village of Mariner, uh, said that and asked if we could have a session for discussion. But I, I thought our policy is if somebody wants to do, donate something to the village, you know, they, it has to be accepted by the board. So what this is trying to do is bifurcate it uh, and saying that, it, you know, the village manager, anything of a hundred dollars or less is the village manager and the rest goes to the board. I just think it's better that everything come to the board and, uh, and it be uh, for any gift to the village. Period. Well, I, don't, I think it's okay to delegate some stuff in. I mean, under 100 bucks, if it's, you know, why why, uh, why do we want to micromanage? Uh, it's just me. Well, because I, I think why I don't think there was any malice of <clears throat> intent of doing anything not correctly. Mm -hmm. There have been instances in, you know, over the years uh, where things have been accepted by the village uh, either in cash or in kind, hmm. uh, you know, um, and didn't get to the board. Well, Jerry, what do you think about this? I don't know uh, of any instance in the last three and a half years, nor has staff ever told me of any instance like that in the past. Um, from time to time, we do get uh, at Christmas time, a tin of cookies or popcorn, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, before we accept it, I can come to the Board of Trustees and ask them if it's okay if we accept a tin of popcorn. That's no problem. It makes no difference to me how, uh, how you want to set this policy up. I just don't want it to be ridiculous. So um, there was an email uh, uh, back in the uh, April. Uh, Trustee Nash has it asked the old attorney um, to do a bench donation on the agenda. Um, we appreciate, uh, ask, uh, see, assume that we do it because uh, do something in our code. We appreciate your appointing me to the part of our code that is applicable. Uh, says, the uh, insurance that believes the acceptance of donations falls under the general power from the Board of Trustees on management of property, which is established pursuant to 4 412, subsection 1 of village law. Um, and I believe Trustee Lucas asked, uh, should the BOT be approving donations in the temporary, such as the Merrimack High School worker project to combat summer slide, the Boca Torres Hospital and Bruce Park? Right. And I, I, I responded back. I don't think the board's ever established policy on acceptance of gifts. I know some places allow for the chief executive to accept gifts valuable in a certain amount, but part of public acceptance recognition of the gift and the gift giver in a public setting. Yeah. And I say I'm attaching a copy from my former study, which was. Adopted in 1997, although I've noted they've been updated since I left. This is, from, this is from Scarsdale, right? This is what Scarsdale has. Yeah. Uh, it seems fine to me. I mean, I think, it, you know, $100, whatever. I, I mean, I think the thing about the Board of Trustees accepting a gift is that you're saying thank you. Like you're, somebody's giving us something, mm -hmm. yeah. we say thank you. So even if the village manager can authorize something that's $100, it's just nice to thank people for doing something nice for the yeah. village. Um, I don't think that the like the popcorn tin fits in that. That's just like a you know a Christmas gift. This is if this is more something that's like a, a village project. But however we do it, I think we have to get rid of three one because we shouldn't be consulting. People shouldn't be consulting informally with the mayor or the trustees. It probably should just there should be a process like if you want to make a donation, you know if it's a Boy yeah. Scout or Girl Scout, they there's a little form they fill out when they're doing their project and it gets the village manager gets it to the right 
gets, I guess, gets it to the Board of Trustees. I mean, usually it goes through the parks. Most of those projects have gone through the parks, the parks department, right. parks and rec okay. department. So, so we, uh, uh, there have been instances, for instance, on Florence Park, uh, some great gifts in terms of upgrading the, the park, but it never came to the board for approval. That's something that was just done, not done out of uh, malice or anything. It was done as improvement. Uh, right. Private people, um, you know, did it in the village actually uh, dedicated um, resources to help that. I have no problems with it, except that it never got to the board for an approval. The same in uh, Columbus Park and, you know, others. All right, so, so uh, are we good with this without uh, uh, two, four, and three, one? I mean, I think we, we, we leave two, four in up okay. into gift to the village period. And then there need, does there need to be a procedure? Like there's a, you, yeah. if you want to give a gift to the village, well, there, I mean, how do you do it? File something with the manager's office. Yeah. More work for Jerry and Dan. Oh, no. oh. I won't be sending them a note to thank them. Someone else will be doing it, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea. I agree. Okay, okay. great. All right, great. So, so we can we can put this in a form for the for the uh, and on for uh, the next meeting, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a good, it's a good, good plan. Huh? I'm, all, I'm all excited. We did two things. All right. I'm good with it. Good. We're gonna put it on the regular August eighth meeting. Correct? Great. Yeah, August eighth is the next meeting, right? Okay, old business C, village policy on releasing email addresses of residents via FOIL. Let's so deal with that. Uh, the mayor asked uh, for this to be on. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, do we do it? Do we release? Uh, uh... Well, we redact email addresses. Um, we redact email addresses. If it's not for. I don't think we can. What we release. You have to. Yeah. You, you really have to. It's required. Yeah. All right. So then there's no there's no issue here, then, right? Mark, is that correct? I mean, it depends on the situation. It, if 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 it would be redacted or withheld, it'd be uh, the 872 b public private. Um, sorry, privacy exemption to uh, to FOIL. Um, but it depends on the situation. Usually, they are turned over, um, but there are instances in which you know they may not be. But I, but I can't, again, speak for every single instance. Do we have any instance where it has been? Mark, are you aware of it? Dan, mm -hmm. are you aware of it? Jerry? Has been what? Okay. Has been what? Did we turn over uh, um, citizen emails? I can't recall any, no. But we, we have, we yeah, have, no, we, we have. We, we've released email address. I, I think maybe what Mark might be saying, if someone, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, if someone sent an email um, about like, an ongoing investigation, or you know, give like a, some sort of a tip to the police department that's used for investigatory purposes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm not talking about specifically requests for just email addresses from the public. That that I don't think we've gotten that specifically. I'm talking about when you know there's a request for um, communication to uh, to or from uh, the board or you know some uh, village official regarding an issue. You know, in that case, it probably would not be, uh, it probably, it, it may be turned over, it depends on the situation. But yeah, D Dan is right that in certain situations in which, you know, for example, if there's a an issue about a domestic dispute, not, not that I'm saying this has come up, but just for example, if there's an issue about a domestic dispute, mm -hmm. um, if that did not end up in a an arrest um, or in, you know, depending on the situation, that email address would be withheld. Well, who is the gatekeeper on that? My office. Yeah. We check with the village attorney. Yeah. And there was a, an instance before any of us were on the board where the previous mayor's distribution list was foiled and it had to be released because there was around the same time some, was maybe the journal news, some court case or somebody had done, had, uh, had foiled those all over Westchester County and they had to be released. So the uh, bottom line is he was just leaving it the way it is and uh, it goes through the clerk and he's the gatekeeper. That's it. Okay. Fine with me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. And I guess if, if uh, Tom has questions about that more, we can, we can put it back on. Um, uh, April 25th, uh, the FMAC recommendations. This yeah. is... Uh, Okay, these are requests from the, um, the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee 
that uh, Trustee Natchez and Chairman Gelber be liaisons. I'm gonna ask uh, the village attorney if uh, we have the power to appoint liaisons to uh, outside agencies. Is he, oh, he's not here. Oh, Mark's left. <laughs> oh, Mark's, oh, sorry, Mark, oh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're muted. If, if I, didn't, I need a little bit more time to review it, uh, to review the question and, and to, um, to look at the matter. Uh, or if you want to wait for, for Bob to come in. And, you know, okay, let's, let's, let's wait for Bob to come in. I think he's, he's really not. So. I think, uh, you yeah. know, in relation to your question, if you look at the last paragraph, it changes, it keeps the intent of the Oh, what the FEMA, FEMA include, wanted, but it also includes what the board wanted, which was the village manager uh, to be involved in. Uh, in well, well, I think the, I think the, 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 what, what we had with, with was, um, um, the mayor's intention was that the village manager is the liaison. Mm -hmm. right. And I run the project. That's correct. So, uh, so th this, this would be going beyond that. So we'd have to, um, before we even address it, we'd have to ask the, the, the village attorney if we can even do it. Yeah. Because I don't think we have the power to do that. Liaison, and that, and that, and that's what the last paragraph does. Okay. Well, um, uh, let's wait for Bob. Um, all right. Leaf blower. We're not down to Ena. Leaf blower ban signage communication. May 9th. What is that in reference to? At the beginning of the leaf blower ban season, which is May 15th, the Committee for the Environment uh, asked us for some <clears throat> signage and communication, um, as is the history with uh, the Board of Trustees uh, agendas. Things take a little while to get to. So this one is somewhat irrelevant and uh, probably way past its time. I, 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 I did see electronic signs that were out. Yeah. And it may be way past its prime, but we could always be positive and say it's for 2023. <laughs> okay, good. Early. Yeah. <laughs> okay, like we're done. Like we don't put it back on the agenda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What, didn't one year we actually distributed a, a leaflet? No, you would put on door hangers. Yeah. Door hangers. Yeah. And, okay. and that was very effective. And a lot of residents have Got a lot of good suggested that. that that might be helpful because a lot of people uh, <clears throat> ignore other th types of communication. And when we did that, I mean, one of the things, the town of Maranek did that and they used a bunch of the Girl Scouts as a service project. Mm -hmm. So we could, it, I mean, all, Rhinex schools do community service projects. So it's something we could probably get, you know, help with, not necessarily have village staff do it, but get it, do it as part of a service project, which would also promote it a little bit. You know, like you do a public service announcement, and do, do our dates coincide with the town and the village of Larchmont yeah. too? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it could be like all three groups doing it together. That's a good idea. And it could be something we do annually and yeah. that's the process. And if they wanna recommend changing some of the language, of course they can, you know, our board, I mean, our, our volunteer committee. But if you wanna do that on a regular basis, we can easily create that process. How many door hangers do we need? Oh. I mean, we're talking about 5,000 rooftops. So we'll go at it, you know, and send a lot out. Uh, okay, so, so there's a cost involved in that, right? Yeah, but, but we're, not, we're not going door to door in, uh, you know, Orienta uh, with these, you know, large properties. We're not doing that kind of stuff. So we would be going door to door in most of the area. You know, most of our area is, is easily walkable. Okay. Right. It's not very, very yeah. Nice. It's not, it isn't expensive. All right. So we'll put this on for, um, I guess we don't, there's, there's no urgency. 2023. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I guess the thing, it's a great idea. Somebody should. So who's the somebody? Do, do we, do we see if the Committee for the Environment want to be in charge of it or is it something? Well, I think it needs to be built into the budget. Yeah. yeah. Well, I recall that the Committee for the Environment, someone from the Committee actually designed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, they, and they're very, they're very into this. They, 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 yeah. All right. So, um, so what, what, what are we doing with? It? Do we? I mean, does it need? To, do we need to adopt? I mean, I think it would be good to do it with the other two communities, and I'm happy to write a note to the other communities. We, if we do it, did it with the other two communities, and we were ready for next May, 
Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then, then why don't we why don't we give it to the the, the, the uh, committee for the environment? Ask them to, to reach out. Well, let, let, let them do that. But I think what we need to do is direct staff. Um, you know, for this should be included in the preparation twenty twenty three budget. Well, it's, I mean, it's a nominal amount of money. So yeah. we could probably figure out how to print it this year. We could probably figure out how to fund it this year. Well, it's not a lot. I don't know if you recall this, Jerry, but uh, at the onset of the pandemic, yeah. uh, we had talked to the three municipalities about trying to send out unified messages about landscaping mm -hmm. and, and our respective reprogrammed plans. And it was, I don't think we could, we, we had trouble agreeing on common language on the three minutes. Uh, well, well because of the Larchmont, but then that was because of Larchmont, because Larchmont has yeah. much, they have stricter rules, you know. They're Lugan always just there. <laughs> we are similar to the town. Larchmont is a little, little um, more stringent. All right. All right. All right. Um, uh, so I'm just looking for a disposition here. What do we, what? I don't think it's something. So, from my perspective, I don't think it's something that has to go on to a regular work session okay. agenda. It's not something we have to vote on. We we ask the committee for the environment to, if they're interested in taking it over, working with staff, and if they're not, then then we go to Plan B. I guess as liaison to the yes. committee for the environment, that's my that, that I have to do that. Yeah. When I forget, everybody can yell at me. I'll remind you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we already know what printing costs are. We, we know uh, that we need to reach out <clears throat> at a certain you know, period of time or a certain month date um, to, to solicit volunteers. We know what, uh, what we need to do. And we'll put it in the budget and we'll, we'll make it work, of course. And we're gonna try and do it ourselves, not with the other communities, right? Well, it, you know, I mean, it's, it's easier if we just do it ourselves, but I, will, I think we should let the other environmental committees of those village, the town and the village know what we're doing. If okay. they want to, you know, if they want to jump on, or if we want to adopt something that that they're doing, that, then that's the discussion. Not necessarily doing it simultaneously at the same time. Okay, got it. All right. All right. So I that's. This, I may have said this before at one or two meetings, but I don't really care about the village of Mamaroneck. So I may have said that once, once or twice. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. Um, Composition of Traffic Safety Commission membership. That was you. That's me. Oh, that's me. Yes. That's okay. You. That was, um, we can't, what, what happened? So uh, uh, an issue came up where somebody was missing and they have seven members. And so we only had six members for a while. And um, when I looked into the, in the code, it said the traffic commission shall consist of seven members. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, and, and, and the discussion was, we're down a member. We need another member, right? And I'm like, we can kind of do it with six people. I mean, it's not, it's not like, so uh, I looked and I said, well, is it even valid if it says seven people? It's got, does it have to be seven people? So I suggested that maybe that it be no more than seven people with three being a, uh, a, a quorum, minimal quorum. The, the I think the problem with that is in most boards and commissions, you have to have a set, unless it's an ad hoc, you have to have a set number for the quorum. And so in order to meet, you have to have a quorum, which is typically like the default quorum is one more than 50%. And that's why committees are usually uneven numbers. They're odd numbers yeah, for yeah. that purpose. So I think <laughs> it's considered a public body and it has to comply with the open meetings law. They have to have a quorum to meet. Right. So you can't just have a floating quorum. Well, not, not a floating quorum. You, you, you establish a quorum at three. And you say that they, that it can have no more than seven members, but a, but a, rather than a, designating it at seven period. A quorum because, of, if it, because if it's only got six, is it the traffic commission? A quorum, but a quorum of three isn't fifty per isn't one plus isn't fifty percent plus one, and that's usually it's usually more than half of the members of the body. Oh, okay, there's, okay. There's so then the quorum of four, then whatever. But, the quorum I mean, there's a reason that okay. there's a so so there's a reason that. Okay, we can change that, change that numbers. number there, yeah, but I, I think it needs to be more specific than, I mean, mean, it means that no more than seven with a quorum being uh, four. Right, but then if you only have four people, everybody has to come and meet. I mean, yeah. I, I think normally you set the number of people who are on boards and commissions. So I think having a fungible number 
is but unusual. We, in the code, it also says if somebody is not able to serve for mm -hmm. whatever the reason, yeah, uh, for three meetings, the well, that, that's that's a, that's a separate item. That, that we're but that, about. that's a, the village manager is supposed to uh, the chair is supposed to talk to, them, and then the village manager is supposed yeah, to that's, that, take that, that, action. That's, we might as well bring that up too. I think that's. Um, but uh, you know, it, you can't just change one committee. you saying, well, a minimum of three or a minimum of four. It it. It's the quorum is majority because otherwise, if there are, let's take it for instance, Lou. The if question is, do you have to have seven members? Me, the board you have to have seven members. That's the question. You could set a number of five. I think it's unusual, unless it's an ad hoc committee, when you form a board or commission. The number of the members is generally prescribed. Yeah, no, so just say no more than question. seven. Seven is the no, maximum. The number is prescribed. But if it's no more, that that means you can have less, and you don't want to have less. If somebody isn't performing, no, have less. That, that's an issue to be taken up uh, to get you know to be replaced. But uh, otherwise, it, it uh, Otherwise, you set yourself up for trying to play games, and I don't think I, that's well, your, I don't think that's your intent at all. I, I think I think somebody could say it's not the traffic mission. You don't have seven people. You can't you can't but do anything. It, it, you, let's let's take the board of appeals. No, no, no. It, no let's talk about the traffic it, commission because that's what we're talking about. No, but, <laughs> it, but it, applies, it applies to everybody. But what, just let me finish. Uh, you know, any board, you know, any of the land use boards say if somebody is missing, understand we don't have a full quorum. If you don't want, uh, you know, we. We have it. We can proceed because we have a number of people necessary to start. But if you don't want to proceed until you have a full board, you have that right to defer. And that's right. true. For, and that's for that's true. In the to, traffic commission, it says the traffic commission shall have seven members. Yeah. All right. There were only six. Only six active members. Which brings us to the to the uh, the, uh, the other situation. But if, let's say we decide not to fill the seventh. We don't we don't have a person we want to put on there. That, we want to let it run and run at six. You for continue a while. until you fill it. Right. No, no different than any other committee or commission we have. If if you if the if 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 you well, only have six members of the traffic commission. All right. No more than it just seems more precise. If you want to leave it imprecise, we'll leave it imprecise. It's not imprecise. Uh, oh, it is. Seven. Yes, it is. It's seven. It's seven. And you have seven members of the traffic commission. So right. a quorum, right. okay. a quorum right. is four. It's not worth not, no, no, we're talking about. So they can talking meet. About they can meet as long as they have four. Okay. All right. We're good. We're done. All right. Um, can we go back to D? Let's, uh, uh, let me see. Hang on. Yeah, let's go back to the um, uh, Bob. Does this board have the power to appoint liaisons to outside agencies? I think I answered that question a couple of meetings ago. I did. I remember. That's why I'm asking and, you again. And in the village law, appointments are made by the mayor. So we're done. Appoint, appoint, appointments to boards and commissions are made by the mayor. It's a committee appointment. So boards, commissions, committees, everything. I know I researched this question. Um, and uh, that's my recollection. I don't know if I wrote it down and put it in a memo. I don't think so. But not not two weeks ago. Did, did you do it previously? I, I remember it. That's mm -hmm. why that's why I brought it up. So what is proposed in the motion that is at the bottom of the page is not is not using the word liaison. Is using the word coordinate, and we have many discussions by different members, you know, community to whatever. Um, I believe it is perfectly in order. And this says that appoints trustee Natchez, liaison Natchez, and FMEC chair along with the village manager's office. Along, along with the chair of the, um, uh, along the village manager and the mm -hmm. chair of the um, uh, FEMAC. It's an outside agency. I don't, I don't, I don't see it to happen. 
again? I don't, I, I don't see that we have the authority to do that. Um, I mean, it, it's, ah. it's nice that the FMAC uh, recommended that, but uh, they can recommend a lot of things. I don't think we, they can, we, we can't I don't think it's perfectly within our authority. Sorry, we're asking you a question. The question, the question that has been raised, is it within our authority or not within our authority to appoint coordinator uh, to the Corps or anybody else? A what? A coordinator or a liaison? Uh, it's the word, the word is a coordinator in the motion that is suggested, not the feedback motion. The motion that is suggested is part of uh, the agenda item. So be an employee of the village, a coordinator? Jerry, you need to read the resolution. Uh, Would you like me to read it? It's, yeah, um, it. Uh, I, I, I think it, I think it's a non-starter. I don't. Um, it, 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 what's it's, the title? Well, what's the title? Coordinator or liaison? Liaisons are appointed by the board. Supervisor the trustees designates trustee liaison Natchez, uh, the FEMAC committee chairman, along with the village manager's office as the coordinators of the village with the sponsors of the Army Corps project. And the village manager's office will be responsible for working with the ACC, with the AC. Army Corps of Engineers on specific construction implementation activities. All right, so you already are the liaison for the flood committee and Tony Gelber is already the chairperson. So you're, you already have that authority as liaison. And then I'm the coordinator with the uh, Army Corps. I don't know if you need a resolution for stuff or something that's oh, already in place. There's been discussion about that, and therefore, the FEMAC recommended this uh, to the board, and um, I've massaged it a little bit to be more inclusive so that the village manager authority is not diluted. FEMA recommended it? No, oh, the, the, the uh, um, flood mitigation. Flood mitigation. Was it, what was the vote? What was uh, 511 or something like that? Um, Victor, what do you think? My, my, I, I recall that something like this happened five years ago when the Army Corps of Engineers project was being approved. I think the goal is to have a flowing communication between the manager, the board, the Army Corps, and the, and the committee which has been working many of the of the members have been working uh for for many many years i agree with so that. so as that i think is is the purpose of this so uh maybe if instead of making it an appointment we just make it a recommendation or or a, or a, we, we just stress the need for, for 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 that flow of communications to to be that's a good idea. To, to be effective, yes. So, so oh, wow. turn turn the, turn the resolution into into kind of a request that we urge, we encourage, yeah, that to to happen, because precisely I think there's another item today, that that yeah that that's yeah. where kind of it falls. How in practice do we do you play this out? So I do think, in as as in the past, and there that was as heated or even more than it was today. And by everybody coming together and the board allowing space and opportunities for the flood mitigation to meet with the Army Corps and to have that really turn out into a positive outcome. But we need to do mm -hmm. the same now. So, so turn that probably into, into, into a we call, we request, we urge. So however you want to phrase it, I think that's, that's the origin behind it. And there's a, this good precedent that thank happened, you, that uh, happened uh, before. Uh, thank you, Victor. Cherry. Uh, uh, that uh, works. See, well, Victor, uh, but Victor, Victor nailed it because Lou, what, what, what works is the fact that no matter who is the liaison appointed to the flood mitigation committee, there's a strong resolution and a strong desire from the board urging everyone to communicate, to be involved together, to be cohesive in their approach and thoughts. Because the boards of these committees and, and our committees, the village committees uh, and commissions change all the time. They can change yeah. annually. Would it be, um, would it be, uh, uh, I mean, would you be able to schedule uh, periodic uh, uh, meetings with um, uh, the committee and, uh, and, and Dan uh, and maybe somebody from the, from the, from the Corps if they would, uh, if they would uh, appear? Yeah, uh, so the way, the way I would approach, yeah, so the way I would approach that is to see what the Corps wants to do as far as regular meetings 
And then of course we make ourselves available. So it would be the flood mitigation liaison, flood mitigation committee liaison, the chairperson, whether it's Tony or someone else, Dan, Dan Sarnoff, my partner and myself. And uh, the four of us would meet with the core on, on their schedule. So basically when they think or when they thought it would be the best time to and, and trustee, Nat, trustee Natchez would be included in that as liaison to the FMAC? As a, as in when he's still the liaison for FMAC, of course. Okay, great, great. Well, that seems, that seems this, reasonable. This, no. this goes a little bit further than that. What? There are different levels of the core for communication. Uh, you know, and that's why the resolution was structured the way it is. So that we can, and, you know, to the extent that anybody has contacts, and I have a lot of contacts at various levels. Um, to try and help move things forward faster. That's right. the whole. That, I mean, that's the whole point of this. Uh, it's not to take away anybody's responsibilities or activities. It is to try and foster moving things as quickly and as meaningful as we can, because everybody says and knows that flooding is a big issue here. But we come up against. So a, I, I don't know why against... anybody would be opposed to you know doing anything that would foster that. I think it's great for the liaison, but we come up against the reappointment of the appointment of the FMAC liaison in December. And, at that and point whoever would, that person is. That, that would be, and that would be changed to the, at that point. Fine. All right. So, so, let, so uh, uh, okay. So what, what's the, I mean, what's the issue? Then, I mean, take then, the names out, take the names out and just use titles. And then there's no issue. That, that's because, fine. Fine. Because yeah. Victor, because Victor's urging, changing what Victor recommended is is, is perfect. Okay, so why don't we say trustee set layers on? Just take the last paragraph, which says motion, and yeah. change it to trustee layers on, um, of, FEMAC. Mm -hmm. The chairman, uh, the FEMAC chairman, along with the village manager, office as coordinators of the village with the sponsors of the. No, you gotta, you gotta take it coordinated. Just, just, let, just let me finish, please. I'm sorry, I didn't know. And the village manager's office be responsible for working with the ACE on specific construction implementation activities. No. The reason for the latter is that is where most of the activities are going to take place, you know, and that is something that should be vested with, with uh, your office, period. A coordinator. A coordinator is a staff member of this organization. Anyone coordinating anything is on the public payroll. If we use the terms that Victor uses, where it is urged that the trustee liaison, the chairperson of the uh, of FEMAC, of FMAC, and the village manager work together with the urging, all of those things is a good idea. When you use the word coordinator, that's a position in the village. That's how I see it. I, and maybe I, Bob has a different I, I opinion. I respectfully disagree, but I appreciate your 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 yeah, your position. It implies a management responsibility. Yeah. So, so I, I think what we're talking about is we're talking about communication, not authority. Right. Okay. And communication is is really it's really a good idea. It's a really good, you know, potential. I think what it should be is it should be reworked to use communication, urging. Um, since it's very different from what I think the, 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 the flood mitigation has presented, if it's gonna change significantly, then it should go back to the flood mitigation committee um, for well, that let, discussion. We can take it from here. I think they've, they've made themselves clear. Uh, Victor, Victor would, would you, could you write a, a proposed? Uh... Uh, let, let's do it right now, but let, let's. It's, uh, what? I mean, Victor's an attorney. He could he could do it. He's muted. Because the motion, even the motion above it, from Dave Finch says appoints trustee Natchez, right? So so appointing the trustee and the chairperson as liaisons for the village is already done. That that's already done. You know, um, Dave Finch is correct. They get appointed um, to work with the flood mitigation committee. Um, but then coordinators is, is like Dan said, management responsibility, definitely, you know, within the authority of the village manager.
Okay, so why don't we do this? Okay. The Village of Romernick Board of Trustees designates. No, no, the, the urges. No, let me finish. We're not designating anything. Mm -hmm. Urges is the right word to use. If you all would just let me finish, you may be happy with what I want to suggest. Okay, I got it. Okay. The Village of Romerna designates trustee liaison of the FEMAC, the FEMAC chairman, along with the village manager's office to urge, <clears throat> to urge and work with uh, the sponsors of the ACE project in the village manager's office be responsible working with the ACE on specific construction implementation activities. All right. So change designates to recommend in the first sentence, and you've got it. You've nailed it. I think you nailed it. Uh, it's a, the board doesn't recommend. The board takes an action. It either says to do this or not to do this. It's not recommending anything. Well, the it's, motion is to recommend something, and then it gets voted on, isn't it? It, the, it is a recommendation to be voted on. You are absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. That's so not, that, the, village, the village board of trustees recommends trustee liaison, uh, FMAC chairperson, and the village manager's office uh, urging, right, to work with the sponsor of the ACE project. How about determines instead of recommend? So the Village of Ameriknik Board of Trustees determines that FMAC trustee liaison and FMAC chairman, along with the village manager's office, and then do the urging words. All right, so determines and designates is the same thing. I think what Victor was trying to, to convey is that it's recommended <laughs> and it's something like a process that should be implemented where the liaison, the, the, the FMAC chairperson, and of course, you know, Dan and I, we work closely. Um, um, and that's why the last part of the resolution is there. That, that, that doesn't take away any of things from that. So the other part about the recommend is it's also establishing the chain of communication between the core, right. the EDC and the village. I don't think that this, uh, board can direct the core and or the state DEC no. on their communication board. No, that, that's not their, they'll do whatever they want to do. That This is what the village is trying to do. Hey, how about this? We direct the village manager to, um, uh, to uh, uh, facilitate open communications with the Army Corps of Engineers regarding, uh, regarding the uh, flood mitigation project designating, um, designating the FMAC chair and trustee liaison uh, as, um, as point people. That, I'm sorry, that doesn't do what the intent is. Well, I don't know what I, you're intending. I, I you're apologize, intending, you're intending to, to, you're, you're to, to go in and sit and, and, and design a project with them. That's not going to happen. And I mean, that's why the, the last part of the paragraph is there that said that that responsibility is very, very specific to the village manager's office. I think, I think what we need to say is that you want to, that the FMAC, uh, we want to keep you guys in the loop so you can, you can provide feedback. That's, no. that, that's basically it. So no. you know what's going it's, on. It's, it's more than that. And I'm sorry, I disagree with well, that. Well, if it's more than that, it's too much. The Village of Mermanic Board of Trustees. Fine, I understand it. What was your word uh, instead of designate or that you had suggested? Determines. Determines. It's the same. Recommends is, recommends is a, a stronger word in what Victor was asking uh, us to consider. Victor, you want it worked to last time. It worked, it worked last time, and I think it could work again. You want to take a swing at it, Victor? I don't have the text in front of me, but no, it's, I, it's, I, it's, it's I, just I, a request. It's, it's a request, and we urge yeah. that this happens. It's just turn that 
language of okay that, language okay of we can, that, that works here we go the village manager um, board of trustees requests using your language trustee liaison of the femac the femac chairman along with the village manager's office uh, urge and work with the sponsors of the ac project uh, um, urge moving forward Uh, um, uh, and continue with the rest in the, um, uh, in the village manager's office, be responsible for working with the ACE on specific construction implementation activities. Specific or all? Important to have. So, Why not all, all construction implementation uh, activities? Yeah, all is better than specific. Yeah, it works better. We're getting there. Okay, I don't know. I have no problem with that, with the construction. Okay, so is let, it me read, let me read it one more time, see if everybody is um, understands it. And then if anybody's on board, we'll move forward. If not, we won't, okay. The Village of Mermernick <clears throat> Board of Trustees requests trustee liaison, the, I'm sorry, the FEMAC trustee liaison, the FEMAC chairman, along with the village manager's office to urge moving forward and work with the sponsors of the ACE project and the village manager's office be responsible for working with the ACE on all construction implementation activities. Right, so the liaison and the chair shouldn't work with the manager's office. The urge to, we have to replace that work with with something else. No, that's what we want to do. We all want to work together, Jerry. We're, 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 all in the, stay in the, stay in we're all in the boat together, Jerry. Yeah. So that's, that's the motion I'd like to propose that and so move if there's if somebody okay. want to second that so we can Can we forward. read it one more time? Yeah, clarify. The Village of Bermarnik Board of Trustees requests the trustee liaison of the FEMAC, the FEMAC committee chairman, along with the village manager's office to urge moving forward and work with the sponsors of the ACE project and the village manager's office be responsible working with the ACE on all construction implementation activities. I think request and urge is redundant. And, and works with indicates that the trustee liaison and the BMAC chairperson actually has a, a you know, management responsibility. And I think urge, urge increased communication, urge repetitive communication, urge quarterly communication, yeah. Something, something good. Urge moving forward. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That urge moving forward is good. Um, uh, communication with the sponsors of the ACE project in the village manager's office. Be responsible for working with the ACE on all construction implemented activities. I think the communication part um, is good because the, out of communication comes information, potential ideas, uh, you know, those kinds of things, a little bit of guidance potentially, uh, but works with designates two, two you know, one part-time employee, uh, elected employee, uh, and one uh, uh, volunteer as a, as a with management responsibilities in the project. That may be a little- They don't have management response. You're, I think you're, you're reading something into it for whatever the reason that is not there. And I appreciate your concerns, but that's not there. That's why the specifics of the construction, that is why it's th that is there. So with it. anyway. How about communicate and collaborate? We have all that in there. Yeah. There you go. Communicate and collaborate. That's it. Communicate, collaborate works. There you go. Thank you. Communicate. That, that, that's much cleaner. The lawyers have the words, Lou. They have the words. So are we saying... The Village of Ameranek Board of Trustees requests FMAC liaison. Trustee liaison. FMAC trustee liaison and FMAC chair. Along with. Oh, along with the village manager's office. Um, communicate and collaborate to Going forward. Yeah. Move, to move, move the forward. project forward. Communicate and collaborate with the sponsors of the ACE project. Yeah. Um, Just do it that way. So. Okay. And, the, so, and, keep it, and just change specific to all down below. And yeah, to all down below. I can live with that. Um, 
it seems to me that 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 village manager should 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 be the one being the, uh, at the top there because the, uh, uh, because the FEMAC and uh, and and uh, and the uh, liaison don't are connected with the project. So he is. all right, so well, let's try we're this. We're all connected with it. The village of the board of trustees <laughs> requests that this might even be better that the village manager's mm -hmm. office collaborate with trustee with FMAC trustee liaison and FMAC chair. There you go. To communicate, I may have used collaborate before, communicate and collaborate with the sponsors of the ACE project and the manager's office. This is like a little, this no, is forget about the manager's office and the manager's office uh, is responsible uh, for all construction implementation. Yeah, and the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm appreciative of that, but that's not going where both, both the committee came from and what I'm suggesting. That's why it should go back. And I think, and I think that's that's part of the issue. Yeah. Well, and, 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 that's, and that's what I hear. You know, and for whatever the reason is, I think Jerry is concerned that he's being undermined, and that's not the case at all. Well, I, know. No, I, I, I mean, no, the, no, village law and in, in my position, I'm not concerned about that. I, I'm, I'm on firm standing of, of my responsibilities and and my uh, um, um, authority with with projects in the village. I have no problem with that. I just, if it's not clear, then we all think it's something else. I think it's very clear the way the way it was proposed. Just changing it around, I think, limits the potential of communication. And that's part of the problem. I think, uh, and I'll so, be honest with you. Let me finish. I, I think what, what we're doing here is letting too many cooks into the kitchen and we're going to screw it up. Well, I think it's hard to write something. Yeah. That it's hard when five people are trying to write something at the same time. He's right. He's right. Um, yeah. But it, if it's a substantive change, it's probably fair that it goes back to the FMAC board for that discussion. Now they may just say no, send it back the way we wanted it, but you know that's not. It, 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 we're it we're keeps, free to do what we want. We don't have to take their recommendation. We, we don't have to go back to the FMAC. No. I'm happy to bring it back, but I don't think that's the point. No, I, I, their, I, their their feelings are rep are representative. I'm per perfectly happy to accept or reject their their advice. I mean, so um, uh, you, this you, is a board decision. Board decision exactly, and I, I don't think uh, it's a good idea. I think we're so close. We already had a text by by redrafting it at the last minute. Then we, yeah, we, yeah. we we were there. But, but I, Dan's I, I, not happy. This, this has been on. This has been on for a couple of months now. Uh, you know, everybody's had this. You know, and to say that you know, if you don't want to focus on it, that's fine. No, no. I, I, I've made the motion. Does anybody want a second? Well, we, I don't know what the motion is, Dan. We got it. You're right. I mean, it's been here since April 20th, and you, you're you're 100 right that it's been here since April 20th. No, so, and, and the core is moving on. So either we do that, we either get on board or we don't get on board. That's all. No. Let me. I'm. You know, what? I'm going to work on the language for a couple of minutes. You want to go on to the next thing and okay. let me try and Let's make this look. Yes. Okay. Um. Protocols and procedures for removal of volunteer board members and commissioners. It's uh, G. That this was um, what uh, we alluded to earlier when we had a, uh, a member of the uh, traffic commission who um, had just stopped coming to meetings, and um, we uh, uh, wanted to get rid of him, but um, the the uh, code says that uh, that the only the village manager can do that after he misses three meetings and has a conversation with him. So he never returned to his calls. So there was never a conversation. So he was never removed. That's how this, that's how this whole thing started. So it dragged on and on and on. And uh, I think we need to correct that. There's gotta be, a, we, I think all these people serve at, at the board's pleasure and can be uh, put on or, or removed by the board. And it, it shouldn't be a, a, um, a uh, tortuous uh, um, procedure for removing people. Um, when, you just changed uh, instead of saying that uh, after a conversation, after Phyllis Manor attempts to have a conversation. So if nobody answers, he can, you just you just go on. Let's um, uh, let, let's uh, let's take a look at the, the can we can we change that rule? You want to um, look at it? If you got to consider changing it, the village manager doesn't have nor do I ever or would ever get involved in any kind of appointment. 
So this is a board function. Yeah. They put people on these boards. Why not adopt the same function or the same process that you put people on and to take people off? Well, you can report. That'll right? come up later too. When but this, um, when this law when this law was adopted, mm -hmm. this, the theory was that it was um awkward for a trustee liaison to have a conversation with a volunteer. Okay. So the trustee liaison, or so the chair of the committee was asked to oh. talk to the village manager. The village yeah. manager has a conversation with the, trust, with, the, with the member who is not able to, and this is only for people who can't attend. This sure. isn't for anything else. And if, and if, and if it's, if they, have the conversation and this person, you know, had an extenuating circumstance and promises to come or says they can come, the behavior will change. The board, then that's what the manager reports back. But, the, the, but that's how the removal can be. And um, obviously if you've been trying to contact somebody who did not get in touch with you, that person is not gonna be able to change their behavior and is not gonna come. Right. And that's been going on. So I think that that's, you know, you might change the law for that regard, but I think bringing it back to having the board of trustees vote on removing people is probably not the best idea. And this is only people who don't show up at the meetings. And that's the other thing. There's gotta be other reasons that you'd want to take somebody off the board. I don't really think we should be going there, but you, really? know, you might just not like somebody. I don't yeah. think. Or whatever, maybe they're disruptive. I, you get appointed to a board for a, for a term. Some people don't get reappointed, but I, I'm not sure that we should be. These are not Supreme Court seats. I mean, they're, they're uh, uh, voluntary appointments. I mean, they, they, I mean, they should be, I mean, what about uh, arrest, drunkenness? Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's gotta be, there's gotta be some language in there for, uh, for removal, moving people, just not showing up is the only thing. That's gotta be the, uh, the uh, most secure gig in the so world. If somebody gets arrested, we want to remove them from a board or commission before they've had a trial. I, I think this is not going, I, I, I don't think we should be talking about removing people from boards and commissions. Well, I don't see- That's our job, isn't it? I, I, it's, it's our job to appoint people to boards and commissions. Well, you, well later on, we're gonna, you're gonna talk about removing them also. No, we're talking about- The authority to remove them. It, which is, specific to planning board and zoning board members and it's it's in new york state law it's not okay. it's not well, it's not it's our law well i just thought we'd be consistent um but uh there there's that glaring uh problem there so i would uh, uh could could we um uh, could, can somebody draft a, a new version of this with, with, with some with some suggestions of, about how we could change the uh that process with the, with the proper legal wording Bob? Maybe with some suggestions about, uh, uh, about you know, causes for removal or... Uh... You know, I'd be happy to draft it. Just give me some substance of what it is that you want. Well, what, what we want is, in other words, um, right now it says, if you look at it, um, it says uh, the only way somebody can be removed is by not showing up. Um, and it would appear to me that there must be other a boilerplate uh, language for a removal of, uh, of people for conduct. Um, well, first of all, I don't think that's accurate to say that this says the only way you can be removed is if you don't show up. Mm -hmm. This uh, uh, provides a mechanism mm -hmm. by which you can remove without a hearing and you know, the mayor's uh, in, uh, involving the mayor's power to remove. Understood. The idea when this was adopted was to uh, provide some feedback and then a uh, process mm -hmm. by which you know, the issue of not attendance mm -hmm. can occur. The questions are, I think, that you need to answer before we draft something are do you want to uh, either narrow or broaden the range of uh, issues for which a board member? can be removed. I don't want to say automatically, it's not automatic. Yeah, yeah. Without a hearing. And how do you want to do it? And how do you want to accomplish this? If someone 
what is it? What is a what is it that establishes that a board or committee or commission member is not doing what he or she is supposed to do? And who do you want to address that? Those are the issues. Obviously. Okay, so with the, right now the manager addresses it uh, at the suggestion what, of the chairman. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the chairman. The suggestion is not really accurate because it's, it's not. It's a report. The report, chairman reports that he just just got fact. somebody's not showing up, right? right. So um, uh, if let's say uh, the bulk of a uh, of, of of the commission of commissioners or board members find what one person does uh, to be particularly uh, uh, egregious, that could be, uh, 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 and there, there must be other things other than not being there. Well, remember, there's always, there are always other ways of, uh, there are ways of dealing with situations that mm -hmm. go beyond what this says. This deals with a specific issue of non-attendance. Got it. If other board members feel that someone is, egregiously abusing office or, you know, whatever, you can always ask the village board, you can say, ask the mayor to remove that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understood. We, I mean, we don't have, a, we haven't, I mean, we, we don't really have a mechanism for that. Right. That's true. For, for removing? Do we need a mechanism for that to remove? Yeah, that's, that's your call. I'm saying, that's in, in order. That's why they elected you. <laughs> I'm saying in order. Thanks, Bob. In order to do that, we would have to provide a mechanism in the code, as my, in my question, or could we just say, well. Well, if you, if you want to have a formal way of doing it, you have to provide that mechanism. All right. If you want to rely on you know, goodwill and, gee, if you people don't think I'm doing a good job, maybe I should resign, then you don't need a mechanism. If you want to do it as, something, as an informal process, then you don't need a mechanism at all. You're going to do this. But, yeah. I mean, it would want to, you also want this. to avoid a situation where if somebody, if the majority does happen to like somebody's views, say get rid of them, that, that people are put on there for reasons, okay? Uh, either their expertise, their knowledge, their desiring to serve, whatever it is, there's a myriad of reasons. Absolutely. Just because one doesn't happen to agree with another, there's no reason to remove somebody. Well, nobody's suggesting that. I mean, uh, the, the, but but that's, the thing the thing that got me was that was that uh, uh, this person hadn't hadn't been attending for a long time, so I figured he he's gone, right? But then I find out that no, he's not gone because this procedure hasn't. Been, so there's a, suddenly there's this formal procedure. I said, well, can't we just appoint somebody else to take this guy's place? No, because he's still on the board, he's still on the commission. Well, can, how how can we get rid of him? Well, <laughs> only Jerry can do that after a conversation. And now, you know, and I had uh, some folks go, well, where are we going to get our other commissioner? I said, I thought he was gone. You know, I mean, I, I didn't know that you had to, that it was like, you know, I felt like I was dealing with a Supreme Court justice or something. So, yeah. so um, in this particular case, what I gather from what I'm hearing is Jerry tried to contact him. He wouldn't return the phone calls. Mm -hmm. I, I think then. That's correct. That's if, correct. If you just simply change the word in the code from uh, uh, conversation to communication. Oh. He can write him a letter and say, if I don't hear from him. Yeah, yeah, notify. Maybe maybe you can notify them. Uh, I, I, I tried to talk to him, and he never called back, so I'll just throw him off. What's the big deal? I don't know. Okay, right. big deal. So, uh, uh, listen, what struck me was... I just thought we should have had a conversation about it, and we're having a conversation now. That's yeah, all. and, and uh, it was, it was in, uh, suggested to me that I look at the code. I look at the code, and the code seemed wanting, so I brought it up. That was it. So, he would have called me back if he wanted to stay on, so what... You know what I mean? I, I know, but maybe he could say that. Uh, I, I don't want to belabor this. It just seemed overly, overly complex for a guy that didn't show up at, uh, at a traffic commission meeting. Language of the code. So, what do we, we want to do with this? Do we want to have consult with the consult. member, with the chair, and the member? If the village manager reaches out to the member and the member refuses to call him back, mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that satisfies the requirements of consultation. Okay. Right? Probably a pretty good indication the member's not going to show up either. Okay, should we put that in the code or is it just to find the way it is? Is it implied? Okay, okay. Super. I don't think it's necessary. I think the village manager, and this is the case of the authority, has satisfied the code requirements. Okay, great. All right. You answered my question. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. H. H. I think I might have gotten this right. Okay. All right. So, 
Can you um, put it up? Can you put it up on the board? No, no. <laughs> I'm not on Zoom. No, <laughs> no. I can I can email it to Dan. Can Who you else? project it onto the wall? No, can you? no, I cannot. <laughs> No, I can't. Can you can you can we'll email it to Augie. He can put it on. Can I email it to Augie? He can email it to me and I can put it on. Okay, okay. great. Great. Why don't we do H why that's being done? Okay. Keep okay. moving forward. You're on a roll. You want, yeah. You want to be vice chair? Well, right, Jerry. Thank you. Um I'm not into Jerry has suggested also yes. he wants to read. Yeah, that? so uh, yeah, so so I have you know, take a look at both. You can put one up first and then the other one. Okay. Okay. Up first and then and then Nora's, but Nora, Nora's got I think Nora's got the right the right idea. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> all right, so our, oh, I guess we're up now. Okay, so never mind. Now, Lou, read this if you can see it. I don't know if you can see. Okay, it. all right, here we go. The um, um, motion: the Village of Maranac Board of Trustees suggests that the Village Manager's Office include the Trustee Liaison and the FMAC Chairman while communicating with the agencies of the ACE Project. And that the village manager's office be responsible working with the ACE on all construction implementation activities. Right, that, that sounds pretty good, no? Nora, you got a couple of words you want to change? Um, well, I, I like, I thought I, collaborate and coordinate isn't in there. Oh, collaborate and coordinate, yeah. So, and, so and I had just look at mine, but I mean, Augie has mine it's slightly. Yeah, co collaborate and coordinate is better than communicate because it's more, right, it's more specific. The Village of Marana Board of Trustees requests that the FMAC trustee liaison and FMAC chair, along with the Village Manager's Office, collaborate and coordinate with the sponsors of the ACE project to move the project forward and that the Village Manager's Office be responsible for working with ACE on all construction implementation activities. Um, and, and that seems fine, except I'd like, I like it if we put village manager's office first, since they're the, uh, since that's yeah, so, the so take collaborate and coordinate and replace my communication. And I think, I think the, the, I think, I think you might have it. The village managers. So, so, so Augie, put mine back up if you can and do collaborate and coordinate. Yeah. Just, just copy that. Yeah, I sort of like it the way it is. Let, let's just leave it that way for a minute. Yeah, so, so, so then it. FMAC board collaborate and coordinate because it's more specific this way because there's a lot of agencies with the ACE no, project. You're asking to be included. Yeah, yeah, collaborate and coordinate. What do you want that, Jerry? Uh, put that where it says communicate while communicate. Uh, I will. It should be will communicate. Change will communicate to collaborate and coordinate, and I think you got it. I think it works right there. Hold on, I gotta change my screen. My screen is messed up. You want to change instead of include along with. I don't FMC. have a problem. With, but Jerry, yes, in all due respect, yes, you have a problem working with me, and I understand that. And that's well, not for long, Dan. Let me for finish, long. please, Jerry. Thank okay. you. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. You know, you've you've put it in writing. You've sent sure. it many times yeah. uh, in, in emails to me. Um, it's not going to change, and I understand it. And that's that's your that's your situation that you have to deal with. No, it is going to change. It's going to change in December. What do you mean? This is to try to include. I'm talking about sure yeah. it'll change in December. We have between now and December, oh. and this is a very... okay. So. You know, I thought you're talking about the future. future. So, you, so then, you, so you don't want to do this now, or what? I don't understand. I want to do it later? No, no, I. Excuse me. The village of Mermanic Board of Trustees suggests that the village manager, along with change, include to along with. Can you do that? Uh I'm trying. Augie, can you do that? You, do you have I, control I, of that? I'm doing it. Give me a, I'm, give me a second, Dan. Take, take, take the word out and say along with. Yes, yeah, so all what you do is you reply to this and then copy the motion and then you can change the motion in a draft email. So just reply to this, reply all, and you'll be able to do it. Well, I'm in reply all right now. That's why I'm able to edit it. Okay. Yeah. So how about we do this? One second. Let me copy this, open up Word. Let me keep the original and then the revised. Good. Give me one second, I'll do that. Awesome. One second. Do you have something that's gonna work?
started so well. But we're gonna, but we're gonna finish this. We're gonna we finish this. But Lou, the other concern is if the if the if the, the the new FMC trustee liaison doesn't want to be involved in the FMC project, but just well, I, I, I think well, that's, that's, that's fine, and that's up to them. Redirect you. Redirect. No, they shouldn't be, in, and they shouldn't be the liaison. Yeah. I mean, yeah, listen, a lot of things could change. But they may not have expertise. They may not have interest. That's the thing. Right. But, but, that, Jerry, we'll, we'll handle that. Don't worry about it. Okay, so let me share my screen again. I think I did it. I think I. Hold on. Beautiful. So this is the original on top and the revised is on the bottom. Dan, please continue. Of Board of Trustees requested the village manager's office. I can't read that. Oh, along with. Okay, along with. So we have to get rid of include, along with the trustee liaison and the FMAC chairman will collaborate and coordinate communicating with, with the agencies of the ACE project and that the manager's office. No, not the, the it's yeah, the so stakeholders, it's not the. A, with the sponsors, not agencies, sponsors. 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 Change, yeah. So agencies are sponsors. Uh, well, no, it's not, it's, oh. it's sponsors. Mm -hmm. Sponsors. sponsors. Oh, so we turn agencies into sponsors. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. That I can support. Okay. All right. The village man the village of Mamarna Court of Justice suggests the village manager's office. Thought, okay. Comma, along with along with mm -hmm. trustee Lee. So get rid of include. Put yeah. a comma after with, get rid of include. Yep. Good. And get rid of um. I think you can get rid of the, the FMAC trustee re liaison. Put FMAC before trustee, yeah. I think. You want me to get rid of Nora? Right before, after the and before trustee. trustee put it on the FMAC chairman. No, I think that, okay, but yes. We just want to make sure it's FMAC trustee liaison, not arts council. Um, yep. Trustee we'll liaison. We'll collaborate. Collaborate and coordinate communication with the agency. Can you shrink that again? Okay. I don't know how I enlarged it. I don't know the bottom. Maybe. The bottom right corner, where it says three, three, five, and one pill makes you larger. <laughs> You're the best, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. I'm collaborate and coordinate. Um, we'll collaborate and coordinate. Um, communications or just i think i don't even need communicating we'll collaborate and coordinate Indeed. with the sponsors yeah yeah with the sponsors of the agencies yeah that's right with, with the sponsor so change get rid of communication yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. agencies to sponsors mm -hmm. we're good and responsive after agencies no, the sponsors no, instead, instead of agencies agency. put sponsors so the agencies and our sponsors yeah mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. Great. Okay. Okay. Good. okay. Okay. So okay. Uh, we, I so move. We, we all agree to um to yep. to what to, to so that's the, the next no, no, to, no, to, no, this is a resolution. It's on. It's, it's is it on for the work session? It's on for, the, it's on for today. No, no, yes. No, no, so, no, this is not, no, we, uh, well, so let's let's take it a step at a time. Right well, now, you know. We agree with. I mean, we we've settled on a resolution. You just agreed to move it to the next regular meeting. That's all. Right. Well, no, we haven't. I'd like to move it to this meeting. It's taken so long to get here. I'd like to keep moving forward. We're on a roll. Yeah, but you know what? Um, I hear I hear Tom saying that we don't do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. We have lots of things on the agenda tonight that are going on. You know that have not been in work session before right. that are going on. So we don't follow it. It's not going to hurt August eighth. It's not going to hurt. Uh, Nothing's going to happen between now and then. Yeah. yeah. Actually, 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 actually time, time is moving not in our favor right. to move forward. 
Um, uh, we're talking about the other um, flood mitigation stuff tonight too. So yeah. I think let's just do it all at once. And literally, then we don't have to deal with this in two weeks. I agree. But we did the hard part right now. Yeah. Um, you know, we did the hard part right now. Let's just. Oh, let's if, just if, you wanna, if you want to move let's, it to tonight, and, yeah, and then uh, yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll put it on you guys. Okay. Remind you next time I want to move something. Okay. It gives the chair, it gives the chair of the FMAC uh, an opportunity to come uh, and support the, the resolution on August 8th. That's also a good idea. Jerry, I think he's uh, coming tonight. He may or may not be here tonight, but that's not the problem. Oh, okay. just, we'll just keep on moving. That's too bad. All right. Um, uh, so is there a motion or no? Uh, if, um, it, 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 ain't, it ain't going on tonight unless you, unless you I make move a motion that we, I move that we accept the resolution as adopted. Do we need to read it aud again no. or I think we're okay? As written. As, as written. As written. As modified. Okay. You're moving. Anybody second? I'll second. No, no, no. I'm just like, but, but that we, so that we ex just, yeah, so you're going to move to okay. advance it to the regular session tonight, yeah. in 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 in, uh, in exception to our normal procedures. Yeah. All right. So that's the motion. Yep. Yeah. That we put. I second it. That we move it to uh, on to for the regular meeting tonight. Augie, call the roll. Trustees Young. No. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafour. Yeah. Good work, everybody. Right. Yeah. Took an effort, but we got there. Collaboration. Okay. All right. So now um, let's take a 10 minute break. No. Yeah. Let's, let's just let's keep it. Let's keep on moving. No, we, we can get through, we can a, get through a lot. <laughs> we'll be back in 10 minutes. Whatever, yes. Whatever the chair, yes. Why? If the chair wants 10 minutes or five, whatever, sure. Okay, let's, let's make it five minutes. Let's just keep on moving. 10 minutes, let's go, come on. Yeah, whatever the chair wants, it's, it's fine.
All right. So what? Start coming back in on H. We got to get back on the phone. Okay, meeting is live. All right, we're back again after taking a brief break. Thank you for your patience. Uh, again, this is a Board of Trustees work session. We're uh, on uh, Old Business H, which is provisions for free parking uh, permits for uh, the American Legion Post 90 Community Counseling Center, the Emelin Theater, LMC Media, and the Mamaroneck Public Library. Um, this is, um, uh, I believe, across the street at the, uh, uh, at the, what are they, what do they call it? Hunter, Hunter yeah, Parking. It's just um, uh, GP permits. Yeah, My wife calls it the aircraft carrier, but it's, a, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it is uh, the, um, we're going to be giving uh, these folks uh, parking permits for free parking, and it comes to the tune of what, about $30,000 worth? How many permits are we talking about? First of all, let's start there. Jerry? We have it in the back of it. So it's all the employees of the library. It would be um, all of the members of the, uh, of, of the, what, what is it next door? American Legion. Seven for the Legion, Seven, uh, five. five for LMC, uh, 16 for the Emily, and the 28 for the Emily Public Library. Right. Uh, we, we do have various you know, uh, relationships with all of these agencies, organizations. And I, I did note that you know, at one point the library was the Department of the Village. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, if that was the case, we, we would have right, probably for them like we do for mm -hmm. normal. So, so to, to break it apart, if I could for, for a second, the intent is to discuss this so that <clears throat> when we come to um, uh, renting of the space or uh, utilizing their facility, um, that we potentially um, create and identify some agreements uh, that would help us um, secure those facilities um, in the similar manner that we provide the uh, $35,000 worth, uh, worth of parking permits. For instance, uh, from time to time, we need certain space. Uh, we ask for certain um, um, assistance in certain things. And we just want to make sure that um, there's some kind of a pre-discussed agreement that um, if we are providing uh, free parking passes, that we would also, you know, um, have some kind of a discussion for the use of uh, certain individuals, uh, uh, talents, facilities, those kinds of things. All right. That's so kind it's, of the reason why it's on here. Okay. All right. So it's, uh, you know. Just help each other out um, because it should be known that the parking permits for non-village entities can add up quickly and a lot of money. Okay. Well, you, Bob? I was just going to say, as, as Jerry and Dan have both pointed out, you can't just give away parking permits for free. Right. It's have to be part of a contractual relationship mm -hmm. if the village is, is getting something for the gift. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so then, the, and these things will be uh, um, delineated? Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. First of all, is this something they initiated or we initiated? Um, I'm sorry, I uh, I wouldn't know, Dan. It could probably goes it goes it definitely goes back before I joined the village, so I wouldn't be able to answer that. I don't know how it was initiated. I know it exists annually. It's happening now. Yeah. yeah, it happens. It happens because it's been in place for a long time. Yeah, like I said, I mean the the, the library has been independent since 1990. I understand that. Um, LMC has been in existence for 70s. 20, yeah. Yeah, 70s. 70s. Uh, so, the other one is probably 70s. How, how many parts that we're talking about? Roughly uh, almost 50 permits. How many spaces do we have in Hunter Tier? Uh, somewhere around uh, 200, give or take. But, you know, with, with a lot of these permits, um, you know, you're you're not you're typically not going to see 
everyone there at the same time. No. I, 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 understand, be, I understand that. But yeah. we, worst case scenario, okay. Let's say we have 200, okay. You know, that's 25% that you're taking off. Did, did, and how many, how many permits do we have in Village Hall that we uh, give out? For employees? For employees. Do we do we do that? Yeah. So we how many do we have? I can answer that. We give out permits for the regatta parking down mm -hmm. below. Um, yeah. Probably it's probably a, a dozen, um, thirteen. Okay. What about for one sixty nine? Uh, 169, we have uh, building department staff and um, court staff. Police, you know, they don't, they can park, they park on Johnson without really much uh, of a concern for us. I understand yeah, that, but do we, do, do we, we don't give out parking passes for Hunter is what I'm hearing for staff. Is that correct? Uh, we, we utilize Hunter parking for our pool cars um, and we uh, ask staff to park on the Mount Pleasant parking lot next to the courtroom where you guys are. Okay, but my question is, or is it is the statement correct that we do not give out parking passes to employees for Hunter Tier? And we don't give out GP parking passes to employees, correct? So, the, so we, what we're doing is reducing Hunter by twenty five percent, potentially. Uh, I, I I don't think that's accurate. I I just took, took the numbers that sit yeah, in the back up and what I, what I mentioned is you have a lot of part time employees at the, right. the library. They are not working at the same time. So they have a lot more and, flexibility. And, and the same thing with the American Legion. Um, it would be rare that you would have all in use at the same time, say with the Emerald and LRC. So it's a, uh, it's a uh, they're not, it's not fair to say that we would be giving away a quarter of the parking at any one time to everyone we're giving free parking to. I don't think the uh, uh, the actual use would bear that out. But I, I think the ask isn't whether or not we should be giving these away. It's just that we have been doing it without an agreement. We need to yeah. formalize yeah. it yeah. in an agreement. Exactly. And this is already happening. It's not too much parking. It's not overwhelming. Yeah. Our, I mean, if we have to really repair mm -hmm. the Hunter lot, that's going to inconvenience everybody in the village. But mm -hmm. it's, this isn't about whether or not we should be letting these parking spaces be used. It's what we want to ask in return because we have to formalize the right. agreement. We have to have multiple. We have to have an agreement with each entity so that mm -hmm. we're, you know, on 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 solid footing. Nor right. Yeah. So what what are you asking for tonight? Well, you know we. Um, we we'll make sure that this is, you know, we can move forward with continuing to provide free parking and negotiating the agreements. For well, I think what you have to do is bring back agreements. I don't have a problem if you have, but there's no agreement at this. It's, okay. uh, it's so I just want to make sure that there was no issue with uh, moving forward. Okay, so you're asking uh, for a conceptual I'm, I'm wondering what kind of agreement we would have with the American Legion, but. Um... And, you know, we, we have agreements with uh, uh, the Emlyn right now. Yeah. Uh, we provide them with, I think, $16,000 a year. Uh, mm -hmm. We have an agreement with... We, we've yeah. used the American Legion Hall for building, yeah. especially when this oh, when yeah. this was being redone. Okay, we've used great, it for right, permits. That, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so conceptually, I don't have a problem, but I'd like you to bring back the agreements. Oh, absolutely. We'd have to get them approved by the board. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. So we can expect yeah. the, the agreements, and uh, we, we're, we all agree in principle to this? Okay, great. All right, um, uh, I, discussion of watershed characteriza characterization and field work sites. This, this was, um, what is this? What? The, the field work was already done, right? Yeah, so that was in the, uh, done, it said that we we're gonna do the field work in June. June. So they're yeah. just look, I mean, my sense is they're looking for ways where they can figure out how that there are parcels that are big enough within the village and the town and the village a large Mont Pelham as well to find sites that they might be able to use for water retention. What do they need from us? They wanted to know if, if we had any more suggestions of more sites. 
but they sent the memo May 26, and they were doing the field work two weeks later. As you said, moot. Right? That's my question. I mean, is it moot? I mean, not that I think this is a bad idea, but if they've already done the field work. Well, I think they need to coordinate with the county that is doing a watershed management study. So this this looks like it, 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 the ship already sailed anyway, right? Am I correct? Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, let's move on to J then. Uh, Hurricane I Isaias and Ida after action capital purchase recommendations. And Jerry, this looked familiar to me. I mean, I, I, I the pictures, uh, the, the stuff, didn't we just do this? Some of it. We looked at some uh, of it. This was, we've had this on the work session for <coughs> about a month now. Uh, we actually got to the extent of having it on board this a week before the agenda. Uh, but we did receive some additional uh, requests from the cover master's office and the police department. And that's the one we did. Correct. These are additional requests. And this is a, a, for the your people who are listening, this is equipment. This is. Um, um, Flood mitigation equipment, um, uh, trailers, uh, boats, yep. uh, waders. Um, and and the way we approach it, um, Lou, the way we approach it is that every department would request and advise uh, um, uh, our office, my office with Dan, yeah. um, the, the equipment that they need so that they're prepared uh, for. Um, what the area of responsibility would be. This, uh, this, this. Well, it's grown from 137,000 to almost 700 and some odd thousand, correct? Uh, this one is 632,000 only because there's a crane, which we do not have an operating crane at the time, at this time. Uh, so we need, a, we need a crane for removing items. Um, oh. How much is the crane? 400, um, and that is probably on the high side because in this case, the Grove crane, we would uh, be able to negotiate a better price since we've been renting this crane for, I think 10 months or nine months. Uh, so, the, so we would be able to take that number off the, so the, the crane. The crane is not strictly an emergency piece of equipment because we need a crane and we've been renting a crane. Yes, and we gave the crane back because we could not rent the crane anymore uh -huh. um, because we had no use for it to remove, uh, you know, um, large lumber and pallets and things like that from the from the river because that's cleaned up. So, but is, it the same, is it the same crane the harbor master would be using or not? It's the same crane. It's the, the harbor master is the only one who has the, the ability and the and the license to operate. So, so basically. It's it's not really an emergency piece of equipment, this crane. If we don't have a crane, we'd have to rent a crane, and then there's uh, issues with getting the crane in time to fashion, but that's correct. Okay. Yeah, there is a contingency in here because uh, everything, everything, everything is going up in supply, I mean, supply chain issues. Supply chain issues. Uh, and I, I see things like uh, emergency lighting, um, big, uh, you know, large uh, uh, mobile generators. Uh, yep. Plotter and sonar for Harbor Master Boat. Um, uh, some of this, equi this equipment will be kept where? It seems almost like fire department stuff, but. Dan or Jerry, do you have hey, an answer? Yeah. Jerry? Where's Jerry? Jerry, do you? Dan? Yeah, I think we would, you know, try to find space where we can. Yeah, we do have the. Uh, uh, the lot, uh, salt chain lot. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of this other stuff can be uh, uh, stored other locations. Um, and, all I know is the village is hurting for space. We you are. keep stuff hidden. You know, I don't know where you could. You know, this is not the bulk of this is not a um, insignificant storage issue. And a lot of the waiters and stuff are probably stored. It's, uh, the, the, wait, the waiters are not not as significant. Um, you can, you I'm looking here. This. this well, this is a fire police boat, but these are uh, these uh, uh, I pontoon boat. Uh, so, if on. I can if I can explain, I'm sorry, I had to go. I had to go. I have some people in here that uh, I had to deal with, but um, these are items that come directly from the department heads. 
um, to help us uh, deal with an emergency like uh, like another item. And um, these are these are what the, the reason for the response trailer is that much of this equipment would be housed in the response trailer. The response trailer is required because first of all, if there's coastal flooding, we can move the response trailer to mm -hmm. higher ground at any time within you know a few minutes. But um, it's also needed where we it's also where we need it is, is where we need it to go. There's equipment for the harbor master boat to make sure that. Uh, we have certain things uh, uh, available to them. Uh, the rescue boats, um, that's obviously a no-brainer, right? The trailer for the rescue boats, that's another no-brainer uh, because we really need to move this equipment out. If we have coastal flooding, we move the equipment out like we do several times a year. But, but where do you we also need to be able to move it where we need to move it. Where is the trailer going to be kept? Down at the harbor. Mm -hmm. Down at the harbor. Okay. All right. So the trailer will basically be a, a mobile, mobile unit, unit and a storage unit. Correct. All right. That's right. And a lot of this stuff goes in there. A lot of this stuff goes in. Obviously, you know, everything other than the rescue boats, which has its own trailer, mm -hmm. uh, but all of the items, the uh, portable stop signs, uh, of course, not the crane, but almost everything else goes into this, uh, goes into this trailer. All right. Um, what do we need to do now? We were just referring this to the general, to the, uh, the next meeting or? Yeah, you can do it for the August 8th meeting and just put it on the August 8th meeting um, and move it forward. Okay. Uh, and the money for this comes from where, uh, Jerry? And, and just, I should probably know this, but I. Um, well, future funding. We would, we would do, uh -huh. we would do a bond issuance at the, at the end of the year. Um, mm -hmm. As I've communicated to the board, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're doing really well on our response uh, uh, from Ida uh, in, in what we've generated and what we've been able to, to collect from our costs. Um, and so there will be a significant influx into our um, yeah. into our, our cap um, into our fund balance um, as we finalize those uh, those uh, projects. Well, like I said, I think I think this is probably job one, uh, which is uh, you know climate resilience and, uh, and disaster preparedness because we are uh, facing some difficult times, but um, it's what it is. And, and the, the great thing about this is that it's, it's fresh in everyone's mind. It's exactly what we didn't have at the time when we needed to deal with you know, that, that devastating flood event. Um, yes, we had the crane. Uh, we did have the crane because we were renting the crane anyway uh, mm -hmm. because our crane is inoperative, but uh, we do not have a crane right now. And so if we needed a crane to do a rescue, we'd have to wait to get one instead of actually doing the rescue. Now, Jerry, I remember a while back that you said the new uh, assisted harbor master was going to be able to work the crane and stuff also, or? So, so the, the harbor master and the assistant harbor master has to have all the designations, has to have all the designations. The assistant harbor master, in my opinion, has to have the same designations or work towards the same designations as the harbor master. Because then at that point, they're not really called an assistant. They're just someone else who works at the harbor master's office. So where are we with that? Oh, that, that's not until March is when we, uh, I think we approved the, the, the hiring of that individual in March, I think, because of the uh, budget, the budget uh, uh, conditions. So, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I think this is something that we should be doing. But the other concern I have is that we haven't adopted our capital budget. Yeah, and I think we need to get back on track with adopting a capital budget. And, um, you know, because whatever $700,000 we spend on this is $700,000 we don't have to spend on something else. Yeah. And so we just need to be mindful that, you know, when we're spending money, there may be things down the road that we can't do. And so I think we should be sort of looking at a longer term spending plan. Jerry, I'm hearing that you, you think we're going to get some of this money back? Well, not, not this. We've got money back. This, but we will do extremely well on the IDA response. Mm -hmm. And you know I've circulated emails about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. right. So, but, but, but let me tell you what, what the, except for the response trailer and the waiters, mm -hmm. many of these items are already in the capital budget. They're already in the capital budget plan. Right. But, uh, but. But we can't afford to execute our entire capital budget. You know, we just, um, you know, um, no. we're not. So we, so we, so even though we have a capital budget, yeah. we don't really have a plan 
for how we're going to implement it. Yeah. And we can't do it all in one year or two years or even five years. So I just want to be mindful that when we make a big commitment like this, it may prevent us from making another commitment down the road. Well, that's on us. We got to get moving. It, it may, it may, but but if we're going to if we're going to be involved in another rescue and recovery like Ida, well, no, um, no this argument. should be first and foremost. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying that. That, that yeah. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we need to keep okay. thinking, keep our eye on the the overall. Agreed. budget. So is we're, we're good with this now. Let's move on to K, uh, which is uh, tweaking. Mm -hmm. let, let me say a word here. Sure. See, Jerry, uh, I I think we can. We we just need to kind of make a decision as to how to move forward, uh, but but make make that and, and parse things out because some things here have we've been waiting for years, like the little rescue boat. I've been seeing that on the on the emergency uh, the, um, list. Uh, remember Dan Sarno will remember I was my first uh, committee was the flood mitigation, and we were just working on very basic things that it well, was five, six years ago. So I think there's some low hanging fruit here that we must just now, yeah. we, have, we, have, we have a good budget, we have a good capital plan, we have everything in order. So something is low hanging fruit and urgent. I mean, it, it's just incredible to see things hanging and hanging. So others are more complicated and let's just find a way, but if they're important and, 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 and uh, meaning, meaning are costly, and putting them away and storing them and maintenance. Yes, let's just find a plan to get it over. But overall, I think the idea of the package and getting this done now, uh, I, I'm, I'm in favor of, of finding a way. So, so thank, thank you for putting up that list and I look forward to engaging and getting this done. Thank you, Victor. Thanks. Good. All right, uh, Kay now, uh, tweaking the ACE project mm -hmm. uh, uh, suggestions. Kind of goes with the other thing we were doing before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Dan, uh, Trustee Nash has had, had a resolution that he proposed that um, that uh, he edited it, he edited it and, 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 and we looked around. And, and uh, uh, I have, was, has been asked to communicate from the uh, committee for the environment that they would like us to, um, they would like us to uh, send along uh, the uh, grassy channel uh, proposal that uh, that um, Chairman Gelber put together, uh, and, and uh, they were not uh, uh, they were not desirous of including anything else, um, but and it was a unanimous vote. So that was that's from the Committee for the Environment. And just for the record, that's covered in the resolution. What? That's covered in the resolution. What resolution? What? The proposed resolution that is in front of you that we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm saying, but but the the committee for the environment saw that, right, and, and, and and they said uh, we would like to encourage the uh, the grassy channel, but not the other two things. And it's and it's in the resolution. What's in the resolution? That, that, the the grassy channel number two, item number two on the be yes. resolved. FYI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but 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 they they specifically did not want to include anything else. I understand. Okay, I understand. That, that's all. I'm just just relaying the message. I didn't bring it up. I just watched them vote on it. And they asked so the, the, it. the edit, the major edit was to change um, to Waverly because it was the wrong reference in the previous draft, yeah. and that was it sent mm -hmm. out this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, what do we think about this? <laughs> why don't you Why don't you start? You're, uh, you're, you're coming the longest. <laughs> um, what do you think about the about these uh, suggested tweaks? Uh, okay, you're. Did you ask me, Lou? I get. I guess. Mm -hmm. or, or, were you asking me or somebody else? I, I just, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Okay. I think there there are several elements here. I think the open channel, the the daylighting is 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 clear that that's a suggestion that fits what we've been hearing from the Army Corps, uh, probably from the beginning, but more, more so lately, that those are the kind of adjustments that they can make. So that it's, it's probably this is the time that they hear from us, not imposing on them, but asking them to, to consider that mm -hmm. and to report back to us. I think that will be number one. Number two, uh, on, the, on the other, 
more substance and structures the same, uh, asking them or urging them to, to consider the issue. And third, I do like the issue of, 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 of a meeting later in the fall, hopefully in September, for example, where, where um, if they are up to it, uh, open to it, uh, join the board because the board can only communicate jo uh, uh, as, as, as a group and maybe a work um, exchange where, where actually even the public can view, the manager can take his role and between now and September, that, so that, that is also in the resolution I like. So the three elements are fine. I think there could be some adjustments so that the language is seen as we are asking them to consider this, not just making the case that this must be in there. Uh, but other than that, there's a lot of, of, of uh, background that is relevant. And I think it, it, it in, combines um, the effort of everybody. So. I think by, by sending the, the clear communications I, uh, and signal that those are things that we're kind of top, top in the list and that we want to hear about them and, and opening this, this dialogue uh, and, and this communication, I think, will be, will be useful. So maybe a couple of changes and finish it off, maybe as an example of what we did just previously. I I'm, think it's fine. So, what were your change? What ch what what changes would you propose? This is a lot of typing. Not too many, please. But, but, well, let me see. I, I'd be interested in what you want to change because it, it, it's very clear that we're not asking them to do anything but consider. And if they want to do it, they'll do it. And if they don't, they won't. Uh, the tweaks are that I've suggested as open ended. It is not limited to it. It just simply puts forth issues that have already been identified by FEMAC and the core in their reports uh, of issues to uh, consider. Uh, it's uh, in other reports that were uh, done um, uh, for the village. Um, uh, these have been on lists that have been communicated to the core for years. <laughs> so, okay. it, you know, so it, but, but it's very specific and, and I think it's very important for those who are listening. Uh, it says, um, uh, it, it, let me just read part of the uh, be it resolved. If um, be it resolved that the village of Amarnik Board of Trustees request the Army Corps of Engineers without delaying or jeopardizing the existing funding of the plan to look at potentially significant improvements of the plan to reduce flooding, particularly in episodic storms through tweaking of the plan uh, not limited to, and then it lists of uh, you know four things. The the issue is the core cannot suggest things under their regulations. If you want them them to look at something, or either generally or specifically, you need to ask them, uh, and that's what we're doing. It does not obligate them to to say yes, no. It means that they will either to say that makes sense, we'll take a look at it. That doesn't make sense, we're not going to look at it. Um, and that's part of the reason to have the meeting, which was, you know, uh, of the stakeholders to try and, um, you know, uh, flush these things out, no pun intended. <laughs> but the whole okay. concept is, you know, that we are going to get floodwaters and to get the floodwaters out. That's, that's, the, that's the bottom line. And that's basically what this is asking. Uh, and um, it does not obligate the core or the village or anybody else to do anything. It's just a thing. Here's things that we've identified. We'd like you to look at them. We may have some others too that may be identified. We'd like you to look at them. If you can do something, fine. If you can't, fine. That's up to you. You know, but it's very clear that we do not want to delay the plan. We don't want to do anything that kills the plan. That's very specific. All right, all right. So, so I can oh, go ahead. So I'm sorry, did I share the screen properly? Yeah. You did. Yes. Then, then, then I'm sorry. I think Lou wanted to say something, but since uh, I, I kind of start this, if if, if, I, if I may, then uh, and in line with what Trustee Natchez just said, uh, in the now be resolved uh, hereafter storms, uh, then instead of say thought through, which is kind of signals we want that, consider tweaking the plan. Let's lose yeah. Consider tweaking the plan, including 
but not limited to, then then you can then you can include this so that it's clearly they are the technical people. We are we conceptually think this could have significant uh, improvement, but they are the ones who would need to adjust both the technical, the, the cost benefit, et cetera. Uh, so I, I think maybe that could do it. So you're, su you're just suggesting the only word you wanna change is after episodic storms, you wanna change through to consider? Mm -hmm. Consider uh, tweaking the plan and then eliminate the, the, the second thorough, including, to mean including, but not limited to. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, I'll have to object here because I think we need to lose the whole preamble. It, 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 it comes off as preachy and you're, telling, you're not telling them anything they all, don't already know. So it's, it, 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 sounds like, um, it sounds like we're talking down to them. I think we, we, we have to talk to them like they're uh, grownups who already know the deal and um, to tell them what, they've already, what they already know that you, you, know, you already know that these bridges are, are problems. Then, and then be like, why are you telling us? Because I think that- uh, well, Let me finish, please. Okay. Uh, so what, what, I, what I think is we just, uh, we just say that we would like to um, uh, request uh, without any delay uh, that uh, the potential, um, uh, that, that you consider possible adjustments uh, 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 of the existing plan, all right? And that would include the, the, the detailed grassy channel and then, and then, uh, and then, and then, and, and perhaps uh, uh, examination of some of the other uh, other uh, uh, cross river uh, bridges that you are all already aware of. I don't think we should be be um, uh, trying to tell them that uh, you know what what they already know. It it, it just sounds uh, and without backup information. I uh, mean, I, I mean, the, the, the Tony's material is 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 something you can give to them, and that makes sense to me. But just mentioning two bridges. I, I think that understanding how the Army Corps works and understanding that there have been changes on the ground since some of the studies were done, this is the appropriate way of asking them to, you know. But what changes? It's not, we don't, we don't well, tell them. We have, so, I mean, so one of the, one of the issues um, about, one of the reasons we were funded, this project was funded was because the devastation was so much more significant in Ida than it had been in the past. And, so our cost benefit, I mean, it's terrible to say, but the losses that we, that, that the village residents and the village endured made this project cross more cost effective for the Army Corps and it made it fit within their funding parameters. I'm not and, well, sure that's okay, it. You're, okay. And so, you know, I think that the Army Corps, you know, they're committed to this project. I mean, the people, you know, they've worked, the people who've worked on this people who are no longer working on it for the Army Corps but are people who are working on it now, you know, were upset that the project didn't go forward. And now they have an opportunity to do the project and to make it better. But I think they, what they need is for us to be committed to making it better as well. And I think we're simply asking them in a thorough and robust way to consider more options, which was clear at that meeting is something that they're willing to do, eager to do, and they're basing it on revised hydraulic studies. Yeah, all right, well, so but we're I, talking, okay, I'm great. happy with this, with this, and I don't see the need to. I, I to, think this is us telling them change. what they're doing, and um, and when we haven't done what we've, uh, 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 we haven't done much of anything. So um, uh, I think we can ask them to look at the, the parts that are clearly in their plan, but uh, uh, but the the those bridges, if they're not in their plan, there are problems, not theirs. And, and I, I think we have to be really careful with this. If the Army Corps doesn't think that they can improve the project, in, if they decide that there are certain aspects that are maybe pointed out, maybe recommended that they're not gonna look at, they're not gonna look at it. I think that we should, I, I think with Victor's modification, I, I think we should go forward with this. I, I think this, this, I think this, uh, this Resolution is condescending. It's going to piss them off. So, um, uh, can I, I, not on. Can, can I suggest a way forward? I mean, typically the hardest part is to get a consensus on the resolve, mm -hmm. and if and it seems we have it here. Mm -hmm. So, if that's the case, then maybe let's remove some language that from the whereas clauses that that is not well. That is just um, 
background or may signal something and we because we already have the main goal here which is to communicate with them and it's really i think it's important now it's already you know it is close to fall we already had the meeting with them i think probably the right time for this to go to them uh, but then, then let's just remove some more assets that may, may cause some concern. And having this as a consensus from the board, I think will be very important, very, very meaningful. If I can. And for example, on the bridges, for example, if, for example, if you can point out, Lou, for maybe this whereas on the bridges. Uh, I think the whereas has got to come out completely. It's, 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 you know, the <laughs> village of Ameritech uh, is asking the Army Corps of Engineer to uh, please examine uh, the, the, the following presentation on, on a, a, a AKA grassy channel uh, as, a, as a possible adjustment to the, um, to the, uh, 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 to the uh, uh, proposed culvert we were told about. And, uh, and, uh, and that's as far as I would go. Uh, um, uh, and if you want to send them additional, additional uh, requests about specific things to do with specific bridges, that would be fine. But I'm I'm not I'm not interested in giving them a, a list of stuff that's not in the project. I'm not I'm not I'm not interested. Not interested at all. I understand that you're entitled to your view. Mm -hmm. The reason for the war as is in Victor, you may not be aware of it, but in my 30 years of working with the Corps, uh, they want specifics in terms of why, even though they have the information, they would like it in whatever resolution that is done. It is very helpful to them for, a, for being able to move forward. They are not allowed to suggest things. They are allowed to, add, they are allowed to react to requests. Um, it do, doesn't mean they will accept the request. It doesn't mean that they won't accept it. It just simply means that it's in front of them and there are reasons that they may wish to consider. Uh, and that it becomes very important from their vantage point. It is how they operate uh, I would be very concerned about taking the whereas's out. Um, you know, this is all, yes, the information it's is all historic, lesson. and that's one of the reasons they wanted to help understand what the differences were between when the core, was, when the plan was originally conceived and what it is today and what Ida did. That is what they're trying to have documented in one, one place for when you're asking them to consider things. That is very specific. That is what I've been told when. Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, you can write them a letter. I mean, if you want. No, that, I mean, that, 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 that's, uh, uh, but I don't think it's this board's uh, uh, job to to uh, it, it, preach it, it, the, to preach uh, to the Corps of Engineers when they've arrived with a project that's approved and and, and outlined for us already. But they've made it clear that they're redoing some a lot of the hydraulic studies and that yeah. they want they. You know, they took new high water marks. They they made it clear that they have some ability to modify the project. Yes. They need us to ask them to do it. That's how it works. And and and, 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 I and think Tony Gelber's be, proposal is, is quite that, specific. That that's is one part, proposal. That's okay, that's it. But the, but the other stuff is just named. It's just just naming bridges. And that gives them the ability to decide whether they're going to do a deeper dive into it. And I think we would be irresponsible to not point out what we think are the potential, potential ways the project could be made better and let it leave it up to the Army Corps to make those evaluations. But they, they don't make the recommendations themselves. They need the recommendations from us. And I think we, would, we should do the best that we can to provide them with the information and the requests to make this project as 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 good as it can be, because we know it's just going. It's not going to solve our flooding problem. It's going to mitigate our problem. It's not going to solve our flooding problem. And we want we, have, we haven't done our job elsewhere, but now we're we're helping these guys do their job. The Army Corps doesn't need our help. I don't I don't know why you don't understand that. I don't. You know, I. I if you don't ask, you don't. You have no possibility of saying, okay, let me see if I can help. And if you don't, and so you lose that opportunity. Anybody who is really interested in solving pl flooding for this village should, started welcome, ago. should welcome the approach of asking. The worst that somebody can do is say, no, thank you anyway. And what, there's no harm to it. The project is funded, it's authorized, it has been funded. The, you know, the court said that they have 
some abilities to do tweaking. That's their words, not ours. Um, and if you would like to ask, what you should do is give us a history so that you identifies the differences. And so we can say, okay, maybe we'll look at it. Maybe we won't. Here's, here's and, if, and let's assume for the sake of discussion, they say, you know, we may be able to help you and do something, you know, tweak it to make it better. Why would we not want that? They're not helping us. They're doing the project. All we're doing is, 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 is throwing uh, ideas at them. Now, Dan, you have the ability to come up with a presentation on, on hydraulic issues and, and design, you could come in with something like like uh, like Tony Gilbert had uh, on one of the, on, on the MTA bridge. Say, what do you think of this? You want to give them that? I'll send that to the, the Army Corps. I'm we not going to send have them that this. In that, the, that the village has already uh, I'm not going to send them about. this. So well, I think we should send okay. them this. May I may I suggest a way forward? Uh, let me ask. Lou first. Yeah. I think are you okay with 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 the A, B, and C when we if we have uh, considering oh, tweaking the it, project? Because it's with, leading it's leading with something that's not in yeah. the project now. Okay. So what, what are you okay with what we have on the screen? Just um, like one uh, whereas about the discretion to make tweets because we did hear that they're from their, their own. Okay, I said to make Tweet. Uh, the, I, we're in love with the tweak thing, uh, but I'd, I'd say make adjustments to the to the to, to their plan without the Adjust, adjustments or tweaks, for example. All right, be, now be resolved, Bill Mayor, because he's requests ACE uh, um, uh, 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 as long as it doesn't delay or jeopardize the existing funding. I, I put that not, not without as long as it doesn't, and if it does, don't even don't even look at this. Don't even crash. Um, uh, to look at potentially to uh, look at some of the following items. Um, uh, one grassy grassy channel proposal for uh, as a substitute for the uh, for the tunnel. Um, uh, B possible uh, examination of the MTA bridge. Uh, uh, C uh, possible uh, uh, look at the Westchester County's Halstead Avenue bridge immediately below the water then waterline dam. Period. That's it. That's all you send them. You know the rest of it is just noise. I, I don't agree. Nor, and, nor, do, nor do I. And I think that. It, and I just want to say that in the revised one, this is the earlier one, IV number four, it had um, after tweaks, including but not limited to reallocating monies to elevate six to eight homes in Harbor Heights for more effective cost benefits, such as channelizing the river in Harbor Heights. Dan, Dan Sarnoff has information about that, I think, because he did a, or he went with them, or he went th with them on a survey uh, last year. And was it 20 or 21 when you did that survey? Well, I think it was reported by uh, Peggy Jackson, who's a member of the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee, uh, that uh, there are or were 20 to 22 homes yeah. in the Harbor mm -hmm. Heights. That yeah. Uh, I think a couple years ago, I had, um, with uh, Jared mentioned, is there is a um, Separate, another program the Army Corps is involved with, uh, where they look at um, home elevations, mm -hmm. uh, and we looked at some areas up in Harbor Heights specifically. Uh, and um, I, I don't know what the uh, there's any sort of outcome of that. Um, but uh, you know, they, they they were looking at you know, separate programs for that. Um, I. I seem to recall that one of the reasons they looked at what they call non-structural options, mm -hmm. non-structural being work that takes place outside of the river. Mm -hmm. um, so home elevations would be non considered non-structural. Wasn't uh, that a different pot of money, Dan? Wasn't that a different pot of money? It was a pot of money that they, they had. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, I think what they said is that the kind of funding issues in Harbor Heights are not necessarily the same as the causes of flooding uh, down by the confluence. Yeah. Right, but at the meeting in, 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 in May, they said that they were reconsidering some of the, yeah. they wanted to reconsider because they weren't sure elevating six to eight houses was enough and that there might be other options. Yeah. I mean, the Army Corps is willing to make some modifications to this and it behooves us to ask. And I think if we're not gonna ask, 
we are cutting off our nose to spite our face. But I think we need to ask with well, um, well imagined and, and, and articulated um, uh, changes and not just take a look at the MTA bridge. I mean, it doesn't, it, it doesn't say just that it has, that's why it has the different things enumerated. There's also a little concern with the town of Mamaroneck. So because Dan is, is our point person, Dan Sonoff is our point person uh, in the construction for, for the village, uh, um, for the village information sharing from the, from the Waverly Avenue Bridge. But Dan, are they getting federal money or just state money uh, for that bridge? It's technically federal highway administration money, but it's it's a pass through that comes through. The so, so we're asking to divert money from the town of Amaranac no. for our oh, project. No, no. no. What, what, what this is asking is if there were any monies used in the calculation for the Waverly Avenue Bridge, mm -hmm. that that money be reallocated since the town of Amaranac is uh, taking care of that bridge. Oh. They're going to be one of mm -hmm. they are financially responsible. Understood. Understood. Got it. Got it. Got it. So there might be a little bit more for something else. All right, but is that is that for for them to? Uh, they, they, were, right. they were unaware of the fact that it, it's a di different branch of the core that gets that reviews things. It, the left hand and the right hand are mm -hmm. not as well coordinated as we would like to hope. Uh, so this is where it boils down to it. We hate all this all this does is give them a request of saying. Here's the reasons why we're asking. If you would like to do it and think it makes sense, do it. And if not, you haven't lost anything. Why nobody would want to do that is beyond me. But everybody's well, entitled to their like opinion, it. and I respect your opinion, Lewis. I don't like the I disagree. Of the That's all. Okay. That, 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 uh, I, I understand I, that. I, 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 and I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, I'm going to try to be uh, hypercritical. But, when but. the core came up here and called me directly, right. okay. Um, and I went down there. This what I was told is they want a resolution from the from the legislative body. They want to be asked if if you want anything. They want to be asked if you want tweaks. You might suggest what they are, or or just say tweaks to make it better if you can. Give us a reason why it is. That's why you have the preamble. Yes, it's long, but it's be, it's giving them in one place. The, the the differences of what's happened and why you're at you're saying if there's a way of doing it please do it that's all Lou, Lou if you had that request in writing then you wouldn't have a concern about this right if you had if they communicated to the board that we're asking for tweaks from the village I don't okay. remember ever reading anything about that though Jerry they are not allowed to ask or to recommend. They can. They will tell you the only thing they can do is react to requests, and that is what, what where we are. Well, then, then I would. Suggest... You said that they asked us to do this. They asked us no. to do this. They did. They ask only verbally. That if this is what we wanted to do, this is the how to do it. Well, I'm, I'm going to suggest and they, this. And they were very clear. They can suggest things. They can. They can react to requests. They can try and be of help. They would be willing to look at things and evaluate them and say, yes, it makes sense, or no, it doesn't make sense, you know, and move on to the next. So, they so th this, th this, is, this is something that seems to be reasonable and rational and meets what their guidelines are. And I can tell you in 30 years of working with them and getting things through and getting different uh, things accomplished, that this is the approach that makes sense. But now I'm confused whether they requested the village board to do this or they didn't request the village board to do. This. That's the concern now. If no, they did, they, they said if the if this is if you wanted, we talked about the things when they walked it. They they recognized what the restrictions were. I see. So they did request. They said, if if you want us to look at that, you have to request us to do. Okay, so we we have we have a proposal from um uh, from. Uh, uh, Lou, what, Lou, one of the one of the whereas is should be at the request of the Army Corps. It can't be at the request of the Army Corps because so you they just can't said they requested it. But you just said they no, Jerry, you're putting words in my mouth, and that really bothers me. I no, said well, if they if you want to do this, I, I heard it this is the format. Yeah, I, period. I, I, all right, well, they requested it. 
I think I think this is too much. I think we got to keep it really simple, and uh, and, um, and 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 uh, then we could then we can maybe pass something with with uh, uh, with the full board. Uh, otherwise, um, otherwise, it's going to be from a, a trunk, you know, from a, 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 a three members of the board. It's still board action. Yeah, it's, well, a, it's a board it's action. Board action. So you get a report, Victor, so. Victor keeps trying to say something. All right. Yeah, let me see. I, I think it's very important that they hear a consensus from the board. Yeah. I really learned that when we when we first uh, dealt with them and we were preparing to go to Washington to get this through. So let's just identify what we really want. We want, let, let's move on from who asked what. I think we heard it very clear at the, at the meeting that they will be, there's room for improvements. Mm -hmm. And that they will, they are doing that. Actually, they are not there yet because they need to do additional work. That was a little frustrating to hear, but that's the reality. They need to do more of the fine tuning on the in inputs they have. Uh, but it's also very clear that they do need to hear from us uh, as to what is what is happening in the community. And here, A, B, and C do summarize those. So let's let's try to get consensus on that and 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 pass it as 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 you know that that uh, may, maybe is that um you know minimum minimum level but but let's get out of, out of it as a consensus. So I urge you to, to let me run this by you. Okay, whereas the Army Corps of Engineers has expressed an interest in desire in in uh, in uh, in possible uh, in the communities. Des uh, desired changes or tweaks to the uh, to the uh, flood mitigation plan, whatever the official name of this thing is, flood mitigation plan for the what's it called, Sheldrake and Sheldrake and Sheldrake and and Mamaroneck rivers. The uh, the um, the uh, vi uh, the village of Man the uh, board of trustees of the village of Mamaroneck respectfully. Uh, uh, request uh, consideration to follow items, and that's it. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Simple. If you, I mean, it. I think we should. I'm with. If we're gonna, if we're gonna modify this, then no, we're gonna start over. Well, um, then I think we would look at the. If we're gonna modify this, which I don't. But if we're going to modify it to get a consensus, then we would use the last whereas. Oh, what's, what's the where, last whereas? What is that? Where, whereas. I love whereas. It's okay. Well, most resolutions have a whereas. I know. Like whereas it, it is uh, believed uh, that the only. Get my powdered wig out. <laughs> whereas it is believed that the ACE's engineer has some discretion with the plan. We should probably use the full name of the plan there to make tweaks to improve the effectiveness of the plan without delaying the plan's implementation or compromising the, the approved funding. Now be it resolved and have the now be it resolved down through C. With how about instead of now be it resolved, how about the, the it would be respectfully will request? All right. It's a resolution. It's a resolution. You, you say right. now I mean, be it resolved. I mean, uh, I, but, I, I know I we mean, fall in love with, 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 with the uh, it's just fancy a, it's language. Just, but let's it's just, not that fancy language. It's just no, like it's, the basic boilerplate language. But I mean, the, mo the more important part is not whether we respectfully request or now be it resolved. The, the Village of Maryland Board of Trustees requests the a Army Corps without delaying or jeopardizing the existing funding of the plan to look at potentially significantly improving the plan to reduce flooding. Well, I, I, we need to ask them something. Without delaying or jeopardizing the plan, to consider the following possible changes. Period. It's not the following; it's tweaks, including. Right. You they, want to limit it? I'm trying to open it up. Oh, okay, including. Don't don't bark at me, Dan. Um, uh, but not, I would if we were. I mean, I think we would just leave from whereas down to see, with the addition that Dan added about Harbor Heights. Uh, yeah, but but uh, I, but uh, no way we should leave with the with the uh, with the uh, MTA bridge. Um, we should we should leave. With we're, the, we're not. If leave. that's the case, then we're not going to have consensus. Then we're not going to have consensus. Okay, and that's fine. So what is 
Lou, what does number four, B4 mean? Work with the village during the design phases? I thought the design phase was completed. Uh, but the design phase has just completed? started, Jerry. Uh, you know, and and one, in, one and two are, the are design contained. Phases of tweaks? Yeah, one and two are contained in the grassy channel uh, proposal. Uh, so it's just, um, and I think that's the meat of it, the, 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 the it, that it, proposal. So you know what? That may be the thing that you think is the most important, but what we're what, the goal is to give to tell the Army Corps that we are looking for them to broaden the project to the best of their abilities and interests. You see, and, no, now we're not broadening the project. You, no, you know, you, that's you, what. Lou, that's what they that's what they they talk about. Tweaking it is not you want to broaden it. Well, it's broad, I mean it's it's expanding it. It's yeah, it's, no. it's whatever. You're, you're, it's up you're, to you're thin ice here. I wouldn't do I'm it. not on thin ice. I'm not on thin ice. And by limiting it to one proposal that they may think is silly, I mean they may not think it's silly, but by limiting it to one proposal, we're not giving them the the you could send them additional re requests. No, they don't want five different requests from five different board members. They want they want us, we can only act as a board. All we right. can act as a group. And I think Victor's trying to come up with some sort of a solution because you don't like, you don't want the, this, this complicated one. Victor's come up with a solution and that's not working for you either. So, you know, I think Victor understands that we need to make a request from the army corps dan needs to understand it i need to understand i understand i mean it. i mean why why does the army corps uh, of engineers already oh. not seeking to remove or reduce constriction caused by the metropolitan transit authority's railroad bridge i mean uh, 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 well, well, did, uh, why are they already not interested in that? because of the cost okay so what happens with these projects is there's a cost benefit ratio and for every dollar that's spent you have to be able to prove that you are going to Reap those benefits in 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 flooding. See that you, that's what that, that's I did. Okay, good. If you don't, okay. If that that's that's not you know that's just a, that's a basic because we had so we are the line basically you know it's like when the lines cross and it's a good you know investment or not. We had we, the funding was the cost benefit ratio wasn't significant enough before Ida. And that's part of the reason it didn't meet the OMB requirements. So you want to go back and, and, no, and re-argue no, this? I, no. What I'm saying is, unfortunately, or fortunately, I, I mean, the devastation from Ida made this a more cost-effective project. The money that they're going to spend, we're going, we are going to be able to mitigate some some flooding because there was such devastation. And and the money that, we don't have to put into it is I, money that we can apply to some of these other solutions. Exactly, but. We are, but they may be able to look at some other options that they thought were too expensive because they weren't going to meet the cost benefit ratio, but now those numbers have changed. Well, I so didn't, I didn't hear that. Okay. So, so what I think what we need to do is just ask the Army Corps plan to look at what they think they can do and not give them too much direction about what to do just give them some broad brush strokes, but we need to make that ask. And I think we, if, 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 if we can do the, if to, following up on Victor's suggestion, if we can do from where as it is believed down to C, we get that ask. And if we can get the consensus on that, it eliminates most of what you wanted eliminated. It eliminates most of what Dan wants in there, but it makes the ask, maybe that will be enough. This is going to be a roadblock. All right. Lou, are we getting a dinner break? Yeah. Um, well, well, since we took a 10 minute break earlier, we'll make it a 10 minute uh, break, okay? Uh, okay. Christy. Um, Where's Victor? Do we just. Victor's gone. I. Um, he just disappeared. Yeah. What happened? He'll probably come back. He'll probably come back. Yeah. He'll be back in a second. I, you know, I'm sorry. I just can't. I just can't. I, I just, okay. I just think that that we're, we're, we're screwing around here. And um, did Victor have to leave? We'll continue yeah, with the I'm looking. Okay. I, mean, I, I know. I know you guys feel feel strongly about this, but I think I, I think you're out on thin ice, and I think um, 
I think you're too, too obsessed with this plan, which was never the entire solution anyway. And, 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 and the obsession with this plan is the reason nothing was done for so many years, because this was going to be it or part of it or whatever. And, and there's a million other things we should be doing rather than screwing around with the, with the professionals who are, who are giving us an $88 million gift. <laughs> that's, my, that's my opinion. Okay. Um. So I mean, I, I, yeah, we can ask them to look at some things, but uh, but I, I, I certainly we got to get away. We got to let them do their job. I mean, I want the grassy channel. I'll take the friggin' tunnel. Whatever they whatever they whatever they want to do. I mean, we just got to get the water out of there. So, uh, so I don't think we could. We, we, we can. We, we certainly can't go anywhere without without uh, uh, Victor. Uh, the three of us could uh, could vote on it, but that's no, not going to. No, us. it's on. It's on for the regular meeting. Oh, it's not for regular. Okay, yes, great. So we'll, All right, let's we'll, take a we'll, break we'll, then, guys. And uh, well, no, we'll take. Well, can we do one more? Can we? We can't, we can't go on to the regular meeting if it wasn't if it wasn't agreed upon in the work session. It's on the agenda for the regular meeting. Well, we're going to have to push it. No, sorry, right, Jerry. It was originally to be on the regular, and we so so we could discuss it here. We're we're, we're going on the on the regular agenda, and we will be doing that. So what do we have to do before the regular meeting? Uh, there was the one I let to know you turned at Villa Avenue. Oh. Uh, there was. Uh, That's just uh, something we have to we have to change the code so you can enforce the uh, the, the rule. Yeah. There, there was a uh, uh, a couple of years ago the uh, track commission made a recommendation to. Correct a no U turn sign at Villa Avenue. I, I'm on Merrimack Avenue, so I'm left out of traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, the county installed the sign for the village uh, after they completed their recent paving project. Oh, but we and never before changed we can it. enforce it. You know, we have to adopt right. the law. Okay. Okay. So, and I think that that's a, that's an easy one for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 all agree to that. The three of us will agree to that. Is that okay, Dan? Yeah. Okay, and we'll put that on the. But on the that doesn't affect coming out of Villa and making a left hand turn. No, well, it's only for the. It's, it's just the, it's just the, the U turn. I just want to make I want to make it very clear. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and for Warren to have traffic going north, they can make the left at the, the U turn right at, at the uh, uh, by Saxon. Yeah. No, I understand that you, you you have it. You have a pull off lane at, at Saxon. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah, all right. Um, so K, then we. Why was it on the work session agenda if it's already on the? Um, I don't know. It was. It's already on the regular session agenda. So. Where is it? Um. Yeah, I don't remember if it was agreed upon last meeting. Was at the last meeting. That's where we agreed yeah, on the meeting we before did. that. So we just did all that for nothing? Victor, Victor is back with us now. Basically. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I lost my connection, but here I'm back. Okay, not not a problem. So the question is, are we, um, where, where we are is uh, Lou is not happy even with your suggested compromise. Uh, it's on for the regular meeting. Do we want to pitch forward on the regular meeting? And I think yeah. that's what we need to do. Yep. Well, I'll give it one more chance. Maybe uh, so we keep one, whereas the 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 heading of the now be resolved with the minor changes we discussed about uh, requesting those uh, modifications or tweaks. Then keep A, keep B, run, uh, run uh, small one and and two. Maybe remove three because that is something that they are the ones really doing. But they aren't aware. Make, where, where can you finish? And then make four a C and make C a D. Because mm -hmm. we, we can, we, you know, I, I think that, that again, this is not the last chance, but we would we, we just get this, this rolling and, and we get it out as a consensus. Then we can, as things move forward, we may be able to, to focus things a little better. So that's my last chance mm -hmm. uh, getting consensus here. Would that work? You're saying yeah, what, what we you're have saying is three and four don't relate to the area around Columbus Park. So they shouldn't be included as sub sets within that. 
And, and, and one and two are part of the same uh, proposal, right? But we haven't included any, you know, rethinking about Harbor Heights, which is, you know, had significantly more flooding than I okay. did previously. So, so what I understand, Victor, that. Just, let me see if yeah, I bring the Harbor Heights. Yeah, bring the Harbor Heights issue. I, I think that's important, and 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 just keep the one. Whereas the resolve A, B, one and two, eliminate three, make four, uh, make four a C, which allows new things that they come up with or we identify, it's just an open kind of invitation and make C a D. That's kind of my final. And so would Harbor Heights be the new three? You don't have, see Dan, some, we have a new resolution in front of us. So it's, so if, if three, if we're not talking about the Waverly Avenue bridge, which we're gonna have to let, you know, that is a significant, that is a significant amount of money Take that can be used for, that can be repurposed. If C, yeah, becomes, but, you know, right. I'm just saying, if you don't, if you think we don't have to put that in the resolution, yes, the where would we add that. Harbor Heights? That would be C. That and and uh, and C would become D. Is the core allowed to reallocate funding? Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's what they said at the, when they were here. Yeah. They, the 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 engineer has the ability to look at ways to improve, which means reallocating, massaging, tweaking. They use the word tweak, okay? That doesn't mean that they will do it. It doesn't mean that they won't do it. It means all we're asking them to do is to look at it. And one of the, one of the reasons that I put the Waverly Avenue uh, bridge in their uh, money is because they can use that money in, in terms of reallocation however they need to do it, which they officially do not know. But how do we, what's the process of them not doing anything on the Waverly Avenue Bridge? Do they just decide to do that because it was included in the original, in the original design? They, 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 they need to be notified so that they will then, you know, say, okay, we won't, we don't need to do that. It's being taken care of by others. We have, not, we have not notified them. That's what this Dan. basically was to try to do. Are we are we permitted? Uh, I'm sorry, Dan. During the during the meetings that you've had on the Waverly Avenue Bridge, has uh, Mr. Wasp or anyone from uh, HVEA mentioned anything about Army Corps? Yes, they have said that they have coordinated with the Corps about the plans, and the Corps is not, you know, and the Corps had made suggestions on things to be done so it would be consistent with the plan. Right. So the Waverly Avenue Bridge. So, 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 so the people who are actually the technicians are in co coordination, but it's still in allegedly in the whatever budget was created and has not been officially told that that is not. So they already know that there's no money that should be spent there, right? Not officially. Tell them. Oh, they, not officially, but they've been told that from others, but not officially. That is correct. Yeah, I think what, what you're saying is we're the ones who have to tell the left hand. That that is correct. We need to make sure it's, go, it's government, government in action. Regular meeting. You want to talk about government it. in action. And they asked for that. They it was suggested that it would be helpful. They haven't suggest they they haven't asked for anything, Jerry. They okay. have made suggestions that if we wanted to do something, here's the process to do it. Okay, they have they they are not allowed to make suggestions. They are allowed. They are. They are allowed to react to requests and suggestions. But they made a suggestion of the board of trustees to provide suggestions. They had, in my discussions with them, they have said that if the board, wish, if the village wants to do something, they need to hear from the legislative body, and uh, they will then look at whatever the board, whatever the legislative body is asking for. They, so they may agree, agree, they may not agree, and, here's, we're, 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 and, we're and here is the process of going through it. But they requested that's, it, so that's good. I mean, it, it, you have to be on the same page, so that's good. That's good. We're, we're on the part. same page, okay, right. but be, be very careful. They cannot request the board to do something. They can. You just want to do that. Okay, here is the process of doing it. That is different. 
All right, um, we're going to take a we're going to take a uh, a ten minute break. We'll oh, well maybe yeah, ten or fifteen minutes for for dinner. Um, uh, I apologize to the audience. We'll be starting a little bit later our, our regular meeting. Um, we need to end the work session. Yeah. Okay. Motion to end the work session. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Wait. Aye. Aye. Oh, uh, aye. 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 Okay. I'm good. It was just voting.
Recording? We're recording and we're live. All right, folks. <laughs> Order, please. Uh, welcome to the uh, Village of Ameritech um, Board of Trustees regular meeting, uh, July 25th. Uh, we're uh, convening at the uh, Village Court and uh, the three trustees and uh, Trustee Victor Tafour is joining us from a remote location. Um, we request a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor. Okay. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to have a uh, start with communications to the uh, board. No, adoption. Oh, adoption. Pardon me. Thank you. It's my third meeting, uh, chairing at the time, chairing a meeting since I was a uh, class president in 1969. So uh, uh, I'm taking points of order for a moment. Uh, I move to adopt the agenda. Okay. Second. Okay, call roll. Trustees, Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Okay, great. Now, communications to the board. Folks, uh, you have a five minute limit when you talk, uh, and uh, we have. Uh, three public hearings tonight. So please stay on point, keep it brief, don't run over. Thank you. All right, we have anybody? We do. We have we do. Oh, we do. I'm, I, what a shock. Uncle uh, Mr. Tibbet. Okay. All right, start the clock, Augie. Good evening, everyone. I hope everybody's enjoying your summer. Had a lot of nice events here in the village of Murdoch. We have a uh, event coming up August second, family night out, fireworks. We're gonna have the police. We're gonna have the fire de fire department. We're gonna have e EMS. We're gonna have a DJ. We're gonna have you know different acts and everything. We're gonna have beautiful fireworks display, and nobody in the village knows about it. Why? There's no signage. Anywhere, Harbor Island, no sign. Baldwin Avenue, uh, Fenimore, no signage, village signs. Across from the post office, no signage. They did do a, uh, a post on the internet on July 19th, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It tells you all the information and everything like that. But how do you have an event that your rec department is probably working overtime to put together, you're coordinating all your different departments and you're not advertising it? it it's ridiculous. At least a big sign at Harbor Island that says, hey, we're gonna have a fireworks display here on August 2nd. I mean, I don't think that the, the way people should find out there's a fireworks display is they hear big noises at about 9.15 on the second and call up the police and go with something blowing up in the village. Um, I saw you uh, have on the agenda um, another spending and it says it's fine, it's $720,000. You realize at this point in time, you have 43 projects that has been approved by this board that are currently being either planned, worked on, in the process of being done or finished and have to be paid for. You can say that you got a lot of FEMA money coming in, <coughs> but as of right now, your actual physical budget is $3.7 million out of whack. Why? We, uh, we uh, encumbered 1.8 million, including $1 million for FEMA. We added another million dollars uh, for um, IDA repair. So we have $2 million in IDA expenses that we added to the budget. We also have added 
about $900,000 to the budget. So in total, you have 3.7. Even if you turn around and got $4 million for FEMA, you would need 2 million to, to pay the uh, FEMA expense and the other two million could be dredging in what you just passed. That's four million. You only got 42 other projects. Then quickly, you were talking about people being on boards and everything. You want it to be very difficult to be able to get rid of board members because board members aren't your shirt. I want the color blue today. I want the color red today. And one of the things that keeps both sides in check in this village is the fact you may have a, a board that leans completely to the left, completely to the right, but it takes two or three years for our boards to turn over. Therefore, there's, there's more continuality with them and we don't have reactionary boards, which if we had had in the past, this village would look a lot different. And I think everybody would not be happy. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn Tibbet. Uh... What, what neighborhood do you live in, Glenn? What is that? Hey, Glenn. Yes. What neighborhood do you live in again? What do you call it? Is that that's not Heathcote Hill, is it? No. What's that? What neighborhood are you you live in? What do you call it? I, I am in the neighborhood where we use leaf blowers 365 days a year. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I'll, I can picture it, but I can't picture exactly where it is. All right. Uh, okay. Um uh, anybody else for communications? Yes, go ahead, please. Will tell us who you are? Huh? Will tell us who you are? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Caitlin Carpenter. I am 17 years old. I believe you've been before. Um, <laughs> and I just graduated from Ameritech High School. Um, and I'm a part of Sunrise Westchester. Um, I'm just making some comments that, that are supposed to serve as kind of a reminder and a starting point. I believe that um, I emailed with Trustee Lucas about this before. Um, and this is a follow-up to the conversation that we talked about having that I did have with Ellen Silvers. Um, so I'm a part of Sunrise Westchester, which is a branch of the National Youth-Led Sunrise Movement, um, which is fighting for prompt and a prompt and uh, just transition off of fossil fuels. Um, in, just to start off in 2020, um, we helped to introduce and pass a resolution with the Village of Maranek that was in opposition to the Dance Gamer Fracked Gas proposal, um, which has since been denied um, and then they filed for an appeal and it was denied yet again um, in June of this year. So um, that is in part due to what the village did. So I thank you for that. Um, and I thank you for standing up for what should be the new normal in New York state, which is again, a quick and just transition away from fossil fuels and towards renewable energy. Um, the reason why I'm wearing this shirt that has a post-it note on it is because this past Friday, the climate clock, which is most famously, at least in this area, located in New Square in New York city, but there are also climate clocks across um, the world turned from seven years to six years. The clock signifies how long we have to reach net zero emissions before we surpass a track to meet 1.5 degrees of warming. Our window for action is only narrowing, yet leaders everywhere seem to be doing absolutely nothing. Um, needless to say, we're probably not going to meet 1.5 degrees. Um, due to the failure of our state legislature, if you didn't know, um, to pass any meaningful climate legislation in the past couple of years, New York State is only at 4% wind and solar energy despite a 2019 mandate that we meet 70% renewables by 2030. Not to mention, of course, the blockage of uh, legislation in Congress and, of course, the landmark West Virginia versus EPA decision in June on the federal level. Um, over the past week, we've seen record heat waves across Europe, Canada, and the Northeast. Uh, later on the agenda this evening, there are multiple items. Um, that are in relation to the, the improved resiliency um, in the face of what has proven to be the most dangerous impact of climate crisis on this village, which is storm flooding. Um, needless to say, climate should be at the forefront of all of the village's actions now more than ever, and not just efforts to recycle or reduce food waste. Uh, we need a serious reduction of greenhouse gas emissions across sectors, and that's why I've come to comment, and again, this is a starting point. Um, my comment tonight stems from a new campaign that our Sunrise Westchester Hub has taken up this year, which we call our Youth Climate Action Advance. Um, as I mentioned, we've been on the board, and I've recently spoken with Ellen Silvers, who's the head of the Environmental Committee and the Climate Smart Communities Task Force, um, about this very thing. So we'll be hearing more soon. Um, due to the aforementioned failures of our higher up government officials to act, it is time that municipalities in specific lead the way with climate action within New York. Um, realistically, a transition off of fossil fuels does happen at a local level, um, and building retrofits, building V-chargers, 
um, creating new renewable energy infrastructure, all of that requires local involvement. So it meets community specific needs. Um, and so that's why what we're doing with these climate action demands um, is demanding that municipalities across Westchester County commit to meeting statewide climate goals established in 2019 CLCPA. These include a 40% reduction in greenhouse gas emission by 2030 and an 85% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Um, our hub has a resolution that specifies these specific demands, and then we also have compiled means um, put together by the state and a lot of other cool organizations that work on this um, to help the village do that, and I'm happy again to talk about that in detail. The town of Austin recently became the first municipality to pass this resolution, and we're currently also con um, in conversations with the city of Peekskill. Our ultimate goal is to have every Westchester municipality commit to these demands and for the county government itself to also provide more support for municipalities. Um, one easy thing the village can do that I want to mention in this comment in specific um, is pass the New York stretch energy code, um, which would help to reduce um, emissions in the village buildings. It's my understanding from that conversation that I mentioned before with Ellen Silvers that the village has discussed adopting these codes um, and maybe in theory would be in support of them. Um, already several similar municipalities within Westchester have passed them, including um, the town of Bedford, the village of Hastings on Hudson, and the village of Dogsbury. And what of course of course, uh, what would be even better is for the village to follow in the footsteps of the town of Fairfax and San Anselmo in California, which as of last week for the latter, the town of San Anselmo um, passed a ban on all new natural gas hookups um, in new buildings and improvements and renovations. Um, that's similar to the ban that also just passed in New York City this past September. Um, again, okay. Can I have I one last sentence? Sure, finish. Please. This comment was intended to function as the start of conversations relating to the resolution and a reminder that the village does have a responsibility to be a climate leader. If the village of Marinette can't even meet our 2030 necessary climate goals, there is truly no hope for anybody else. Thank you, thank Caitlin. You. And, and uh, thank you. On behalf of our generation, uh, we apologize for the world we're leaving with. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, um, what you're talking about is the most important thing, period, because Everything else is moot if we don't fix it and we're not fixing it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Caitlin. Speakers usually don't get applause. <laughs> and she doesn't even have her fiddle with <laughs> see, see what happens to Bernie. <laughs> Bernie Camarda. It's a um, tough act to follow. Sent everyone an email. Uh, some videos of the dam uh, just to enlighten everyone what's going on. <clears throat> I think we need to put this on the agenda to study this dam for flood control. Um, it, there's a few major problems within the system. The Columbus Park, the dam and the reservoir. Um, I know you guys are speaking with uh, the county with the reservoir, but um, this dam has to be looked at. Um, it's it's well overdue. It, in my mind, it's it's the problem of the river system um, and the reservoir. It's all one unit, and I know there's complications from. Westchester Joint Water Works owns this, Mamaronic owns this part of the reservoir, but not that part of the reservoir. And everyone needs to work together for the solution. And this one big unit, which is the reservoir and the dam, which is one unit, one flood control unit that needs to be working, it doesn't work right now. I sent everyone emails uh, of the overgrowth, and I know. Uh, no one wants to cut down trees, and I don't want to cut down trees, but we have to cut down trees and clear all of the overgrowth of the reservoir. So this retention system can do what it's designed to do and retain the water that's coming from up county, which is 24 square miles of watershed. Um, with that being said, I understand that there's tweaks and you know, there's so many th theories going around this one with opening up the bridge. And I agree with a lot of them. Uh, and I don't agree with some of the plans with, especially the one at Columbus Park, where you're gonna lower the parking lot, 
and then put a tunnel, a tube to straighten it out. That's fine. But you're going to park cars in, in the parking lot, and then we're going to get a flash flood, and a car is going to float and go into the tunnel and clog the tunnel. And it, we're going to be back to square one. And in my opinion, the Army Corps of Engineers, that, that ship has sailed. You know, this plan has been approved, paid for. I Look, we could try to make them tweak it, but let's not waste too much time on tweaking everything. Let them do their job. Let them do their thing. Listen, let's, it, it's good for to bounce ideas off of them, but this back and forth of too many, too many people telling them what to do. They, I mean, I've heard you need to, for, for, the, for, for an example, the dam. I say the dam is the culprit and, ev and everyone tells me, well, we need the experts to look into this. The experts came, the Army Corps of Engineers, and they looked at this river system and they made their evaluation of what they want to do. So they are the experts. We need to listen to the experts oh, and, we no. need, and we need not to get in their way, you know, only help the process. So with that being said, I'm all for fixing anything and improvements is gonna be fine. My problem was, is with the wording from the flood mitigation, which was what, which I listened to the other night, excuse me, listen to the flood mitigation. The wording is you're giving them an out. You're giving them an out right away. You, you don't want it to delay, uh, you don't want to delay the project and you don't want it to cost more money. They're gonna just turn around and say, okay, we can't do anything. The, the, the plan is done. It's uh, it, it's going to delay. You're giving them an out right away. So I think, look, you want to do the tweaks? That's the tweaks. Don't put the dam and the reservoir on the back burner. It cannot be on the back burner. It is one of the major problems why we get flooded. You need to put the study of the dam on the agenda. One of you, five, Victor included, has to put the study of the, of the dam. We have a company, GHD, that's coming already to do some studies on the dam. So we need to put it in the chat. Thank, thank you, thank you, Greg. I, I think Jerry's going to have some news on the dam uh, a little bit later. So, all right. Uh, anybody else for communications? Robert Stark. All right. Stark. I live at 704 Palmer Court. Okay. I'm a member of the Traffic Commission. I'm not here representing the Traffic Commission, but I'm here to discuss the Traffic Commission issue. I'm here to correct the record that was discussed at your work session regarding the membership and removal of traffic members. Um, the Traffic Commission is uh, an important commission. Or commission that, that tries to resolve uh, pedestrian and vehicle safety issues for residents in the village. Uh, I've been on the traffic commission since December of 2020. Um, last year, due to COVID, there were no meetings in August, September, and October. Our November 2021 meeting was canceled due to a lack of quorum. On March 8th, 2022, we had another meeting canceled because of a lack of a quorum. On March 9th, I sent an email to our village manager re requesting that he contact a member who has not attended any, any of our meetings since July, 2021. I didn't hear anything back uh, from the village manager in terms of what the status of contact this person or removing him or replacing him. Um, Lou, have you paid attention or are you? Oh, it does. Box running. Um, uh, so on March 9th, I uh, didn't hear anything. I did not hear anything from March or April at our May 2022 meeting. I asked our chairperson to follow up with our village manager to find out what was happening with uh, removing this person and creating a replacement for our commission because we 
we needed a vector memory in order to make sure that we didn't have any canceled meetings for lack of a quorum. Um, on May 12th, um, our, our uh, chairperson sent me an email said that he did speak to our village manager and that the village manager told him that it was all taken care of and Jerry, our village manager, attached an actual uh, order dismissing this. I'm going to read what it says. Administrative order per village code 48.2. Please remove blank from the traffic committee due to lack of attendance. Thank you for your cooperation. Sincerely, Jerry Bavario. This is May of 2021. 20. Um, Jerry also turned up board president that the uh, village was in the process of uh, publicizing the open position, you know, we can have a little bit of to find a replacement. Uh, this is completely different from what was presented at the work session. I don't know where you got the information about you know, the status of replacing somebody or not replacing somebody. I, I don't understand. And I, I'm here to correct the record. And so this person was removed in May, it's now July. I'd like to know what this, so according to the code, the village manager, after this person is contacted and removed, the village manager shall report any such removal to the board of trustees at its next meeting. So my question is, was this reported to the board of trustees for you to appoint a replacement? I'd like an answer. Um, I don't have a lot of time here. I intend to forward a bunch of attachments and emails and other information in reference to this situation, because I, I think it's very important for the village, for our residents, for the people who are concerned about their traffic and safety issues, that we have a complete uh, membership for our commission so that we can do our work for the benefit of our residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hi. Hi. I'm uh, John Hofstetter. I wanted to just get something on the record. Uh, on August 9th of 2021, I appeared at a Board of Trustees meeting and spoke during the public comment period on an issue that concerned, of concern for me and my neighbors. And the village manager appeared to take umbrage at some of my comments. And following the meeting in an apparent retaliatory measure, the village manager sent a directive to the DPW to remove some stones that were lining my property. Uh, along Maple Ave. And I called DPW that day to ask what had occurred. They told me that they had received a work order. I asked for a copy of the work order. They told me they couldn't give me a copy, that it had come from the village manager. So I, on August 12th, 2021, I went to see the village manager and asked him for a copy of um, the email directive that he had sent to the DPW. And he explained that he had directed the stones be removed uh, and it was a work order. And I asked him to show me the work order and he did. And he stated he received a complaint uh, about the handful of stones lining my property from quote unquote someone. And I asked who, just out of curiosity, and explained to him that I found it odd that an order to remedy was not issued, that I wasn't given a chance to remedy the situation. And during that conversation, uh, I pointed out the reason for the stones that were there was, you know, that my neighbors at the corner of Prospect and Maple had over the years narrowed the road encroaching further into the village right away in the eight or so years that they had owned the house. And the five stones that I had laid out there were both a physical and a visual barrier uh, for people. And in fact, they did in, in one case prevent somebody who was intoxicated from driving into this house. So what I find ironic um, is, you know, it's a 50 foot right away between my neighbor's house and mine, and there's only 16 feet of paved room. Um, 
And in the last year, my neighbor has received a permit to put in a pool. And because that neighbor now has a pool, um, they have no room in their backyard or their side yard, and they have further encroached into the village right away. Uh, among other things, they now have their trampoline in the right away, and, you know, on and on. Um, and in fact, when they dug the hole to put the pool in, uh, they pulled out stone and they used that to line their side of the street. Yet there was no response from the village about addressing that. Um, and then, you know, just out of curiosity, I figured I'd just look into it. Uh, and it turns out that there is no survey. Uh, here. Uh, when requested, the village of Amerinik Building Department could not provide a, a signed stamp survey in relation to the permit that was received and issued for the pool. So I don't know how that occurs. Um, and I don't really care. I mean, I don't really care about the pool. The pool is not the issue. I just find it ironic that uh, the village of Mamaronek is going after me for having five stones out. And given that the village manager drives by the house, both our houses every day, has been unable to see what has been going on, especially given that he's taken an active role in supervising the building department. So I have a number of things, um, you know, I'll hand you this now, and I hope that you guys all read it uh, and share it and look into it. Um, I'm just kind of curious how you get a permit without a survey um, and why I would be sort of selectively in a, you know, action being taken against me selectively by the village manager. But that's all. Thank you, Mr. Hostetter. Nice to put a face to the name. Um, Thank you. Anybody else? Someone has their hand up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we have, uh, well, I can't read who that is. It's Lori Friedley. Lori Friedley. I could have I I listened to her while you were walking up there, sir. Um, Mr. Tigert, is it? Good evening, Stuart <coughs> Tigert. Um, I want to follow up and expand on my comments I made at the last meeting about the three-year harassment campaign against me that has cost taxpayers more than $79,000. Uh, the harassment continues. Five days after I spoke, I received papers from the village prosecutor to continue prosecuting six of the original violations, despite the final ZBA decision resolving all zoning issues. Last time I said the mayor had made a baseless claim that I had an illegal apartment on my third floor. I want to be clear what I meant by his baseless claim. After the ZBA's final decision, the mayor sent ZBA members and others an email, including what he described as an affidavit he had considered submitting on my matter. In it, he made a number of false statements, including, I have firsthand knowledge of the apartment. To the best of my knowledge, the mayor has never been on my third floor. He stated, one day during this, I, one day during, I believe, the summer of 2011, Mr. Tinker asked me if I cared to look at his upstairs apartment, which was newly vacant. My tenant from 2000, 2000 to 2013 submitted an affidavit to the court stating, I lived on the floor of Beach Avenue until 2013. The mayor stated that my third floor contained an electric range. My tenant's affidavit stated, I did not have a stove on the third floor of 130 Beach Avenue. It also stated that early in my time living at 130 Beach Avenue, a village employee, Len Russo, inspected the third floor space while I was present. Mr. Russo observed the door with locks and the entire premises 
stating that everything was fine and code compliant. Len Russo at the time was the assistant building inspector. The mayor stated, I had no hand in that action being commenced. According to the village attorney's invoices, the last phone call made prior to my home being invaded under a criminal search warrant was to the mayor. The mayor regularly complains about litigation costs, but doesn't seem to appreciate that in my matter and other village cases, these are self-inflicted wounds. Unfortunately, residents have to bear the costs. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Another hand up. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Uh, Lori Friedley. Lori Friedley. Can you uh, bring her in? Hi, Lori. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope I'm speaking um, so that everybody can hear me. I don't see myself, but maybe you can see me. Um, uh, we, we can hear you. We can hear you fine. We can't see you, but, but go ahead. Okay. Um, the reason for my questions this evening are, I live on Beechwood Drive, which is one of the two, Teresa Lane and Beechwood Drive are two one-way cul-de-sacs that descend into Mamaroneck Avenue. Um, we recently, my neighbors and myself, there are a number of my neighbors here as well, listening to me speak. Um, we were surprised to learn that the uh, either the village of Mamaroneck or the Westchester County um, Traffic Department um, placed a no U-turn sign at the corner of Villa Avenue and Mamaroneck Avenue. Um, this, we had many, many years ago, perhaps 30 years ago, they had done this before and we had brought to the attention of the village that um, forcing us to make a U-turn at Raleigh Road um, puts us in very serious danger. And that, the reason for that is because people come around that curve at lightning speed, lightning speed. I know that because I walk my baby granddaughter there all the time. And um, there is, when we make our turn at Villa, they've already, cars have already come around the S curve and are going a little bit more slowly. Um, the, place we are now going to be forced to make that turn is maybe 150 feet, maybe 250 feet, where everybody runs into the sand um, drums that they had to put up by the highway because they are speeding around that curve so quickly. So I have a question or two questions that have to do with that. Number one is, has anyone clocked the speed of the cars coming around at the Raleigh Road turn that we will be forced to take. Number two, has anybody tracked the speed at the Villa turn, which is right in front of the waterworks, where it is much safer? Number three, has anybody tracked the number of accidents either at the, um, at the turn off to the I-95 and or at the Raleigh Road turn? And has anybody tracked the um, the number of accidents there have ever been at the uh, U-turn at Villa, which is much, much safer. And number four, this is the last question, has anybody ever asked the residents who live here about this? We were not even consulted. The sign went up without a word from anybody. Um, that's all I have to say. Um, but I think it's very important. And um, please note that if you're in the passenger seat of a car making that U-turn at Raleigh, you are a dead man or woman. Lori, That's thank it. you for thank you very much. I can I can tell you that the the subject of those um, those turnarounds uh, at Mamaroneck Avenue have been uh, extensively discussed at the Traffic Commission, and uh, there is uh, something on the uh, on Villa. Uh, today uh, on the agenda. Is it, is it on today or is it two yes. weeks? Yes, today. It's today. on tonight's agenda. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and we can, uh, we can uh, 
uh, address some of the problems. There's a number of conflicting safety issues there, and I understand that. That uh, I understand the the complexity of it, but that 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 stretch of Americ Avenue is a problem, and uh, and and you're right. The speed is 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 uh, is too too high, and uh, and uh, the U-turn is uh, one one solution that uh, some folks came up with, but we will um, we will be discussing it in a little while. Um. May okay. I speak when you do discuss it, or may I add Certainly. one thing? Uh, uh, well, you can talk now, or you can you can call, you can uh, call us back then. Um, I think that would be. Uh, is, is there a public comment at that second yes. at that point? Yes. yes. Yeah. You can you can you can certainly call back. Absolutely. Okay, I'll hang out till you get there. All right. Thank you. Yes. We know we know it's not a simple solution, and we appreciate your patience. Well, a traffic light would help. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else for public comments? All right, we have um, uh, three public hearings. Um, and before we begin, um, uh, each each of these uh, each of these public uh, public laws that we're discussing um, uh, all talk about uh, the authority of, of the mayor and and changing the the, uh, the structure of our our government slightly in moving some powers from the mayor to the board of trustees. And these are proposals. That would um, are required by law to be um, validated by a referendum. So therefore, we have the uh, public hearing, and then we would vote on it afterwards. And then, then the voters, uh, presumably of the um, uh, of the village, would get a chance to weigh in on what they think of it, and uh, and it would happen or not. Uh, the there is a there's a procedural complication that I want to alert everyone to, and that we have two conflicting laws uh, in the state of New York um, that uh, enable that uh, activate a uh, referendum. And I'll ask uh, our, our, our village attorney, Boss Baldino, to explain that and explain that even though we go through all this tonight, there's no guarantee that any of it will happen. Oh, there's a number of complications. Go ahead. So there's one law that says, if you adopt this law in advance, more than 60 days in advance, you have to hold the public hearing. <coughs> I'm sorry, you have to hold the election, special election. Another law that says if you don't get it to the Board of Elections by well, by 90 days in advance, you can't hold it at the general election. It's conflicting, but the uh, the board has proceeded on the assumption that if the board passes it, calls for the resolution, calls for the uh, special, calls for it to be voted on general election, that that will be honored uh, by the Board of Elections. But that, there's no guarantee that would happen if it were challenged in court. It's possible it could be challenged. Which brings us to the rest of the story, because um, although I am I am uh, 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 cool to these proposals, I, I don't think they're they're all universally great ideas. There's some good ideas here. Uh, the mayor is absolutely uh, adamantly opposed uh, um, uh, for uh, protecting the powers of, of uh, subsequent mayors. So he will take this to court. Uh, he has promised to. So uh, it may. It may not happen, um, and, a, and a court may decide. That's the background. Let's um, let's uh, uh, let's go with the first public uh, the pub, the reading. I guess we have to read the law first. How to, uh, we have to open the public hearing. Oh, okay. Let's uh, motion to open open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing now by opened. Uh, hereby opened. So uh, we read the uh, the law out loud. No? Okay. All right. This is the this is a, a, a proposed law uh, to um, uh, give the uh, board of trustees uh, the power to appoint the clerk treasurer. Mister uh, Mister Fusco here was appointed by uh, the mayor, and uh, the board would like to have the power, or at least some that some members of the board would like to have that power instead. So. Um, Anybody like to talk about why the board should have the power to appoint the tre clerk treasurer and uh, not the mayor? Audience, yeah, anyone, it's a public hearing, it's a public hearing, sure. Cool. Say your name, please. My name is Paul Ryan, I live at uh, 314 Livingston Avenue. Great. And I was fortunate enough to serve for almost 10 years on the town of Maranek Board. First appointed as a councilman, and then as a <clears throat> deputy supervisor, and then as a supervisor upon the resignation of, well, first the resignation of a councilman, and last as a resignation of a supervisor. So 
as you I think you discussed last week, town law says it's a majority rule on all these appointments, on the three laws that you have in front of you. I think this is more like a democracy than anything else. I also say that since every village by state law has to be part of a town, why have it different? Just because the mayor wants more power. Now, why don't you pretend for a second that you're all councilmen, you're a deputy supervisor, and somebody comes in, male or female, or supervisors, I want the power to do all these appointments. What would your reaction be? I'm sure it would be swift. So what I'm asking is that you do the reverse here, that you be like the town, you take away some of this authority from the mayor and give it to the majority of the board. That's it. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for being brief. That's, that's uh, much appreciated. Anyone else? So um, I'm Randy Rabinowitz. Bring your mic down, Randy. Okay. Okay. I'm short too. <laughs> I'm at 540 Long Terrace. Um, so I want to discuss these three laws. I'm not sure my interpretation, because I did read the documentation, is correct. But the way I read this, is that if this is done today on July 25th, and if it is, uh, and can it be actually approved today as well, even though it's only the first hearing of this law? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, so then maybe my point's not as valid. <laughs> but the way I read it was, um, if this was done and we have to do a special election, if you get in under the uh, time limit where the November ballot, this can be placed on by the Board of Elections. That's one thing. But if you don't get it and there are objections and the village taxpayers have to pay for this, a special election. And a special election, for what reason, I really want to know. Because I thought, according to NICOM village law, that is the way this works. So it's not that we're going against town law. I thought this is the way NICOM village law works. It's also been in uh, a precedent for many, many years, and I don't know why we would suddenly change it now. It might have nothing to do with the fact that two trustees are retiring, and this is something they want to put forward now. But <laughs> it looks a little suspicious to me, or as John Hofstetter would say, the optics aren't good. So I just feel like this is something that we should stick with the way it is. It's worked and served us well, and, um, you know, if it isn't broken, why fix it? I mean, was there an egregious act that occurred? I mean, Augie Fusco is a fabulous clerk treasurer and to impinge his character, you know, he's worked for us for 15 and a half, at least 15 to 17 years. So um, I personally think if it works and it isn't broken, then let's just keep it as it is. I respect the board and whatever decisions they make, but I feel for the public, we don't need this. All right, thank, thank you, you Randy. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Robin Kramer. Before I started to have a question, when you asked for speakers, you said, and I asked this because in other municipalities it's done differently. Mm -hmm. You said, is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor or who thinks this is a good idea? So oh, you, oh, you know what? If I said that, it just came out of my mouth and it didn't, uh, 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 you know. Um, okay, because I didn't know if you took, if you were going to have speakers in favor. Oh, no, 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 no. Or you, or you hate the idea. Okay, so now I will go, go to my point. Do you have an opinion? I do have okay, an opinion. Okay, let's hear it. Um, so I am, I do not think this is these laws are a good idea. So I'm going to speak generally and then I have a specific comment on, on this, the first law, P. Uh, so my general comment is New York State adopted village law many, many years ago. And in adopting village law, it presumably analyzed and made a decision as to where certain powers should lie. And it thought in the with the best of intentions and after studying this, that the mayor should have certain powers and the board of trustees should have certain powers. The proposed law now is saying, hey, village law, hey, New York State, we don't think what you have done, notwithstanding what town law may say or what the town of Mamaroneck may do, 
we village board of trustees do not think that New York state law is good. And we believe that we need to change it because it isn't good. I'm not sure why it isn't good. Uh, I do think that what's happening is the board of trustees wants to arrogate to itself powers that were given to the mayor. It sort of reminds me of what happened in Wisconsin last year when the Wisconsin legislature for purely political reasons decided that it needed to take away many, many powers from the governor. And that seems to be, and I don't honestly know what the reasons are, what the politics are um, as to why this is being done. But the board of trustees is giving to itself power that New York State in its wisdom many years ago decided belonged to the mayor. And I do not understand why we should do it. And I see no reason to do it now. Now, my specific comment though on the first law is that I'm reading, if I, I, could, I couldn't print these things out, so I may um, have to go back and forth to my um, well, that's, phone. Printing is still 20th century. Yeah, sorry, I, I couldn't, my printer wasn't working today. So um, I couldn't print these out. Car right now, the Board of Trustees, um, where is this Board of Trustees? Authority of Board of Trustees. So this is 95G. So, has the, so the, <coughs> the Board of Trustees shall have all of the authority granted to it imposed by section 4412 of the Village Law of the State of New York and the Village Code, including the authority to appoint the, the Village Manager, Village Clerk, and Village Treasurer. I'm looking at the proposed local law, didn't make any changes to that, so I'm not quite sure what changes the proposed local law is making. As near as I can tell, when I looked at it, all it seemed to be doing was moving some language. It's the only part that's bolded is the addition of the word and, the removal of the words and police officials, and the insertion of the words and police officer, which is given to the Board of Trustees by the Westchester County Police Act on Consolidated Laws. So it looks like what's happening is the Proposed law is moving some language around, but not making any substantive changes. And I don't know the correct answer with respect to what happens with the special election, but if we're looking for a completely meaningless act, that seems to be it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else on this, um, on this first law would like to speak? Welcome back, Glenn. Uh, just a couple of things. Number one, understand they're not passing a law. They're passing the opportunity for a referendum to be put on the ballot that it is the citizens of the village of Mamarnik who will make the decision whether to pass or to deny these powers to the trustees. The ultimate decision is going to be in the hands of the village of Mimardic residents and whoever came up here and, and spoke elegantly against the law, you, you can do it through the entire election period. There should need to, a need for a special election from what I understand. It's 90 days if they get it up to Albany, the board of elections uh, by early August. We're under the deadline, so it wouldn't be part of the general election. I don't think that they are looking to single out the clerk treasurer. I wouldn't even bring up the subject other than the fact that I'm very, very fond of Augie. I even have spoken privately on the matter to uh, trustees, and I see no indication that anybody is unhappy in any way, shape, or form with the job that all he does. In fact, I hear nothing but huge compliments. And uh, for myself, I don't think there's ever been more transparency in this village under any other clerk treasurer than Augie. And I much, much appreciate it. And I think that should be said. The referendum is more about the, um, just what the different positions are. The last one, which there's two, one, 
at one time, Lou, you said that even if it gets passed, we'll just throw it out in December it, with, 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 with the new board. Uh, that, that should not, why would you throw out a referendum if it happens to pass by the public? I, I, I would, I, um, it could be thrown out in, uh, by a subsequent board. Yeah. And and uh, and that's what I said, right? And and, uh, and, and, I, and I don't and I don't think I don't think it's popular. I don't th and I don't think it would pass, okay. and it may not even ever get on the referendum. But that's beside the point. Lastly, the mayor threatening to sue the village. The the mayor has lambasted members of the public who at times have sued the village over different issues, how it's a waste of village money. Yet he because he wants to protect the power of the mayor is willing to stand up and say, I will sue the village. That's his prerogative. I have no problem with that. But let's not have, you know, double standards on his part. And quite frankly, that shouldn't be a reason. If you like what's being proposed, you vote yay. If you're unhappy with what's being proposed, vote okay. nay. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, everybody's going to have plenty of time for publicity and everything. And that's what you should be voting on. All right. The rest of the things are all just, you know, chachi, as I used to say in the, in the movie industry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. All right. Thank you. And we agree with you about Augie. Anybody else want to talk? Rob yes, yes, ma'am. My name is Tony Ryan. I'm in 314 Livingston Avenue. Hi, Tony. Hi, um, what I really want to say is I have served on the board, I've served for eight years under four different mayors. Three mayors were Republican, one was a Democrat. Everyone had a different style, and at the organization meeting, some of the mayors would discuss who they were, would like to appoint. But it was never, I mean, he's been around forever, so that was never a real part of the discussion, but some of the other positions you're looking at were part of discussion, different uh, commissions and who would, who would be the chairs of those and who would appoint those people. Much of the time the discussion, I believe personally that when you discuss the kinds of um, chairs that you want, the kinds of people in different positions, the different perspectives of the people sitting around the table with you who will also be working with those people just as the mayor will be working with those people. Bring a very nice feeling of welcome to whoever's chosen because that person certainly will feel that everyone wanted him or her. And it is, I think, a very good thing to have people feel that they work with everyone and not with just one person who appointed them. And I think sometimes that's a sad message that will be sent. So I, I really would encourage you, this is something I think would be good for the people in the village to know about, to educate them about how our, how our system does work. I would bet you a lot of people don't know that certain, certain positions are mayoral appointments. And I think that, excuse me, if you pursue this, and I think you should pursue it. Um, I think this is a process to also educate our residents about their government. So I would say, I don't think it's trying to take away powers. I think it's trying to empower a board to act together, <clears throat> congenially and collegially to welcome new people into positions when there's the need to do that. So I encourage you to put it out as well. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Stark, 704 Palmer Court. I'm the Traffic Commission. I'm going to give a talk about traffic. I want to thank Mr. Tippett. Uh, I was so happy to hear what he said. And without repeating what he said, I would say ditto to everything he said. Um, and two things I would comment on. One is the issue of the mayor uh, threatening to take legal action. After listening to the mayor for the last number of years criticize residents for filing litigation when they deemed it was appropriate and necessary for him 
to threaten to file litigation because he is not getting what he wants, says everything to me. Thank you, Mr. Tibbet. I am in favor of having the residents make this decision in November. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, oh no, sorry. What happened to you? I'll see you. You okay there? No. I'm sure. I'm uh, Jared Winchester. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you know, motives. You always start thinking about motives sometimes, you know, in judgments. So, like, why did this come up last year? Why did this come up the year before? It did. And well, well, what would happen? Well, because. I well, watched, I, I, can I, I, can I, 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 I don't, don't start the clock on him. What happened? No, said, there's no clock. Okay. What happened was that we adopted this very law in December of 2020, and we adopted the law to harmonize the removal authority for, for planning and zoning board members in 2021. And they were never delivered to the board of elections. So they didn't get on the referendum. So we're having to do it all over again. It was just a mistake. The staff, someone, staff didn't get it to, Board of Elections, and so this is the second go around for those two laws. So, because I, I was watching your work session, and I watched you guys for about thirty-five minutes argue over the word "tweak." I watch you guys argue over the word "as is," and I don't know how, if a vacancy opened up <laughs> next week, how you guys would be able to appoint anyone, <laughs> because three of you guys clearly are not going to vote with the other two. It just seems that way. And it's like, I'd watch it with uh, three Democrats or three Republicans, and it doesn't work. That's why I think the mayor has that authority to appoint. And I understand you feel like you're left out of the process, but the way you guys operate, the way you, I mean, this is, you're all Democrats. And the way you operate is ridiculous. I mean, you got to think about what you're doing because two of you guys are going to be gone. And it's going to be a makeup. It could be three to two. It could be another five. But will you get anything done if you're not insane? And I don't think you will. I think this is ridiculous because there's certain powers granted for certain reasons. And for it to come up now, and I'll take you at your word, that it just didn't go get through the last time. Maybe there's a reason. You know, but just think about it. It's on the way out, it seems like she mentioned Wisconsin. And I know we all felt the same way when it happened in Wisconsin. And it was clear that on the way out, people just want to change the rules. And I just think you need to really think about it. But people have the right to vote on it. I just don't think this is something they should be voting on. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, oh. Anyone else? Do we have any hands? No? Okay. Um, now, do we, we do a public hearing on each law? Or, yeah, okay. yes. The Board of Trustees can talk about it, too. Oh, I, I, well, yes. Let's get through the three public hearings, and then we no, talk no, again. We have one at a time. Do one at a time. Okay, one at a time. Okay, all right. May I, may I begin? Hmm? Okay. Um, of course. <laughs> Jared hit it on the, na on the head. Yeah, uh, we, we, the, 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 doing things by committee sounds good. It sounds attractive, uh, but, uh, but uh, somebody's got to be in charge. And people... And I believe the people of this village like their mayor, they like having a mayor, they like having somebody to call who can take responsibility and not hide behind, um, uh, you know, uh, majority votes and this and that, and this happened in a committee and, uh, you know, somebody who just does it. And the, the idea that the, the, uh, the mayor can appoint the clerk treasurer uh, is fine. I think that's fine. I don't think you want, uh, you want necessarily the candidate who is the lowest common denominator that, that five people can agree on. And, um, and uh, that's my feeling on it. Uh, the, the mayor is the mayor for a reason. He runs for mayor. People can run against him. You elect the mayor because you want that. If you want him just to be another trustee, just call him a trustee. But he's the mayor. So, and, and, and everyone like to say it's a weak mayor. Well, it's really, uh, I think, strong uh, village manager. I think it's the way the, 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 the structure, but some people call it weak mayor. But he's weak enough. He's not. He's not. He doesn't have unlimited powers. He's only got a couple of a uh, couple of things that he does. If you if you change this, it's going to turn into a five member board that just uh, pontificates and deliberates and 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 you know and 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 somebody's got to pick the direction. And somebody has to lead. And I think uh, we need a mayor to lead, whether you like the mayor or not. 
this mayor, the next mayor, the last mayor. I think the village needs a mayor. I'm done. Thank you. Okay, I'll go. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I don't agree with Lou. Um, I think that, you know, and I am saddened that we adopted this law in 2020 and it didn't get to the Board of Elections and, and we're doing that again. I think that's, that's a, a slip on everybody. And, but I would say that the uh, concept of a strong, uh, strong manager, weak mayor form of government um, is, a, a, is, a, is a concept that this village chose. And so when that happened, many of the mayor's authority powers were transferred and Bob did a pretty nifty memo about that that's not in the backup, but um, many of the powers were transferred to the, either, either the manager or the board of trustees and a few weren't. It's kind of odd that in this situation, the village clerk treasurer is appointed by the mayor but reports to the village manager and doesn't report to the board of trustees. And I think that um, that gives that person really two bosses, the one, the one who makes the hiring decision and the one who makes a supervisory decision. So I think it would be better for the entire board of trustees to be appointing the clerk treasurer, um, which gives then gives the clerk treasurer the ability to report to the entire board of trustees, not just the mayor and or the village manager. Um, and so that's why I think this law should pass. Um, I, I mean, we should speak at the others one-on-one, -on -one, uh, but I, I think it's a more do demo, one at a time. we I, should I do it. Well, we have to open, we have to do everything one at a time. Well, then, then let's stick to the one, the one, the one thing. But a lot of people have, you know, may, may have made comments that I think are relative into everything. Everything, yes. Right. So, and so, I mean, Bob, looks, you look like- let, let, let's, let's wait till the other ones come all, up. All I want to say is you have to open and close each public hearing. Uh, yeah, let's, right. let, let's stick to four. Dan? Um, I just think that it, <clears throat> it's a better approach uh, for the government. Um, there, there, are, there, are lots of, there are lots of reasons yeah. for it, uh, but most of them, uh, I think Nora has already gone through. All right. Thank you. That's that's uh, to the point. Appreciate it. Victor? I'll be brief as well. Uh, number one, this this uh, process started at least five or six years ago in the last iteration. Uh, it's been a working progress on how to define this uh, village manager form of government, which is quite 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 unique and actually allows the village to tailor itself aside from, from, from the typical, from the model uh, view of, of what, is, what, is, what is the uh, village law in New York. Uh, so that actually the America's exercised that opportunity. I strongly believe, even if it's difficult, even if we face all the problems with the, with the board sometimes getting, getting uh, consensus in relationship with the manager, that still the voters many, many years back were right. The village manager form of government is as an example that I, I, I really believe in. I raised as an example for the rest of the world. And I think it has problems, but it's still a very, very good one. And in, in, in order to continue that, it needs to be continued to be perfected. So this 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 goes to all the, the hearings, but in particular the one of the clerk treasurer, and of course number one it has nothing to do with Augie. Actually, even with some of the issues, he has just by transparency putting everything out there, knowing us how the budget is evolving, just kind of put out that 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 he's he's uh, he's responding to all of us, manager, board, uh, and 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 of course uh, the mayor. Uh, so so I I do think that this. Is uh, it's 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 a worth it's a move in that direction. If the voters don't want it, then then they can they they, they can decide for 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 themselves. So, okay, thank you, Victor. Appreciate it. All right, um, let's move to close, close, close the public hearing. Let's close the public hearing. Move motion to close the public hearing, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, now we're going to reopen uh, open the public hearing. Uh, now, we have, now I'm going to make a motion to adopt the local law. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. All I, thought, I thought we were doing all three at once. No, can't do it all separately. See? I wasn't moved, like this in high school. Huh? I wasn't like this in high school? <laughs> yeah, okay. I moved to um, adopt proposed local law E. Second. Augie call the roll. Trustee. He's young? No. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Okay. So anybody, the, the mayor is... Uh, on vacation. Anyways, we're wondering. All right, uh, let's uh, open the public hearing. A motion to open the public hearing, PLLF 2022, removal authority of planning and zoning board mem members. Uh, this is a, uh, a law that pretty much mirrors the, uh, the other one, except it, it deals with um, um, planning board and zoning board members. The, um, the uh, uh, board has the authority to appoint them now, but the mayor has the authority to re uh, to remove. Yes. Yes. And and, uh, and, and uh, that is the result of another referendum. Yes. Yes. So um, uh, so that that they they want to um, the proposal is to um, make them the same. And uh, let's uh, hear anybody. Let's uh, a motion to open the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. Okay. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Okay. Anybody like to speak on this? Uh... Can, I just, can I explain the law a little bit? Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So basically, again, we adopted the same law in, I think it was January of 2021, but it didn't get to the Board of Elections. And in uh, can you two. Please speak up. Can yeah, you use your microphone? Mic. I think it's there for a reason. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So um, we adopted this law. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Well, the microphone is actually, I think the microphone's actually here for LMC TV, not so it's, um, but I'll try to speak, I'll try to speak, I'll try to speak loudly. So we adopted this law in December of 2021 and January 2021, but it did not get to the Board of Elections. And the, in, in 2016, there was a referendum transferring the um, appointment authority for planning and zoning board members from the mayor to the board of trustees. Typically, the appointing authority also has removal authority. And the removal of that wasn't harmonized. So the removal authority wasn't transferred. So there was a situation in which um, an individual was there was a, the mayor held a hearing to remove a member of the planning board, ultimately chose not to remove that member, but had the mayor remove the member of the planning board by a vote of three trustees, that person could be put back. And um, basically the, the reason that the appointment authority was transferred from the mayor to the entire board was, which is how it works in the town, it's how it works in most cities. It's just one of those you know, village law things that didn't get resolved when we adopted the village manager, strong manager form of government is to, is to make those, those appointments, which in this village had been extraordinarily political, less political, and by giving a cons having to have a consensus of, you know, of a majority of board members um, appointing people to the planning and zoning boards. So that was a 2016 referendum, and this is just sort of cleaning up a mistake that was made then. All right, that's, that's one way to look at it. Anybody else have an opinion there? Sure. So thank you, Trustee Lucas, for clearing that up. So in 2016, there was a referendum and it was enacted because our mayor at the time, Norman Rosenblum, was having people uh, purposely resign from both zoning and planning board in, in November in order for them to be holdover appointments for the next annual meeting in December. So that's why that uh, referendum happened. That's how it happened. Am I correct? Well, but he had the authority to appoint and not the board of trustees. So this, this basically what happened is with that referendum, which I know you were very supportive of, the, the entire board was given the authority to appoint planning and zoning board members. Right, and actually I think this is a good law 
-hmm. because it corrects that and it makes it homogeneous. That. Yeah. So I yeah. fully support this one. Right. Uh, okay. Thanks, Randy. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll speak up here. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like this particular law because I believe it, uh, it, it, it interrupts a, a, what, what sort of mirrors a, 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 a checks and balances and an advisor can set. Because if the mayor removes somebody from the board, uh, the trustees can override that removal. It's like a veto over override. It's like what happens in, in Washington. The mayor does something, and then the uh, and the and the, the the legislative body can override it. <coughs> but they're taking a stand. What would happen otherwise? Let's say in this in this particular instance where um, Ms. Goldstein was uh, 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 cited for ethics violation, and the the uh, mayor, let's say the mayor had decided to remove her, I would love to have seen this board override that say oh no we, we don't we don't we don't want to remove her for an ethics violation take the stand rather than do what it usually does is act by inaction so that so uh, i believe the checks and balances is um is uh, is much more elegant a solution and i think putting all the power in uh in the boards both hiring and 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 reprimanding and removing people from boards for uh for um, wrongdoing is um allowing um allowing uh behind the scenes uh, uh, manipulation to take place and, uh, and uh, things to happen by not happening. So I, uh, I, li I like it the way it is. I, li I think the mayor should be able to uh, act and the board has the power to, to override it. So you don't need to, to undo what the mayor can do. There you go, that's my opinion. Sorry, but Pete, having, having, my, my thoughts on this are a little different than my thoughts before, and I appreciate what um, uh, trustee, what Nora said on, you know, on the history of this. But I have to say that to me, when I read this first, my first thought was about something completely different. It was about the fact that the word cause is not defined. Any member, of, assuming this law is passed, or the mayor right now, so obviously it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. if, if we're going to fix something, why aren't we fixing the word cause? Right now, if any member of the board, if the new law is passed, right now it's the mayor. The mayor decides that he doesn't want somebody on the board for cause. Cause is not defined. Cause could be, therefore, anything he thinks is just cause. Or when it's the board of trustees three votes can decide that somebody has cause. Somebody on the board, a board member, planning board member voted for a project and the trustees don't like the project. Maybe just causes arguing that it was really a bad vote that they didn't fulfill their responsibilities. That could be cause. So if we're gonna fix something, let's fix what needs to be fixed. I don't know the right answer of whether the trustee, and since the three trustees who vote for cause, and again, I don't know what that cause will be, can not reappoint the person since they've presumably kicked off that person, you have no definition of cause. So you're either leading to a lawsuit when somebody says that wasn't cause, or you've removed somebody for no just reason. I think if we're gonna fix something, let's fix what's broken and not what isn't necessarily broken. I don't really have, again, as I say, much of an opinion on this particular one, except to repeat the question of moving powers. But again, since I think, as Randy said, if we've moved the power already to a point, maybe the power should be. On the other hand, Lou says, no, we have an overriding power. I don't know the right answer. I'm not going to speak to it. I am saying let's fix the real problem and not the, I don't know kind of what's perceived as the problem, but let's fix the real problem. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Robin, I think you also have to say that you're speaking as an individual, not as a member of the... I never even said that I was on a board, so no. I'm not sure that it would be but, relevant to... As no, you, 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 are, are you on a board? I am. There you oh, go. You, you always need, need to say that you're here, uh, you're a member of the board, but you're not speaking uh, for that board. I am That's... not speaking for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I am okay. speaking for myself and on, the, for, on public law. Okay. E, I was also speaking for myself. And if I speak on the next law, I will also be speaking for myself. Okay. I'm simply a member of a board. I am simply a resident of the village of Mamma. Thank you. That's that's just a legal requirement. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
And by the way, Rick Robin is very, very good at her job on the board. I've watched her many a night and we've had a few encounters over the years. I too am on our board. And this comes back to what I said uh, in our, the public session of our speaking. What is what is cause? What is justification for taking somebody off the off of a board? Because I don't like your shirt; it's blue. Because I don't like your shirt; it's red. Because I don't like um, that you are a pro builder, you're anti builder. Maybe you don't like somebody who points out certain things with the budget that you don't agree with. You have to make it very difficult to remove members of boards. Right now you have a lot of open seats at boards. You can't even get enough volunteers. If it turns out that, you know what? The sun, the sun, the sun was a little cloudy today and we want to get rid of a board member. Then, then why would anybody want to serve on a board? And why would anybody want to serve honestly on a board? We're, we're, we're put on boards for reasons. We're put on boards because we're considered intelligent in the subject matter which comes before us and that we have opinions that may not go lockstep with the, the mayor or the four trustees. And it may be a completely alternate opinion, but at least it gets heard. And at that point, you can make a decision one way or the other. And that's what you want. You want alternative opinions or confirmation of what you're doing that way you have the best information to make decisions as a village. And it should be very difficult to remove somebody who is honestly trying to do the best job they can on any board in the village. Thank you. Are you for this or against it? I'm, I don't have a problem with the law, but it causes the problem. Yeah, okay, that, has to be, that has to be solved. All right, all right. Can, can I, before Robert speaks, can I ask for other questions? Sure. Bob, Bob. So the the word cause is from state law, right? State law uses the word cause. Right. right. So if we wanted to change it and be more specific about why a planning or zoning board member could be removed, could we? Right. We could. So if we wanted to define cause, I mean, not that we should do it tonight, but if we wanted to define cause. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It sounds like we were talking about earlier. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I right, mean, it's, right. It's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, but whatever. I mean, and, and just to Robin's point, it has to be, a, there has to be a public public hearing. It's not just, there has, yeah, yeah, there has to be a public hearing. Yeah. I, I wasn't talking about a public hearing. I just, I just have a specific No, no, not here. The call, the removal has to be yeah, part of the public hearing. Right. That doesn't make the definition any. No, no. Okay. So that's, right. thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stark, welcome back. Robert Stark, 704, former clerk, member of the traffic committee, and member of the traffic committee, representative Robert Stark, as a resident. Um, I'm in favor of this referendum for the consistency, and I thought I would never say this, but I completely agree with Randy Rabinowitz. I have never heard those words come out of my mouth. <laughs> um, I also want to comment on what um, Mr. Tippett was talking about, which is removing somebody. Uh, I was very offended at the discussion during the work session about the discussion and the motion to remove members of the traffic commission for cause. And there were some issues where, well, if somebody is drunk or if they commit a crime, those are grounds. I thought that was so inappropriate. And as a member of the traffic commission, I was offended. That's all I want to say. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All righty. Move to close the hearing. Uh, move to close the hearing. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Young. Yep. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Before. Yes. Okay, so now we um, just want to make a motion to adopt the law. Move to adopt. Second. Call the roll. Trustee is young. No. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafor. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. Let's go to the third one. Public hearing on PLLG 2022, filing, filling of the Board of Trustees vacancy. This is one that's close to my heart. Um, uh, this is um, when uh, a trustee vacancy comes up, uh, the mayor has the authority to appoint someone to fill out that term. Uh, that's how I got here. And, um, and that uh, usually is uh, validated subsequently uh, by the voters or not. And um, so uh, this uh, proposal would take that, that, uh, author that uh, authority from the mayor to the board of trustees. And um, so let's uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Calling the roll sometimes, sometimes I'm not. Just, uh, Okay. Depends on the mood, you know. I think it's more important to close the roll for the actual vote. Yeah. Okay. So let's um. Uh, we we're, we're 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 opening the public hearing. Does anybody have uh, any opinions on whether or not it should be the mayor or the five trustees who uh, appoint a vacant? Oh no, four trustees. Because if there's a vacancy on the on the board, it would be four. Uh, four trustees trustees who appoint the vacancy. Any uh, any input? Robin Kramer, I'm speaking for myself and not as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Excellent. Okay. Um, and my only thought on this is um, of, of the of appointment of the Board of Trustees, I would say this is the only one that I think is a valid one because there are five trustees in theory of four trustees and they were elected by the voters. So they represent the voters more than a single mayor does. So if you're appointing another member to the Board of Trustees, that seems reasonable. On the other hand, I will say we have had a vacancy on the ZBA for five months. No one's been appointed. The Board of Trustees does not, is full, is busy, and can't do what it's supposed to as it is. And all of these laws are giving the Board of Trustees more power, which in my mind is more power to not do something. I think that you have a mayor for and, and someone said, I think, I think, uh, trust, I think Nora said it, but I can't remember which one. Some, some said it, it could have been a public speaker, said um, when the village adopted the strong village manager, weak mayor system, they left these laws out. I would say they intentionally didn't include these laws. Just because you have a strong village manager doesn't mean you need to have everything being done by the Board of Trustees. And I will say, and I know this is not this public hearing, but I didn't realize this on the uh, clerk treasurer position, um, that the fact, uh, never mind, I, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Um, I'll just say that the board, the trustees are already diff having difficulty enough fulfilling their responsibility. It is not time to add more responsibilities mm -hmm. to the board of trustees. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, all right, you, 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 I think you know how I feel on this. Uh, I, I think you got somebody's got to somebody's got to drive the bus, and um, you can't put. It, I mean, and and with this particular uh, vacancy that happened, there was uh, the uh, the village democratic committee uh, tried to uh, uh, have its input with the mayor to to choose to choose the next uh, 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 trustee. On, the, on their own, that's a closed committee of, of 30 people that, that meets outside the, the public purview. And uh, by the way, many of the people who spoke or speaking and backing this law belong to that committee. And I have a collection of uh, emails here, all from people who serve in that committee. I'm on that committee, Nora's on that committee, Dan's on that committee, and uh, Victor's on that committee. Um, these, are, these are people who meet and discuss uh, politics, you know, among themselves on their own bylaws, they uh, take votes, secret votes, and then and then the majority, sixteen rules, and they don't sign that you know and don't sign their opinions. So the, the, this is, I believe, that many of these proposals are coming out of that committee. I don't think uh, I don't think that's a mystery. Um, well, I, I, having been the person who um, worked on these proposals, mm -hmm. it didn't, I, I, I I'm offended by that because I don't need a committee to tell me what to do. Well, you're on the committee. 
And here's another member of the committee, Mr. Teeger. These proposals did not come out of the committee. These proposals came out of the memo that was written actually by our village attorney talking about what some of the inconsistencies were that we had. Some of these things got resolved in 2016 and it's been an ongoing effort. I would say to the, desire, the, the desire for the board to appoint the vacant trustee is something very that the committee, the Democratic committee is very desirable. Well, of. maybe they hopped on a good idea. Oh yeah, it's a great idea. Just like not having a, a, a primary. All right, Mr. Teagert, can I help you? Yes, I, I just um, question, I don't remember when the Democratic committee sought to appoint. They reached out to uh, the mayor. Uh, when the, when uh, when uh, Kelly Wenstrup or a member of the committee? Oh, the the committee. It came it came uh, uh, as as a communication from the committee. I believe unsigned. Am I correct? I, I don't think you're correct. No, I, I don't somebody think, from the I, I don't. I go to. I think all the meetings of the committee. I don't remember. Was it just the chairman? Maybe it was so just the chairman. The the idea Maybe. that the Democratic Committee is some dark group that meets behind closed doors to <laughs> manipulate village is, you know, I think far from the truth. Well, I, I'm a member of that committee. I've attended it with you. Okay. Um, but you weren't on the committee when you were up for appointment. I was, and I don't remember ever having a meeting like that. Thank you. Well, a lot of things come out of that committee that uh, there are never meetings on. By definition, sir, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're talking about this law now. I understand. All I'm saying is by definition, something that comes out of the committee has to come out of the committee. If it comes out some other way, it's coming from an individual. This is one of the kind of things that's missed many times in the village that things are attributed to committees when they don't come from the committee. Committee has to take a vote. That's what makes it a decision of a committee. I wish you would go back and talk to your committee chair, but thank you very much for coming by. All right, anybody else want to talk on the, uh, on the board of trustees? Uh, uh, getting the authority to appoint uh, vacancies to the Board of Trustees. Move to close the hearing. Second. Well, um, uh, yeah, roll call. No, well, uh, anyway, close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye. okay, Here, hearing's closed, all right. Move to adopt. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Young? No. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. I said yes. Okay, thank you. All right. That's done. Let's go to some actual business now. All right, um, we have before us abstracts of audited uh, vouchers. This is where we pay our bills. Um, this first group, can somebody fill me in on what we're looking at here? This one is for 2,141,000. Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of it, Jim. Five cents. Mm Hang on, I've got them out of order here. So I guess we need to ask whether anybody has any questions or concerns. Hmm? Does anybody have any questions or concerns? About this? Yeah, yes. just ask. Okay, this is uh, this first um, um, uh, collection of vouchers is um, $2,141,605.25. Um, uh, this is for Dan? Characterize this for me. What are we looking for? Or, or, or Augie, what's on this? So currently we're doing item 2B, and this is the abstract of the audit. This is the abstract for the village of Marinick. This includes all village bills. Right. So currently before the board for approval. Um, this is every department in the village mm -hmm. um, that has made purchases during these last two weeks. So these are these are our standard uh, standard bills. Is it? Standard does, 
Standard AP bills. Okay. Accounts so, payable. Um, uh, my colleagues have looked at it. Does anybody have any questions about items on the uh, that you're seeing on the abstract? No. No questions. Move adoption. Okay. Victor, you okay? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, the public has questions. Okay. I was going to say, it's it's uh, very large because it's a million plus from the library, right? That's yeah. why it's so big. Yeah. Okay. It's not usual with people. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. I just didn't hear. Is this 2021 20, 22 or is this 22 23? Which one are we on? 22 23. Okay. I have some comments. Um, Page six, bottom of the page, GHD Consulting Services for the investigation of DEC dam violations. Um, I guess I have two questions. Um, GHD is a primary um, consultant to Westchester Joint Water Works, and I'm just wondering if we um, reached out to any other engineering firms. Dan, can you answer that? Well, the GHD is a firm who's worked with the village, uh, both the current and their former incarnation, Stoats and Wheeler. They performed a number of reports uh, for the village as it relates to the dam including feasibility studies, and they helped prepare our uh, <coughs> dam emergency action plans. Uh, Right. My question was, were any other firms reached out to? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, the other question is, have, have they prepared a report? I believe they're working. Okay. Uh, page seven, Kellard Sessions Consulting, uh, General Engineering Consultation Colonial Court 941. Taylor's Lane and 113 East Boston Post Road. I think these are all private entities. Are, is this an escrow amount or is this um, coming out of taxpayers' pockets? Okay. Taxpayers' pockets. Okay. Any, I mean, 941 Taylor's Lane is a private residence that. Colored Sessions has been doing work on for months. I, I'm just not sure why taxpayers are paying for this. I have to take a look at the invoice. It's possible that uh, oftentimes when we uh, pay bills among, uh, we'll, we'll charge multiple uh, general ledger number accounts on a single voucher, but the description gets carried over to each payment. Uh, I'd have to look at the bill to see what, what the backup says. So you're not sure if it's S or not? I, I, I admit I have not memorized okay. the last Yeah, I just, we generally list escrow under separate lines, no? Yes, we do. This is charged to 1440-421 engineering. What Dan is referring right. to is that this bill may encompass this different account numbers. Mm -hmm. So there might be a section under escrow. Unless he looks at the bill, he doesn't know what's allocated. Okay. I. I you know, Kellett does work for the village and does escrow work. No, I understand. So. I understand. Um, page eight, all aspects wildlife, kitten removal from hmm. DPW yard. They're very cute. I'm sorry? They're very cute. cute. Okay. My <laughs> question. <laughs> I, I have no doubt. I've seldom seen an uncute kitten. Um, my question would be, why are we paying a separate fee for this when my understanding was that the all aspects, all aspects wildlife contract was, you know, basically for anything we needed in a monthly period. Is this an extra? I believe it is. I think the, the, it's been a while since I've looked at the, um, the RFP that we put out for this. Uh, I have to see what it's like. There's a allowance for certain additional work other than uh, right, but this is falls under this category. 
Dan, can we look Plus into that? collection was full of dead animals. But this was a living animal that had to be trapped. I'm sorry. Oh. This says dead animals, dead domestic animals. If and this they was were a alive? live kitten, it would have had to be trapped. That's yeah. number three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's number says, two. Number three says collection, removal, or disposal of domestic animals from village property, both dead and alive. I was reading. I hope they were alive. I have to check. I, I, I would suggest that you hold the bill and. But you know, Dan, they're, 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 they're feral cats. Feet. What? They're feral. You have to catch them. Yeah. yeah. Them? yeah. I believe these are feral cats. That's why they had a trap. They're not going to come to you. They're not domesticated with you. Right. But that's part of their general fee of $550 a month. I mean, a lot of months they don't come at all. So. Yeah. I'd have to. Can we look into that? Okay, thank you. Um, page nine, Jana King, New York, to clean the vacuum, this courtroom, and the judge's offices, I guess. I'm not sure if it's, it says all offices, but I think there's separate invoices for other spaces. My understanding of Jana King is they're the company we hired when the pandemic started, when there was concern that people could be infected from touching a table that had COVID bacteria on it, virus on it. Um, Did this have no. to do with the, um, with the uh, environmental problems in the building? No, no. Um, David, Jana King was the company that uh, we had a, uh, a cleaning service. They were unable to fulfill the obligations. So we terminated them. We brought on Jana King, I want to say, Maybe it might be early 2020, but as the uh, uh, pandemic uh, came to be, uh, we had then perform some additional cleaning. Uh, for instance, also when uh, uh, we were using this courtroom as the uh, uh, for the FEMA uh, center, uh, we had them in here every day to clean. Uh, so they they've been our vendor for uh, a couple of years now. Okay, so is this invoice for all the village offices? I mean, it's five thousand dollars, so it, it seems like a lot for the courtroom and the judges' offices. So that's my only question at this point. I, I believe it is all. But again, I think yeah. it's for the entire month of June. Correct. Yeah. And it's a weekly service being done. Uh, some offices are clean daily. Really? Uh, well, I mean, I think the, the police department is completely daily, the cells are completely daily. Uh, some of the other locations are uh, two, uh, three times a week, one day, Wednesday, Friday. You can clean the uh, police department every 15 minutes, it wouldn't be. No, I, I think the employees might care. Uh, um, the page 21, Zanzini, an emergency storm drain repair at 627 Willow. Um, storm drains aren't, as far as I know, repaired on an emergency basis. Do you, do you have any idea why this was? It was an emergency. But you don't know why. You? Can I answer? Yeah. I believe this one was approved by the board as a, a pipe on the ground, which collapsed the road. Um, okay. Given the number of projects DPW had in ahead of them, they had to sub it out because they couldn't get in touch in time. I believe a week or two weeks ago, the board so, approved this work. Yeah. So we had a sinkhole or something? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Exactly. Um, Grandstat North America, temps for the building and planning department. Two grand for, it says for 7.3 and 7.10. Which page? I'm sorry, what page? 30. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I'm just, that seems like a lot of, you know, either a couple of really busy days um, or um, a lot of money, two grand for temps or. Well, given that seven, three and seven, 10 are a week apart, I would imagine that's you know, two weeks worth of, of staff time. Okay. 
Um, and the last one is evergreen arborists, tree removals. Um, do you know if these went to the tree committee for their review prior to page, page what? the removals? I'm sorry, page 32. The new law requires that removals of village trees um, go to the tree committee for their review. So it's my a, question is... It's a girth uh, requirement, right? Uh, North? Well, yes, but that's for getting a permit. Yeah. And the village, these are trees that the village removes. Mm. And the village, the new law does require that the village notify the tree committee that this is happening. Well, okay. it requires that the village, that the tree committee review, review the removal. It's not that they're notified. Can um, we find out? Okay. Yeah, I, I guess in closing, I would say, you know, and I've said this dozens of times before, that state law requires that the board is supposed to know what you're actually paying for. Um, and seemingly, all that seems to be explained tonight is the amounts and not particularly whether things had met the bar. So I think things like, um, you know, even though it's minor, the kitten removal, um, you know, we should know if that should have been covered under their monthly rate. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. All right. <laughs> there was an, there's another one here, and I've lost it. I don't have paper copies. Oh, that's that's this one. Sign this one, right? Mm -hmm. Announce the amount if anybody has any questions. Okay. Okay, okay this next. Uh, we have to vote on them. What? We have to vote on it. Oh, you told me to sign it. I, I did tell you to sign it. We have to vote on <laughs> it. Let's vote on approving that. Uh, the, the, the last, uh, give me the number again. 2 million, 141, 605.25. Okay. Um, call the roll, please. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. So, so moved. Okay, call the roll, please. Second. What? Who second? Dan, you seconded it. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. Oh, okay. Trustees Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafour? Yes. 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 Maybe by the time we got to the end of this, I'd be. Uh... You'll be yeah, yeah, you'll be ready. <laughs> All right. This next uh, uh, report is for twenty thousand dollars, five hundred and forty-three dollars and two cents. This is, if I recall, twenty-one, twenty-two bills. Yeah. All right. Are there any questions about this one, Mr. Tiger? Any questions on the sex one? No. Okay, thanks. All right. All right. Um, move we approve it. Second. Call roll, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Received. Losing momentum. Do that. All right, let's uh, move on now to old business. Time limit comments three minutes on this uh, if, if anybody wants to talk. A resolution authorizing a change order number five for paving at the Hillside Avenue Bridge. That's to be held, never mind. Okay, um, resolution authorizing purchase of capital items identified needed at Hurricane Isaias and Ida after action meetings. This is a group of, um, this is a large collection of equipment that we um, we went over during the work session. Um, stuff that I think, I think we need, but uh, does anybody want to talk about it? I mean, a lot of it is for emergencies and there's a big chunk of it is a crane that we really need for other, I mean, we need the crane for emergencies, but we also need a crane and we've been renting a crane so it's something we've talked about purchasing 
we couldn't, it's very I guess hard we, to hear in the world. Yeah. Okay, so the crane, we, a big chunk of this is a crane that's needed for emergencies, but that we also use on a regular basis. And we have been renting a crane for a while. So um, we, we were lucky during Ida because uh, we, we were happened to have it on hand uh, uh, when the storm hit us. So um, we did not have to wait for it to arrive. We could put it immediately into use. From that now on, it will be here. We'll have it. So that's important. The other items are uh, are include a um, a transport trailer, uh, some some boats, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, power saws, um, pumps, water pumps. Yes, uh, uh, just just all the stuff you need for the uh, type of climate disasters we are expecting, and. Um, the, the actual raiders, yeah, I mean, the, the, the stuff we need. I mean, it, it's expensive, uh, but um, and I don't think we have a choice. And it also includes a trailer that will be kept at Harbor Island, which will store the items. And the backup for what's being purchased is on the work session agenda, not on this agenda. And uh, there's pictures of everything, and uh, it's all very obscure. And um, I would just reiterate that we need to adopt a capital budget plan. We have a capital budget, but it's more than we can fund in a short period of time. And so we do need to prioritize and figure out because for every dollar we spend on one thing, we can't spend it on yeah, something exactly. else. So every, every, well, all, all this money we, we're spending on, on these essential items uh, means that at some point in the capital budget, we're gonna get to a place where we just, can't do something can't we might it. want to do. So yeah. I think uh, we so, need uh, to be more on top of that. Yeah. And I see a couple of budget committee nodding their heads. <laughs> yes. That said, we're not in bad shape financially. So uh, that's a, that's the good news. Um, okay, so we're authorizing this uh, this purchase of, of the items. Do we, uh, we get a motion on that? So moved. Second. Call the roll. I think, no. does, Bernie want, does Bernie want to talk about it? Sure, sure, absolutely. About the crane and the equipment. Um, wouldn't it make more sense to store all that stuff with the fire department and have the fire department pay for all this stuff? Shouldn't it be on the, you know, the fire department budget for the crane and stuff like that in the boat? I mean, why would you store a flood boat or a boat for the flood rescue down at the harbor when the first place that the firemen go to and the first responders go to, they go to the fire department. And, you know, I mean, they have the room, they can store the generators, they can store all of, all of the stuff. You don't need to buy a trailer and then put it down in the harbor and then leave it inside there. And then, you know, the the weather, the hot, the cold destroys all the equipment. Why not leave it in a climate controlled building? And I'm sure there's room for, you know, rescue boats at the fire department. And my question is, my, uh, you know, why? I think that should be in the fire department budget, and not in the, the fire department. Okay, right, so, so okay. I mean, for everything's this is supposed to be charged from the capital budget. So it's not charged to one specific department. It's charged to uh, the capital fund, uh, and not everything is proposed to be stored in this trailer. Uh, a, you know, a lot of items are. Uh, there are certain items which will likely be stored in various uh, firehouses, but you know, for the for the most part, you know, things like uh, uh, waiters uh, we can store in the trailer. That would be with the public works item when they're working or have to get into the river. Uh, so it's it not not everything is going to be stored in one location. And and with the, for some time ago, and uh, correcting me if I'm wrong, colleagues, that the, the board uh, authorized the creation of a more office, uh, emergency management uh, a team that Jerry was putting together. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. It's in the budget. It's in the budget. Yeah, we did, we did that. So, so um, uh, it, it's it's a coordinated uh, um, um, group of department heads with the police with the fire. Um, when these things happen, it ain't just the fire department. Uh, um, I mean, you know, municipal governments have to have an OEM. We're a coastal community in a time of climate change. We need we need resources. We need, we need resources. Yeah, that's fine. I, no, I get that. But I mean, they're the first responders. They have to. They are among be on their premises. You know. 
they, they, they had, we have first, we have fire, we have police. Those are our first responses. And what was the crane used for to lift the- The crane is kept at the harbor, right? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's used to collect debris out of the river. Mm -hmm. For that. It was was it the was it the sea eight. container that they pulled out of the crane out of the yes. river? It was yes, a lot of stuff and, and more, and including that. It's it's heavy equipment that yeah. uh, that that we would have to rent otherwise. You, you, uh, I mean, you, I don't tell you what the, the kind of stuff that wound up in. I know, was in the, the crane. River. The crane is like four hundred something but, thousand. You know, but yes, where, where trustee Lucas also mentions that uh, it is used by the harbor mm -hmm. master to you know. Get the whole thing out of the water. Yeah. It's, it's it does it is used for more than just a and for building the docks. And for building the docks. It's, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's a multi it's a multi use multi purpose uh, piece of equipment. And, and having having it here means that that when when we, we're going to need heavy equipment to clean up, we're not going to have to rent it. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So you clarified it. I thought it was just for emergency purposes. No. Like, no. 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 Like I thought it was my. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it. Okay. We didn't articulate it well. Apologies. All right, we're. Um, oh, we were going to. Did roll we vote? Hmm? Roll call. Roll call. Okay, call a roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Adoption of resolution for the village dog park. <laughs> to be held again? Um, I think HCCM is having, I, I didn't, I couldn't watch the whole meeting, but I checked, they had asked, they asked staff for some additional information and they're having, they scheduled an extra meeting, so they're having it in August. They're gonna have a dog on this revolution if we don't get this moving. <laughs> they're gonna come get us. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All right, um, uh, old business D, Resolution authorizing communication with Army Corps of Engineers on suggested revisions of the project. Um, so this is what we talked about earlier. You may want to ask. Um, I don't, you I don't want to talk about it first. All right. Okay, okay, there you go. Did you watch the work session? I did, which okay. is part of why I'm standing here. Um, okay. My name is Peggy Jackson. I'm at 1616 North James Street in Harbor Heights. I am a member of the Select Committee. I'm speaking as a resident of Harper Heights this evening. Um, my name was brought up at the work session meeting. I heard it because I was listening. And um, let me just clarify my position and what was said to be clear. In 2007, five homes in Harbor Heights had water in their living quarters. I'm not talking basement mm -hmm. homes. I am talking living quarters, living room, dining room, kitchen, et cetera. In 2021, there were 21 homes that had that level of water. So what I'm in support of is requesting that the project be tweaked, as that is the, the um, terminology that the core asks us to use. Um, I understand that you were talking about changing some of the wording in the statement, in the proposal this evening. I would like to strongly request that if you are shortening the list and taking out all the whereases, that Harbor Heights be included in the lower section of specific <clears throat> requests, and that we ask the Corps in, a, in conjunction with their design project where they were talking about raising six to eight homes originally, to ask them to look at what channelizing would cost and removing of some of the Woods Nowhere or the Winfield Avenue Bridge. If it doesn't cost any more, would that give the greater number of residents relief? Because it would be very difficult if you were a resident and you were not one of the eight to 10 homes being lifted and you got no relief from this project. What we would like to see happen is the largest number of residents get relief across the village. And that's the, the point of tweaking, asking to tweak the project. The project was based on a flood in 2007. 2021 flood was much more severe. And the point is to ask the Corps to look into whatever modifications can be made without delaying, without changing the project substantially, which will help the greatest number of businesses and residents. 
So that would, is what I would like to have added as a resident. Um, and I also do understand that there is a piece of, um, there's another trailer adjacent to the river, which as we know in Ida, the trailer broke loose and blocked the Needle Lane Bridge. Uh, I was under the impression that we were not going to leave anything in paths. That's essentially a trailer on wheel, uh, up on wheels, right? Yeah, yes. The, yeah, the, the other. Shouldn't, shouldn't it be that nothing be left? Because look what happened last Monday. We, yeah. we were a heartbeat away from having another catastrophe. Um, it doesn't seem to make sense that we leave any large, any, anything at all in the floodway that could flow down. All right, but that, that, that's not a, that's not, Something that's that's not a storage container sitting on the ground like the other thing. This is this is yes. a this is a vehicle that somebody can hook up to and tow. So let's car. throw it away and put it to somewhere that's not near a flood. That's my point. Let's store them somewhere else. I, I don't know uh, why it's there, and uh, it's it's a it's a parking lot. It's. I understand it's a parking lot, but there are other parking lots, and maybe there there are better places to store those. Okay. Maybe that should be looked into. All right. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Um. um we have wording on this. Oh, hmm? okay, sure, sure. Before I, before I start my three minutes, which I'll go over anyway. Oh, you know. Uh, I got a couple of questions for I didn't our you. attorney. You know, we're all talking about um, cause, and you mentioned that the state defines cause. I wonder if you had that definition so we all know what it meant. And my second thing is, you apparently I looked at the work session last week, and I was completely confused on the two different laws that are in conflict. And usually, when a board gets something like that, their attorney goes to the state and has the state tell the board which is the primary law that they have to follow. I don't know if you've done that, but you did that. Yeah. Uh, the uh, attorney general punted it to the board of elections. The board of elections has responded. Wonderful. So the court will decide. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so go for it. Paul Ryan. I live at 314 Livingston. <coughs> but for about 30 years plus, I lived at 139 Waverly Avenue, right in the middle of the flood district. Um, my father-in-law, Tony Pergola, was, was very involved in flooding projects. He helped to start the Washington Neighborhood Program, which I was an officer. Um, there are people in the village that think that, that nothing's been done on flood control. Uh, we, the village has been working on this. I made a presentation in 1982 to the board. It's funny. I'm, I'm coming here right after Susie Oppenheimer came here. Can I see that? Uh, Ken has got a copy. Okay, thank you. I asked him to make copies for the board. Yeah. I'm just curious. Maybe yeah. until it's anything tricky. But it goes into the losses on Hurricane Eloise, you know, back in 75, was in 72. So we've been, you know, going through this for a long time. Uh, we were able, I think, working with Nita Lowy's office to take in upstream conditions, which would you know, help us on the cost benefit ratio of one to one. What scares me now, uh, you know, you've got people talking about the, the dams and the reservoirs and everything else. If anything is done on those before the project has a, a shovel in the ground, they could turn around and reduce that cost benefit ratio and kill the whole project, as two presidents have done. You know, first Jimmy Carter and, and this last one, Trump. So I'm all in favor of tweaking what we have now, which is a good 10 to 20 year old plan. It's not up to date. As the young lady, Ms. Carpenter, said, and as uh, Susie Oppenheimer said to the, uh, oh, to the county. Sorry. Time, sir. I'm sorry, you finish yeah. your thought. Pardon? I, you, your time's up, but finish your sentence. <laughs> okay. I'm for the tweaking. I had a discussion with, okay. with excuse me, I had a discussion with Dan Natchez on his contacts with the Corps, and they 
you know, if you want to repeat that, what you told me about meeting the general and the colonel. All right. Thank you, help. sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Hello. I'm Ellen Helpman. I'm a member of the Budget Committee. I'm speaking as a resident. I, I live on Chestnut Avenue in Harbor Heights. I agree with what Peggy said. I agree with what Paul said. We do need to tweak the plan. Since that plan was done, there's been a lot more development in the village. Um, <clears throat> complete with the house in Harbor Heights that never should have been built in a flood zone that has caused all of us a lot of damage. Separate from the plan, even though it should be done after shovels in the ground, Glendale Avenue, known as the Road to Nowhere, has to go. That's Harrison's Road. We need to work with them. That has to go. That just causes so much flooding. The we flood on Chestnut. The water doesn't go over the retaining wall. It jumps at the road to nowhere and then floods our properties into our homes and it causes a damning effect for more chips. It's got to go. Thank Good. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, Sam Bruciani, I live at 1612 North James Street. And I live next to Peggy, and we live across the street from the road to nowhere. So I printed out pictures of what I emailed. That's a picture from Tuesday night, and I know I emailed the mayor, the board, the flood committee, to which I'm sad to say. No one responded to my email. Um, that was last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. If you look at that level, that was at seven o'clock at night. At 4.30 in the afternoon when I got home from work, that brook was about three or four feet lower than it is in that picture. If we had any more rain that night, it's coming over. And as Ellen said, that creates that second river that goes down to Ellis and Chestnut. And again, if there was a house built on Ellis that never should have been built, that's backing the water up to North James, backing it up to Irving, backing it up to Winfield. We can't live like this anymore. I've lived in my home almost my entire life. It's my parents' home. The development that's going on north of us and the development that's going to go on around the corner from the waterworks, where they're going to develop that land, is going to kill us. So this is the first time I ever had more than six feet of water in my basement. It was in the first floor of my home. It, it's, I, I, the village isn't doing anything to reduce any of our taxes. Um, it, it's, it's getting crazy. So somebody it has to do something. You guys have to... The, the Army Corps project is going to, we all understood when they spoke, it's going to start downstream. They have to start downstream. It makes sense. But none of the Army Corps project is for up in Harbor Heights. No, it's not. No. Nothing is being done. And, up and, and, and it's not to say that that's not an issue that we don't, we, do, we don't need to deal with. We need to deal with, but it's not that. that, that understood. I mean, we, we, but it, but look, if you, the, the Army Corps knows about the road to nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why that can't be presented in a tweaking right. of their plan. Well, say, I'm sorry, but when they initially presented the plan years ago, we were told by the then project manager, who retired, that that has to come out anyway because they couldn't get the equipment down. That's not in writing. I think we would all feel a lot better if that was baked into the plan. But yeah. when you say the planes are coming up the rubber heights, elevating six to eight homes, it's not yeah. 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 We we understand that. And when and when asked, and when asked the gentleman who was running the plan at the, the um at that point from the Army Corps, and we were talking about the six homes and eight homes, and I said, I could potentially be one of those homes. At that point, I didn't flood in my first floor. And I'm pretty high up for those of you who know my house. Mm -hmm. Who thought it was ever going to reach my first floor of my home? Um, I said, well, if instead of raising my home, 
can we do other things like moving the mechanicals upstairs? And he said that would definitely be something that the Army Corps we'll would listen to and consider, and then utilize that money somewhere else. Um, I understand. I do have a question on the picture. Do you know whether on the other side, on the Harrison side, just past the road, just past the road, whether it overflowed the bank? Because that bank is lower. Yes. If people yeah. got hit in Harrison, yes, in their homes, yes. We could see it from, from this I picture. You mean no, 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 I can't, oh. I can't see it from this picture. No, no, no. You mean the day of, of Ida? Yeah, yes. no, not Ida. I know Ida. I'm talking about. Oh, no, Houston. not, not, nobody, no, the water. That's what I'm saying. If we had any more water, yes. Okay, the no, the reason I ask is the bank on the Harrison side, let's say across from Warren Park, is actually lower than the bank on the village side. I, so I was. They sit higher. Yeah, they're, the, I was they're looking at the Harrison side all day. The, yeah. the other, they're much higher and further back. They're further <laughs> back. Than, they're further the, back. The, the houses are further back. But right. The, the bank is lower. The bank is lower. Right. But the other thing is, because of that obstruction there, yeah. that for North James I understand. and for urban, uh, for urban and for Winfield, that road is killing us. I understand. I mean, yeah, as you get down to, it's 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 it's, it's awful, and, and, and it's and, and it's something that it's something that um that the mayors tried to uh, address with with Harrison. And Harrison just seems to not want to be to do anything. We're going to have to do bilateral. Um, so the, there, there uh, uh, communications of some kind, uh, just as we're doing with um uh, with the the town of Rye on uh, Beaver Swamp Creek. Uh, we, we just uh, we're we're. We're communicate. We're um, this week, right, Dan? We're putting we're putting a, a a proposal together to to, to pay, pay for some of the dredging next year's dredging on Beaver Swamp Creek. But uh, the the there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts. I mean, well, but I can't imagine that the Harrison residents in the Winfield Glen section and the those that go along mm -hmm. West Street by the by the park. I cannot imagine that they would say, "Oh, let's not do but, something up there." In their own units, for their own municipality. We, we, we need to get them um, activated, but there is a proposal of, on the to the board work session for a resolution asking Harrison to join us. Okay. Yeah. okay. If I may, if I may throw okay. uh, All right. Um, uh, Can you repeat that? Uh, we were past three minutes here, right? I, uh, we, we can't. We can't let this evolve. I'm losing control of the meeting. All right. <laughs> One quick thing. Okay. Okay. I have spoken with. The head of the flood committee in Harrison, they are willing to work with our flood committee to then take it to the Harrison board and get to, to it. Try and work with this. But regardless, we would like to see something put into this resolution for the Army Corps. About we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll, 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 we're going to talk about the, the, the wording and right can now. Can we also work with Harrison about the development around the corner? Because that's that's that, that, that's not what we're talking about here. Let, let's let, let's 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 let us move on, please. Yes, Laura. Laura Body, I'm part of the Traffic Commission. I live at 170 Washington Street. I am speaking as a lifelong resident in the village. The Army Corps of Engineers has been coming back and forth and entertaining us for quite some time. What I'm most concerned about is the comprehensive plan. And the co comprehensive plan I'm not speaking to in regard to the village's comprehensive plan. We have this tweak that we're trying to present to the Army Corps, but I think that we have to have a real conversation with the Army Corps and let them get here to start this, this task. Because we in parallel have the same situation in the flats, maybe twofold. We have a private transfer station that has acted as a dam. We have buildings that should never have been lifted out of the floodplain. We have a, a brook that should be barriered by 50 feet by law, nothing can be on those streams and brooks flowing in and causing contamination and causing, causing damage. And I don't know how the Army Corps is going to handle this situation when they actually come to do the work. And I don't know how this would affect them by giving them the tweaks that we're presenting rather than giving them this in a bigger, more global, comprehensive Q&A. 
and bringing them here and having a walk talk with them and letting them look at it again, even though they're in the design group. I mean, I just think that there are, are bigger items that are missed and need to be more thought out, or maybe it's our job as a village to do it in it as a parallel mitigation rather than asking the Army Corps to handle some situations that maybe wouldn't be to task for them. Because they are going to come and they are, they do know that they're behind by 10 years and they do understand that they're fighting 35 feet of water on Plaza Avenue that hit a brick wall and came back at us. So I, I don't know what the best solution is going to be for this globally. It, there's going to be some fallout. There might be some residents who are extremely happy with the outcome, but we really need to really basically work on getting them here quicker rather than getting them to look at items you know on a list that we would like to add as a wish list really because the biggest wish i feel is to get them here yeah not two years later but now thank, thank you Lord. all right are we okay, okay. <laughs> uh tweak your brains out so be it but uh we need to stop the water before it gets to the mayor Okay. It needs the dam. I know. I sent it, but Lou, I sent emails to every but board member. That's not what we're talking about. Here, the, right? I know, but I'm just saying. But we kind of. I, I understand that, but if um, we if we already know what you're going to say, and you already know. <laughs> but, I mean, but there's no but there's no answer. There's no feedback. I, I, like I send you this stuff. I sent the I sent the videos of the dam and totally got uh, ignored. The, we, we know it. I know the dam was five like. feet within four hours with zero rain. Yeah. That means it's all coming from up county. Yeah, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm so with you. so communicate that with me. Uh, and 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 if, if you Jerry can, was going to have have news on the is Jerry gone now. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's still, he has a be overseeing some spraying operations. Okay, a, well, all right. Well, it's a communication. I mean, Jer Jerry, Jerry is a uh, uh, yeah. He's got a, a mosquito spraying uh, tomorrow at three a.m. So that's uh, that's where he is. Um, I will, I'll stop asking the same questions and saying the same but things. But there's there's, move, there's movement. There's movement on okay. county money for the dam. Okay. That's all I can say. Uh, he knows the details on it. Okay. Does Dan, know, do you know the details? Yeah, um, I mentioned, I think Tony uh, was copied on my email uh, when I responded mm -hmm. last week or the week before, saying that we were meeting with uh, Dave Kavinga from Westchester, he's the Assistant Commissioner of Planning for Westchester County, uh, and they're looking to uh, put money in their budget to uh, start implementing and looking at uh, flood mitigation for this watershed. Uh, which uh, now they call it the coastal Long Island Sound Watershed. Yeah. Uh, and one of the items that we spoke to him about, uh, along with uh, uh, legislator uh, Parker, who was at the meeting, was you know, studying the potential uh, the potential for the American vessel. So, you know, we're looking like we may feel that. And that, that's that's, that, that's a chunk of change, right? Uh, it would be a well, but the study would be a chunk of change, you know. Account project would be a bigger chunk of change. Okay. All right. And, and it's the county money that, that's. Uh, it's county money to fund this initial work. All right. So it's. Good. But are, are we looking at the dam as a. As yes. The, 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 res, the reservoir is behind the dam. Yes. We're going to be looking at the dam. And, and it, there's, 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 there's a lot of stuff going on, Bernie. I mean, but, it, but it's all. Right. Yes. Hi, um, I'm Kathleen Nicoli. I live at 1625 Bourbon Street. Um, I just wanted to echo that I support the tweets. Um, my husband and I moved into this home, this is our first home in um, August 2020. And we had our first son in July 2021. And then we were displaced for six and a half months. Um, um, I know at the time that we've been there less than two years now, um, we've had three floods, obviously one. In our headquarters and displacing us. So, 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 so you, you you want tweak the tweaks because because we'd really love to stay here, but 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 what um, what about the tweaks? I mean, obviously, this is a pro, this is a plan that's going to happen. They're, they're going. It's going to be a flood mitigation project, eighty eight million dollars. Oh, uh, why do you think we need to tweak it? So, my husband and I are in agreement that we feel that um, reallocation of some of the funds, rather than raising some houses in our neighborhood, might be 
it would be more effective to use those to um, look into channelizing the river. Okay, all right, um, understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Joey Ryan, 14 Williams family. In um, 2007, we had, uh, we lived at 139 Waverly Avenue. We had eight feet of water in our basement. We said, nothing this terrible can ever happen again. We just can't. And Ida, Ida did what we thought would never happen again. It came into the living quarters, which is where my mom lived when we lived at 139. What happened in the years since that plan was made and, and devised for our village has changed. I mean, there's no doubt because there were other neighborhoods that hadn't flooded before that flooded now. And that's why I think it needs to be tweaked. A plan that worked then was good for them. But what we have is new flooding in areas that never flooded before. So when you tweak it, you have to look at those areas as well. So that the whole village, the whole village is, is going to be looked at, is going to be tweaked, tweaked to be part of a plan that's a fix for all of the village. We're one village. We flood everywhere now. So you look like you have a question. So I, I'm, I'm, but this is the Maranek Sheldrake River flood mitigation project. It's it's for a very specific thing. It's for the for where they come together and and, and that. I mean, you're talking this this flooding all over. And, uh, and, and I'm and, saying <coughs> that, plan, that plan needs to look at the new flood areas. That's part of what you need to tweak. They, 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 they're not going to do that. Well, you can certainly ask. How, how do you know? Until you ask. I mean, you're making a list of things that you want to that you want them to look at. And you can have a mind of its own and it does what it wants to do. The traditional areas that have been hit will always be hit. And we need to certainly take care of those and they're part of the plan. But I'm saying that there are new areas that also need to be looked at when they tweak it. Uh, and but, but so those will require new efforts, new new projects, something different, not, but not maybe, this. Maybe they don't until you look at it. I don't know how you can answer that. I mean, so, so you would you would you, not. you would diminish the, the plan at, at that area? For, I'm sorry. I mean, well, that then I I'm just here to say that I, I do think it needs to be tweaked. I, tweaked how? I beg your pardon. How would you like it tweaked? I mean, it's, I'd like everything to be looked at uh, in a, in okay. a new light based upon what we have experienced this last time. Okay. Um. I see. Um. Our my fear is. That we could uh, we could screw it up. Well, I don't think so. I think if we ask the questions and if we do some of the projects we know we can do while we're looking at this and tweaking it, I don't think that's going to have a problem with them. If they know that we're wholeheartedly doing our part and doing more than our part, I think they will look right. at it favorably. Thank you. I think Thank you. Have your mind made up. Thank you. Hmm? It sounds like you have your mind. Well, we've been dealing with this a long time, and this oh, is. Oh, have I? Way longer than you. Yeah, she's great. Was that? I mean, the Army Corps is updating some of the hydrology mm -hmm. numbers yeah. as part of the project yeah. to you know see the impact of uh, how Ida changes certain things. Uh, but you know, they're not going to uh, look at things along the coastline. Or they're not, and they're not going to look at things, say, in the Beaver Swamp Brook area, because that yeah. wasn't part of it. Yeah, or, or the Florence Park, or, or um, uh, but they're staying within the footprint yeah. of the of the plan. communications that we get during storm and fancy storms always highlights the worst hit areas and talks about Washingtonville and Harbor Heights. And this plan is not really a Harbor Heights. So if the village is acknowledging these are our problem areas, we need to do something. Yeah. Okay. I'm not directing it at you. I apologize, but it, it sounded like I was. Oh, we are, we are dredging the rivers for the first time in forever. Yeah, we, we secured our <laughs> permits and we're uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, is, I, I saw that the, the per permits are coming in. Yeah, we received our uh, permit from Westchester County, a stream control permit, and uh, I think that uh, we've uh, uh, smoothed out any, uh, any anything we need to with the DEC. Yeah, because I mean, the truth is, you got water in the in there, but you got nine feet of silt there too, and that's and that's been a little, we just let it build up. Just uh, gotta get it out of it. Yes, sir. 
Uh, so uh, I served with Tony on the Board of Trustees, obviously, and, and we spent a lot of time evaluating this. And one of the things that stood out in my mind is we have a sanitary sewer district, but we do not have a stormwater sewer district. And I don't understand why we don't have a stormwater sewer district when the majority of the water is coming from up county in a four, I think it's instead of a 24 square, I thought it was actually 48 square miles. I think, I think it's, everybody's given different numbers, but I remember back when I was on the board of trustees, the number was much larger. And regard, we are getting water from up county. Sure. I can tell you there are developments that are happening up in Harrison or that happened many years ago where the properties were completely denuded. Hundreds of acres were denuded and that water ends up here in Mamaroneck. Mm -hmm. and, and that's only within the last 20 years. That doesn't count all the you know, generations of development that have happened that have contributed to this problem. Mm -hmm. So we do need, we, we need you and we need Catherine, Catherine Parker mm -hmm. to, and the state to push for county stormwater districts. Mm -hmm. So that the county, great idea. so that the county is paying for this infrastructure that, and, and paying for some of the work that needs to get done on a continued basis. So thank you. We're not that, that's continually the, getting cracked on. That, that's, that's, listen, uh, the one, one of the things I say all the time is that we need to, we need to do, be doing everything yesterday. And it's and it's and it's true, uh, uh, but it's, well, it's, the ironic thing yeah. is, during the last storm, I was driving down Palmer Avenue yeah. to drop one of my children off somewhere, and driving down Palmer. I mean, no, rain, bad rainstorm, but not not anything out of what we would have normally expected on Palmer Avenue. And half an hour, twenty minutes later, I'm, I'm looping back, and uh, I have an SUV. Could not get through. No, I, I could not get through. And 40 minutes later, I went to go get her, and there was no way to get to her because she was up rocking down. The reason I was so interested in these documents from the from 1982 was because this is about the time I first came to the Marinac as a TV reporter to cover a flood. <laughs> and he said, we got a plan. <laughs> you know, that was late, though. What? That was late in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the 70s. Yeah, I know. Believe me, I know. I know. We got a plan. We got a plan. We got you know. So that that's that's one of the reasons I'm I'm so interested. In it. I mean, this is so, been, but I mean, Steve Otis, George Latimer, and Catherine Parker need to be encouraged to create a stormwater district. For for the lower white the lower Westchester area, I mean, I I'll think have them all in one place on the fifth, so I'll, I'll be sure to yes. be bending their ear. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and and folks, I I I mean, we all appreciate just how emotional this is for everybody. It's emotional for all of us, but um, uh, and 